things. I'm going to respawn some things on these tiles, these things on these tiles. Uh, I said I was going to think about doing it yesterday, and I did do a little bit yesterday. Uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, I do like an 8 to 10 hour stream where really I'm just here to motivate myself to keep working on this game uh, in Godot. I'm kind of new to Godot. Maybe not. Maybe so. Uh, whoa, I'm rhyming. Let's go. Frank Franz in the house. Welcome, Frank Franz. Uh, yeah, so... So I, there are these little like humans and then there's these buildings, right? In this game that I'm making. And they like kinda get messed up in a good way. That is to say, I intended it for be that, to be that way. Uh, so let me show you a little bit here. We got these houses, right? And if I smack these houses, bam, 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 they destroy themselves, goodbye. Goodbye, and this is supposed to be an endless runner. I know it's ending, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's a debug tool. We'd actually, we keep moving, right? And so we keep moving, and this tile, this level tile that has those three houses on it, you see it here, but that's just because I made it twice. That's because I made it twice. That same tile, it comes back. What? And the houses are still destroyed? Unbelievable. That is incorrect. And so what I need is for those houses, upon going past the player, I need them to become recycled. That is to say, I want them to look a lot like these houses right here, as if uh, they never got destroyed. On top of that, remember those little people I was showing you? They're right here. Uh, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. There we go, there we go. There's a person right there, right? I can abduct people because we're an alien in an alien game. We're gonna abduct them into space. Goodbye, they're gone. Uh, and guess what? They're gonna stay gone. This one won't stay gone because uh, that's not the one that I grabbed. But this one is gone. Look, both of them are gone. They're both gone and they stay gone, which is wrong, kind of. So I wanna do something a little different with the uh, human and the cow. Cows we can also abduct naturally. And uh, I want them to maybe reappear or not. Uh, so this is a thing I want to do. The first thing that I want to tackle is getting these houses to recycle themselves. Now they're not actually gone. If I pull up these debug uh, numbers that I've got, uh, you'll notice there's some numbers above the house and it goes down when I hit them. Those are the house's hit points. It's going down, 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 down until zero. Uh, and then if I hide it and bring it back you see there's a zero right there because the house is still there it's just hidden and the collision is off and so what I need to do is when it passes the player right so I don't know if I don't know if that makes sense so let me make sure I zoom out so you can kind of see exactly things are going past the alien exactly Frank Frank gets it um, so if I zoom out here uh, you'll notice that and let's keep it moving you'll notice that it's gone! It moved back to the other end, right? And when that happens, when it passes, we're calling that recycling. And it recycles that tile. And upon recycling, I needed to tell all of the things that's on that tile to uh, replenish, basically. Uh, so that's, that's my task for today. Uh, I was gonna work on it yesterday, but uh, I, I gave I gave the chat some choice on what I work on, and uh, so I, I I need well something that I needed is this I needed a a menu for being able to change the levels. So if I press this, bam, we're in this level. Now we are in this level. Uh, if I open up that menu and we press this, bam, now we're in this level. So this is kind of a nice thing that's gonna help me today uh, in getting this all set up just the right way. So I'm excited, I'm really glad that we got this added in. Now I just have to remember which buttons are which. Uh, but yeah, we can switch between levels very nicely, very easily, and let's see if I can get these things recycled. Uh, so last night, before I ended the stream, this guy's gonna be your favorite, they're my favorite too! They're my my favorite too. Uh, the game is going to have four distinct areas in it, uh, and one of those areas is the city. So this is just like an asset expo. It just has like all the stuff. It just has like all the stuff that I've made uh, in Blender so far. And I have made this all in Blender all by myself pretty much. Well, I had help. I had advice from y'all wonderful folks in chat. Uh, so I'm appreciative of that. Uh, speaking of wonderful people in chat, I do all of my blendering like 
I would say 89% of my blending, I do it in private member streams. It's very private. You can join on YouTube and become a YouTube member. You can, you can like these wonderful people. And then you'll get access to that also uh, eight to 10 hour stream. Uh, where I just do all I do is blender. I mean, I do I do do other visual things like I do try to like set up things in the game and whatnot. So yeah, and that's something. If you're interested, uh, it's it's I think it's a nice thing. You get some emotes. Uh, you're gonna get a song sung to you in the chat. Uh, Frank, don't worry about Frank. Frank's a mod, so do worry about Frank. It says Frank's a member. Frank's actually a mod. My chat app. My chat app says that Frank's a member. I don't know why, but that's because Frank is just that special. But you will get a song sung to you uh, if you are a member. You can also join on. Patreon, patreon.com slash hypergamedev is another way that you can get access to those live streams if you're interested in seeing me make things like those buildings. I'm actually going to want to make more buildings at some point. Uh, these are these are just the tip of the iceberg. Just the tip of ye ol' iceberg. Uh, so any who's it, any who's it. All right, so uh, yesterday, uh, it's kind of funny, it's kind of funny, because yesterday I thought I left off on a fail, but I didn't, I didn't. Um, so what I need to do in order to get those houses to replenish their health, what I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to need to find a way uh, to communicate to each of the things only on that tile. That's why I have another set of houses, right? Because I don't want us to accidentally set the wrong tiles. Uh, or, or for example, like if I destroy this house, right? This is a separate tile than this tile. If that gets recycled, I don't want it to replant. So let's say I get rid of this one, right? I don't want this house to appear, or I rather, I don't want this house to appear in that. You know what I'm saying? It's Anyway, the point is, I want to make sure it's the one that just got removed. That's the one that I wanted to reset them on. And so uh, this is what a tile looks like. I feel like I could even like make a little distinction here just so it's a little more obvious, like which ones are which ones. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Uh, so if you don't, that's okay. You know what's really annoying? You see these red like borders? I don't know how to get rid of those in Godot. Like this is, a, I believe this is a navigation area. I'm pretty sure. So if I open up the instance for these houses, and it's also, it also doesn't rotate. I'm really confused, Godot. Like what the hell is this? Um, like, so here, if I get rid of the navigation obstacle, 3D. Is that what that? What is that red? I don't even know what that is anymore. Katie Codes is a member, and so Katie Codes gets a song. Katie Codes is here, not oh no. Katie Codes is here, not oh no. Apparently that's your song now. Katie Codes is here, not oh no. Katie Codes is here, not oh no. Nothing no oh, no about Katie Codes. Katie Codes is here, not oh no. Katie Codes is here, not oh. No. This is your song. Thank you for supporting Apple Game Dev. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm real sorry about that song. But you're also welcome. You're also welcome. What can I say? I hope you're doing good. Thanks for stopping in. Ooh. <laughs> uh, nothing don't know about you. That's right. You want the houses destroyed and not to be recycled. Some of them. That's correct. That's correct. Some of them I do not want to be recycled. Exactly. Uh, so, really don't know what that red box is, but I really don't like it. Anyway, so, so like, like, if I come, let me, let me just, let me just adjust these houses a bit. I mean, it's kind of a lot of effort, if I'm being honest, but really all I wanted to do was take the base and change the color so you can see the difference. Insane alpha beta, insane alpha beta, alpha beta, alphabet, A, B, C. If you know your ABCs, you know insane alpha beta is okay with me. If you know your ABCs, you know insane alpha beta is okay with me. If you know your ABCs, you know insane alpha beta's okay with me. Oh, know your ABCs so you can know insane alpha beta's okay a, a, with me. You're welcome. Also, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
found this, the red line is the tile boundaries. You can change it by modifying the rendering tile origin property of the tile in the select tab or the painting tab of tile set. So I, that's, I don't know, no, 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 no. I don't think so, because that, that sounds like 2D. I don't have any tile sets. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tile in nothing. Thanks for being tech support though. That's, that's appreciated. Uh, but I don't, I don't think that's what that is. I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think that's what that is. Um, Okay, so if I change, the thing is, if I change this material in this house, it's probably gonna change them all. Thanks for looking. Thanks, thank you for looking though. Like, thank you for looking. I just, all, all, all I want. Oh, right, so it won't even let me change this. So I think if I make this unique, will it let me change it? Yeah, it will. Okay, let's make this house pink, <laughs> okay? This house is pink. I'm doing, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want, as we work on this today, it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to explain this if you can visually tell the difference between all of these houses. You know, because otherwise it's like, it's like, it's like, you know, it's just extra words that I have to say. Um, but basically these houses are destroyed uh, on a animation player. So all I have to do is rewind that animation player, technically. That's technically all I have to do is rewind that animation player. And then uh, it's going to, it's going to not be destroyed anymore. Uh, and so the other thing, so last night I was, um, I was trying to communicate to all of the things that are on uh, this tile. Uh, and I was having trouble getting that message to go through. But you know what? I actually wasn't. Well, I was, but I had help from people in chat. Uh, but we got there. And we didn't realize we got there. You know why? Because I did a little search down here in the output. And it was filtering out all of the messages that I was printing. Uh, that And I was like, where are the messages? Why aren't they here? It's because I accidentally was filtering out all of the messages. It was just, it was, it's, a, it's hilarious if you think about it, except, you know, I, I felt like a failure when I didn't need to. Uh, the house colors could be randomized. They will be. They will be. That is absolutely what's going to happen. 100%, yeah. And and so that's that's sort of on my to-do list. Well, I, it actually might not literally be on my to-do list. It may be something that is, uh, I, I, you know what? Let's, let's put it my to do because it's something that I kind of thought to myself. Oh, I'll remember to do. I'm not gonna forget to do that. But you know, I haven't. I I kind of did forget. And then you said that, and I was like, oh yeah, that's something I want to do. Uh, I don't even. I don't think that's even in my. Tile spawns have randomized meat objects. No, it's not it. So by the way, this is a hack and plan. Hackandplan.com is a cool website, kind of like Trello, uh, except for game developers, so you can manage your project and stuff like that. How are we doing? How are we doing with our project? Ooh, wow, okay. Looks like we got a while to go. <laughs> but it's really cool, and I really love doing it. And it's, I actually, sometimes I just like, when I'm bored, I come to this and I organize it because I just, I just enjoy it so much. Uh, Okay, so let's add a task on here, and we're gonna say randomize, randomize obstacle color, yeah, maybe NPC even, NPC colors. Uh, so, e.g., houses have different colors, um, what else, uh, cars, etc., whatever. Stuff like that. Uh, how long will that take? I don't know, six hours, five hours, we'll say, maybe five hours, I don't know, I'm just guessing. So that, that's where that comes from. When we go to like the dashboard and the project dashboard here, it, it's like, it's like, you know, how much I've estimated that it'll take 300 hours and I've logged 134 hours. There's 196 hours left and we've, we've closed 106. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like you're creating your own benchmarks uh, and I really enjoy it. Oh, something I was gonna tell you like 25 years ago. I don't know why I'm so hyper today because it's hyper game dev. You know, by the, by the like middle of the stream, I'm gonna be like zen coding, but like for now, for now I got the energy. This is a long stream. I'm just here to work, you know, I'm just here to work, share my process, connect with you guys if you're interested and, uh, you know, I don't do these streams for the engagement because, you know, this is, this is, it's eight hours on YouTube of me making a game. Like, <laughs> it's not, but I am, I, I am working on YouTube videos. Guys, I have such an exciting YouTube video that I'm working on. I've genuinely never been so excited about making a YouTube video. Uh, and it's going to be like the first one on the channel in, in, a, in a way. Like, I've made other YouTube videos, but I've hidden them because they just don't fit the channel anymore. Um, 
Uh, but I have I have one coming up. I have one coming up that's going to be the first one that is going to be public and is going to be there because it does fit the channel. And I'm extremely excited about it. Okay, anyway, I'm going to drink some tea. Don't mind me. Oh, is that why I'm so hyper? Because I already drank all this much tea today. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, yeah. What's up, Edward? Good to see you. Welcome on in. Uh, so what I was going to tell you like 25 years ago uh, is that there are these four different areas, right? There's l area one, which is going to have like three levels in it, right? Chug, 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 chug. Uh, and I got to tell you, there's not going to be much hydration in this. This is caffeinated. Caffeinated. Uh, I really like putting my tea in jars because then you can like see like the beautiful color and I, and I've been like I've been more interested in like making it actually taste good. I know it looks like it looks like pond water or something, but but it's it's actually it's it's quite it's quite beautiful. It's quite beautiful. Um and I've been I've been trying to like actually like time it nicely so that way it doesn't overbrew and it just tastes better and I just love it. I just want to All right. Uh so yeah, it's probably going to be like three levels per area. Kind of like Spelunky, uh, and which is in some ways an inspiration for this game, kind of, sort of. Uh, and so the first area is going to be cattle farms and rural. The second area is going to be small towns. The third area is going to be big cities. So Frank, when you're talking about the buildings, um, yes, that the that actually this is literally the building. Look, that's the building that I based it on uh, in Blender, and and I I think we kind of nailed it. I think we kind of nailed it. Uh, and so I'm actually really proud of that. I was just drawn. I was just drawn to that building. I was like, that building is cool. Let me get one where we kind of see it a little better. Yeah, that one's kind of at a weird angle. We got to keep running. Keep on running through the runner game. Where's the front? Dude, I know we got some front facing ones. Wow. Oh, here's a front. Oh, wow. It's way over here. Okay. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Don't die along the way. Look at that. Look at that. Look how similar. Yeah. So uh, there's other buildings in the works too. Maybe that one. Maybe this one. Um, ooh, I like this one. That one looks like a college dorm, like a big college dorm. Uh, you know, so we'll see. Ooh, I like this one a lot. Ooh, I like this one. I want to make that one. So we'll see. We'll see how that all comes together. Oh, this one's nice too. Isn't that a cool building? The one that we ended up making. I really liked it. I think what drew me the most to this is this one's really cool because it's like old. It's got like an old feel to it, which is nice. I like this because this is like really simple. It's just like you know, just like ah, oh, squares. Um, but yeah. So what I liked about this building is I liked how like it had these like these like thin sections and then thick ones. And then like it's got like the balconies on one side over here and the balconies on the other side over here. And it's a Roblox one. Good, good. Because, you know, I wanted to pull uh, assets that were really like simple. Do I need you to make buildings for me? No freaking way. Absolutely not. Uh, so look, I mean, yeah, no, I, I honestly would prefer if folks didn't make assets for this game. I want to try to make most of them myself, if not all of them, uh, for lots of reasons. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, so, also welcome, Gwiz. Good to see you. Thanks for coming through. And I loved, I loved how, like, like you could tell it was, like, kind of funky. Because, like, here it's got, like, like, the back of the building on the other side. Like, I was just like, what? Like, look at this height of this one. I just love how they're all different heights. I just thought this was such a funky building. And, and I had a lot of fun. Actually, it was a ton of work. <laughs> it was a ton of work to make. Will there be any Cyclops humans? No. No. Uh, but good question. So, okay, let's let's get this color a little different. Let's get this color a little different. Slap a texture on a cube and make cuts when it extrude and add details. Wow, that is a, that is, that is, you, you might be able to, I could see why you would construe that as a pro tip. I could see where, where you would have thought that there's pro -ery in that tip. Uh, but it's, it's something, you definitely have said something. So, um, no, you're right. I mean, you're right. There's, it's, you know, buildings can be very simple, you know? And I think what happened for me was I just got taken away. I was just like having so much fun making the building that I just wanted to get, I wanted to make it like, you know, kind of, a lot, you know? And and then I also just think about like the art style that I'm going for too. And you know what else is the thing too? 
is like for my project and for, for many projects, this might work really well. But for my project, I need him to be able to like be break, like destructible. I need to be able to like break things apart into multiple chunks. So I, I often also have to think about how those pieces will fit together and whatnot. So right now I'm just changing the color of these uh, just to like, so that way when I'm explaining this today, uh, it'll just be a little more obvious what makes things different. Uh, you're absolutely gonna wanna randomize these at some point. Um, let's see, we're gonna do this last house and then I'll finish going over what we're doing and why we are doing a great job at it and we'll just get right back into it, yo! Okay, so this is almost a new color. It's so close to being a new color. I would say we made it. Okay, great. So, now that we got all of these, do the residents in your game have the proper insurance to cover an alien invasion? God, I hope so. Oh my God, I so hope so. But probably not, maybe. I mean, they do live in a dystopia, uh, so it's definitely possible um, that, that it, it, it's, it's tough because on one hand, it's like I would think that their dystopia wouldn't allow them to have basic protections. On the other hand, a dystopia would like insurance because insurance is part of capitalist dystopias. So it's kind of 50-50. It's kind of a 50-50 chance, I think, is my answer. Uh, so we have these different tiles, right? These houses are not the same as those houses. The houses are different. Now you can see it's not actually randomizing it. It's doing the same thing every time. I'm going to fix that right now. So this particular level is... Um, which level is this? I didn't name it as well as I could. Pierogi gone is not gone. Oh, 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 oh. Pierogi gone is not gone. Pierogi gone is not gone. Pierogi gone is not gone. You're waiting for your bus to the doctor's office. Nothing is wrong with you. I love a good doctor's office visit. I love a good doctor's office visit. You're giving recommendations for humidity modification. Nice. I'm so glad you're doing all right. That that can be scary. So I wanted to find out what the name of this level is. Level zero debug. So this is, by the way, yesterday we implemented this menu. It's, it's just for debug. It's just for the devs. All right. It's not for, uh, you know, the game itself. This would not be accessible by the player. But it does begin to implement a system that might be useful. Maybe, probably not, but maybe. So it's a little uh, debug thing. The alien doesn't have a name. What do you want its name to be? Because it's actually multiple aliens. Technically, there's actually like a bunch of aliens uh, and you are just one of them. So, it, it, and really there's, there's, I don't even know. So I don't even know, would the aliens have names because I don't even know if they have language, to be honest. I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. It's a kind of question I have an answer to. Chibbles? Chibbles. <laughs> it does look like a Chibbles. Okay, so this this one is Chibbles. When I restart it, it's going to be a different one. It could also be named Chibbles, but not necessarily. Uh, they are Chibble. They are Chibble. Uh, so we added this cool thing, and also it tells us what level... It is. Is, is, that, is that like something? I don't know. Maybe you're talking about something. Level zero, zero debug one. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we need it to be randomized. The reason why it's not randomized is because this uh, terrain controller, uh, we set up a certain way so that, so that um, we can have the... Um, uh, let me let me actually show actually why don't I show you it's it's boring to explain it so boring to explain you just last some letters together. I think I think it's a good so you're saying like their species is chibbles okay so so notice here how there's this like strip of 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 stuff, right? This is how this terrain controller works. There is a sort of cache or a storage area. We're calling it the the collector that's back here. And it collects uh, all of the tiles that are preloaded into the scene. So they're actually behind the camera, right? If we go back into the game, you can't see it because it's behind the camera. It's behind the camera. So these are all the ones that are waiting to be loaded in. And so the collective, the collective. And so when these uh, disappear after going past the player, they end up there or they spawn back in here. And so it just kind of randomly picks a new one to add in, right? And so this, this, this is fine, this is all well, this is good. Now on the level that I was just showing you, uh, there's exactly enough tiles in the main folder uh, for it to only 
be able to load those in. So nothing ever goes back into the collector because there's no extra tiles. Uh, so we won't then get any randomness because the first set that appear are just set and that's the end of that. So I need to actually add more tiles in here if I want to see the uh, the stuff the stuff moving. Alien move? No. Ground move? Yes. It's, it's an optical illusion. We're doing movie magic in here. You don't necessarily need to name the alien. My spider doesn't have a name and I just decided not to name it. Good for you. Good for you. Don't bother with a neti pot unless I have allergies. I show you. Ew, that's so gross. That's gross, but it sounds uh, important. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add some more stuff into that one. That one was level zero, zero, zero. And by the way, MK Coats, thank you so much for your help last night. It turned out Everything was working. I just had a filter down here on the search that was filtering out the messages I was trying to print. So we didn't see the messages that were coming. <laughs> so I didn't actually know that it was working, but it was working, which is awesome. Um, and I'm about to continue on that, but first I just wanna get situminated. So we've got the folder, this one right here. Okay, cool. So what I'll just do is, so there's seven in here. There must be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven things in this folder. That's how many tiles are active at one time. So all I gotta do is duplicate this. Let's add, sure, let's add seven in there. Uh, we'll add six. We can add so many more in here. And the, the, if I add too many, it's gonna take a while for the, the houses to come up. So I don't wanna add too, 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 too many. But now, but now, uh, if we switch to that level and we switch the camera, you will see there are some tiles in the collector. Now it's not gonna, it's not gonna look like much, uh, maybe there's there's like a there's like a percentage chance that the houses oh the houses went in there they, There's a percentage chance that they don't go in there and it doesn't randomize it But at least here we get a little bit more randomness, which you know, I prefer if we can do it um, so again the task for today is to uh, Set well first number one set up a line of communication between uh, the uh, the tiles that move or, or the, that, set up a line of communication between that which moves the tiles and the tile that was added to the collector, or as we're gonna call it, that was recycled. Uh, so that's that's kind of my first task, is to set up that line of communication. Uh, and we're actually pretty, pretty darn close to that. So uh, what I wanted to illustrate here is, if I destroy one of these houses that are colorful, let's destroy all these houses that are colorful, uh, you will notice that if that recycles, it stays destroyed, but what we need is for them to come back, right? But we want to make sure we're not telling every tile's houses to come back because otherwise uh, we might we might do that for things we don't want. So for the non-colorful houses, I'm going to get rid of the left side of the houses, right? And so, you know, if this goes away, the left houses should be replenished. They're not. And however, what shouldn't be replenished would be the one that we destroy over here, right? So we want to make sure we target exactly the right tile that that was recycled. Uh, Rogi said, I I think character not moving has the advantage of infinite level. Um, yeah, absolutely, at least, at least. Katie says, whoa, so my Pong game, I should make the uh, background move, not the ball. Potentially, it depends, it depends. If that suits what you're what you're working on, then maybe you should. Uh, Jeebus says, the ball doesn't stay in one place. Yeah, it kind of depends. It might depend, I'm not sure. It depends, you know, it might work out for it. It depends what kind of game they're making. Characters never move in infinite running games. I don't even, is that is, is that always true? Uh, but if you don't need infinite levels, character movement is okay. Yeah, it kind of depends. I feel like you could, it, 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 I feel like it depends. I, you could do either. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Uh, it does. I've been wondering if there would be an infinite mode. I mean, it, so it kind of is, right? So the idea is, uh, there's, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, you could play infinitely if you wanted. The object at this stage of the prototyping, the object is uh, that you have to collect a minimum threshold of abductions. So it's going to be like, you know, you have to collect, you know, whatever, 30 abductions in level one or something like that, right? And once you get 30 abductions, this is going to morph into level two, 
right? If you don't collect that minimum of abductions, technically it'll just keep going and going and going and going and going. And you would just keep playing for as long as it takes. Um, so that means uh, the idea is that as levels get harder, it's going to be harder to get you know, the meat objects, and you just keep playing a level for as long as it takes you to beat it. So, and, and then the other advantage too is that we can randomize the tiles and keep them like, um, and yeah, not a time at the end. We can randomize the tiles and not have too many tiles and just keep like recycling them in over and over and over again. Um, and we don't ever have to worry about like a limit or when we're at the maximum or whatever. Uh, I kept imagining, I don't know if that, I don't think I explained that well. Uh, I kept imagining there was a time where it ended the level. I didn't realize it was about abductions. It is it's all about abductions. Players doesn't move to injury limits. You can't just increase the value uh, like the positions of a particular scene without the game crashing. Okay, okay. Oh, you can't just increase the value like the position. Right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. That makes sense. Right. Like in a in a infinite. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could like simulate. Like you, you can have it maybe like go in a circle or you could or, you know, what you could do. Yeah, obviously you can't do an infinite axis. But what you could do is you could say that it moves forward and then maybe it teleports back and it keeps like doing that. You know, I'm just saying like. There's there's some kind of workarounds you can maybe do. In which case, you gotta wonder, is it actually sort of staying in place? Um, but you make a good point. All right, so the messages we're getting sent, uh, this is where we're, we're about to transition into the boring stuff. I think it's the most thrilling, exciting stuff in my heart. But like, you know, I'm gonna need to get deep into it. So uh, on the terrain tiles, okay? On the terrain tiles, uh, I am creating this block instance node. Uh, and I actually don't have this on any of the tiles, which is horrifying. So I need to add one to every single tile. We're starting with just these so we can set this part of the game up and and that be good enough. Um, and so we've got a script on here. And this script, very simply, has a variable called hello. And it says block instance variable fetched. All right, it's just a string. This is just me trying to set up the line of communication, which actually we achieved last night quite well. Uh, on the terrain controller, which is in the main scene, that's basically that belt of levels that keeps coming for, or of tiles that keeps coming forward. Um, on that script, uh, we set up this beautiful thing. Big shout out to MK Codes for helping me sort this out. Uh, basically, we are establishing a variable that takes this first terrain. Now, first terrain in this code um, means that's the one that has passed the alien. It passes the alien and it gets recycled. So, so we could we could rename this to like recycled tile or something. That's what this is. And so we are adding it to a variable. This awesome function that MK Codes taught me: get node or null. So. The thing is, is every thing, every tile that goes by for now doesn't necessarily have a block instance. In the future, I would want every single tile to have block instance, but for right now it doesn't. And who knows, maybe someday I don't want it on there. I don't know. But but this get node or null allows us to not be just logging errors for days, which is awesome. So it's going to look for block instance node, basically, which, as I showed you, exists right here on this tile. So it's going to look for that node. I know looking for things by name. Ah, it's horrifying. OK, we can change that if we need to. I'm just trying to establish a line of communication so we can get this thing working. Refactoring is always an option. So. Uh, it establishes that variable, and then we say if instance is valid, another nugget from MK codes, uh, if instance is valid block instance, uh, that is to say, it assume making sure it is actually there so we don't have problems on the tiles where it isn't there, uh, we then want to print uh, this message from the block instance, which if you see, is hello. Hello is that variable uh, on the script here with the string block instance variable fetched. So uh, if that goes past the player, uh, what we should see is 
uh, that message. So again, just to like quickly recap, right? Block instance dot hello. So we're trying to call a variable on here. Ultimately, what I want to do is I'm going to want to update a variable that then trickles, that then searches for every, uh, you know, obstacle, house, whatever on that tile and tells them, hey, you just got recycled. You need to replenish your HP and not be destroyed anymore. So let's see if this works. So, so basically what this is saying is when the first, when a terrain tile goes past the player, uh, or when a tile is recycled, if it has block instance on it, check the block instances hello variable and print the message associated with that. So let's go ahead and see if that works. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to switch to the level. And I don't know if you noticed, but right away, baby, right away, block instance variable fetched. It is indeed seeing it right away every time that goes past the player, which is exactly what we want. So now we have a line of communication. This is where we left off last night. We have a line of communication between uh, the terrain uh, controller script and, or the tile controller, if you will, a line of communication between that and the specific tile that was just recycled. Next step is to set that flag that trickles down to all of the other things that are on there, which is going to be all of these, <laughs> all of these things. Every single house on here, eventually it's going to need to be the, the, the meat objects, the humans, the cows, uh, everything that spawns on there, pretty much. So that'll be, that'll be fun. On, today, on today's episode of Hyper Game Dev, Lise will lay tiles to make a beautiful bathroom. I mean, outdoors? I don't think my analogy makes any sense except the word tile. <laughs> uh, yeah, that fell apart, but I like, I like where you went with that. <laughs> I like where you went with that. Yeah, right. Tiles, you think about like like bathrooms. A-S. It's progressing well. Uh, we got that menu built. That menu works. It's beautiful. Uh, I even added, I added some nice little like columns and we can see what current level we're on and we can just switch. We can pull this menu up, switch to that level. Look at that. Oh yeah, we switching over here. We switching over there. Yeah. It works really nicely. It works so well. Uh, so, so uh, now that I've got a nice way to switch between our debug levels, I'm gonna get to replenishing stuff on these uh, on these terrains. And then later today, so after that, so th that's my task right now. After that, uh, I'm going to want to have these. Uh, uh, these meat objects also get replaced, but that's going to be a little bit more complicated. Don't know that we're going to get that done today because I'm going to want to set up spawners for each of those. And they're not really spawners. They just either appear or don't appear. And then when we grab a meat object, it's actually going to hide the thing that we grab and it's going to spawn a fresh one at the cursor. Uh, and, and then when it recycles, it's going to, ch it's going to run like a probability algorithm over all all of the um, the spawners and then maybe or maybe not the meat object will reappear on recycle. So that's the other thing that I want to work on, but I, I don't know if we'll get to it. We'll see, probably, but maybe. Uh, is that a pause? It is not a pause menu. I did add a terrain stopping feature though. I added this debug last night as well. So we can just like kind of pause the game, sort of. It doesn't really pause the game though. Uh, no, this isn't a pause menu. This is a debug thing. It's just for developer use. Uh, and what it just lets me do is switch between all of the different levels. And they're not really levels. It's actually just collections of tiles uh, that it's just switching to. Um, and so so it's not, it's not quite a pause menu yet. Um, I, I, I don't know, I guess there will be a pause menu, but, but yeah, I haven't gotten around to that yet. I haven't gotten around to the, you know, now you mention it one of these days, I should probably, I should probably start thinking about that. Maybe I'll add that to the hacking plan. I feel, I feel like the sooner we figure out how to pause the game, the easier my life is going to be. Maybe, but then again, we might add stuff that's impervious to the pause menu. I, I don't know if it's really a big hurry, but whatever, let's add it anyway. Pause menu. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's not a bug. Oh, because I put that at the top, it defaults to it. Ew, I didn't know that. How long will making a pause menu take? I don't know, seven hours? I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. So did I make that last thing that I did? 
I did. I made it a bug. That's not supposed to be a bug. No, 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 no. This would be um, randomized obstacles, NPC colors. I guess that's design. It's programming. So actually, I need to change this. This is a nice thing about uh, what you call it. Seven hours is a while. It is, but you know, I'm just, I just, I, I like to really give things a wide berth because I'm still new to this and you just never know. And also, I only work on this during live streams. I only work on this during live streams and these live streams are about eight hours long. So, you know, if, if we're chatting, if we're doing other stuff, you know, that might extend it to be a longer amount of time. So I just, I give it, I give it a wide berth. Uh, but you can customize like the categories on Hack and Play, which is nice. We're gonna put programming on the top. So it's the default when I do these things. All right, here we go. Great. Awesome. Let's, let's set a flag. So uh, on here, I need a variable that's going to be and this is a class. Okay, good. I'm going to say variable. Hey, hello, Tempest. Welcome to the stream. I'm sorry. You don't you don't get a song. You're not a member. Why do I always want to sing your, your name? I feel like your name just, hello, Tempest. It just has like a, it has a tempo to it. Uh, very, I hope you're doing good. Variable um, uh, is, it's tough because we need this to be unset as well, which, you know, is is doable, but it's just worth keeping in mind. I guess I'd really want to run a, I probably want to do a signal. Wouldn't that make the most sense, right? <laughs> Hello, tempo. I mean, because a signal could then be sent and only received by things. Hmm. I don't know how that would work, but would, would a signal, it just, it needs to only send that signal. Yeah, I don't think a signal is the right way to go. I don't think that's the way. I don't think we should do it that way. A hollow tempo? Ooh, that's, that's spooky. Well, it sounds like a harsh criticism. This song's hollow tempo put me to sleep. Um, variable, okay, so seriously, seriously, boring stuff. So um, I think a flag makes the most sense and these all these things that are on here are checking for that flag. I think that makes the most sense. So we're gonna say uh, variable um, how about recycling? How about just recycling? Okay, that's what I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it recycling and it's gonna be false. Okay, and then on each, so now on each of these, I actually don't have top level scripts on these, which is concerning. That's a little concerning because somehow these are going to need to access, they're going to need to access this. These are all instances. And if I don't have a script in the top level, we'll just put one. Well, the humans do. The human actually needs to be remade. You'll notice the human has a rigid body as the top level node. That's actually something that, um, that's something that I mm, need to fix. I just don't feel like it right now. <laughs> um, but I do need to change that. So, you know, we'll keep that in mind. Because otherwise, it, if it won't have the script. Okay. Okay, so let, let, let's do it on the top level of these. We're going to say that's, that's probably fine. <laughs> it's a wild, that's a wild name for a variable. It makes me want to do it just because it's wrong. Um, and then the string is just a couple ums. Yeah, a couple ms. Yes. I think that the chaos in that is just right. It's just the right amount of chaos. Uh, so, okay, so I'm going to open up the house, which is this, and then... So then what do I call the top level? I mean, and I need to make sure that it was the same script on everything. I guess we could say, we could say, you know what? Maybe I'll say block object. What if it's a block object script? And it's, and it's just on everything that is an object of a block. I know I've been calling them tiles, but I think I wanna, I guess I'm calling them blocks now. I don't know what, I don't know what's better, block or tile. I, I honestly, I feel like I need to ask you guys what I should call them. I need, I need help. Uh, what to call, what to call level pieces in mm, the game? Well, I don't know, what to call uh, level pieces. Uh, tiles, blocks, any other suggestions to add as options? I've got tiles, blocks, um, terrain terrain 
Um, I can add one more option unless we get rid of tile. Cubes? That's that's terrible. All right, fine. I'll type it in so we have an option. What if that wins, though? What if that's the one? What if cubes was the one all along? To track the player's health with the players in... It, while the player isn't loaded in... <laughs> that is... That is... That is... Oof, oof that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Oh, section is a... Oh, that's so painful. Uh, but at least it's very specific. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, so we got tiles, blocks, sections, or cubes. Okay, got it. Done. Poll is started. What should they be called? I won't... I won't worry about it. I will just abide. Cubes... <laughs> I, I, I already got a vote. You already are voting for cubes. All right, tiles is... Tiles is picking up. All right, well, we're going to call them block for now. We'll rename it if we need to. Module works too. I don't know if that one, you just didn't like it. Well, I just, I mean, I didn't, you didn't tell me before I made the poll. Also, I'm only allowed to do four options on the poll. I probably would have replaced cubes. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Module, to me, module feels, I don't know. I, I like module. Oh, my God, cubes is doing well. Uh, I like module, it just feels, it feels vague. It feels too vague to me. And, and like, maybe it would be more specific in a different context, but it feels like this isn't the context. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna actually save this script in the terrain section. You wanted to give a vote for cubes because it's funny? Oh no, why did I, why did I listen to Edward? Oh my God, gee whiz, you guys are freaking trolls. Um, uh, all of you guys who aren't trolls, I like more. I just want to say that, all right? I, I look. I've 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 been reading up on this parasocial relationship thing. I don't know if if I'm doing a good job, but like I like you more if you're not a troll. Does that? What does that do? Does that? Is that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So we're gonna call this a block object for now, and we can rename it if we need to. You go to block because Minecraft. Wow. Wow. Do, 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 do. I wanted to vote for cubes, but actually voted for section. Nice, insane alpha beta. Yeah, it was ammunition. It was accidental ammunition. Uh, but I'm easy to troll. I'm autistic. I'm so easy to troll. I'm so easy to troll, you guys. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so... On this script, I want it to be checking to see if a block instance above it has a variable called recycling and what is its deal. What is its deal? Gee, this is autistic too. Autism in the house. They weren't called blocks. They were called chunks. Oh, chunks. Whoa, that's a cool one too. Oh, these are so many good. There's so many good answers. There's actually a lot of good possibilities here. Uh, where are we at so far? Where are we at so far? Blocks is not winning. I don't know much, but Blocks is not winning. <gasps> oh no! This poll! Oh, it's so divisive! What? <laughs> oh no! Well, we know it's not gonna be tiles. I mean, at least, probably, maybe. Not so far. Wow, I am actually a little surprised that it's it's like who knows? Oh, a vote for blocks. I like that. I guess tiles isn't winning. No, it is not. I'm sorry for saying all the tiles. Thanks, Thoughty and Thoughty. Thank you for giving me the idea for so much of this stuff. By the way, thank you for giving me the idea, especially for the respawning. Well, well wait, no, was it you who gave me? It was Albesca who gave me the respawning idea? That that's a cool one, Thoughty. I I I, I I'm excited to tell you about it at some point. Uh, I'll probably update on the Discord. But um, yeah, I'm doing it today. We're replenishing today. You're right. That is what we're doing today. Yeah. Welcome. Good to see you, Thoughty. Thanks for stopping in and saying that. Am I the only person who voted for Tile, S says? Maybe. You might have. I think it's device. I think it is too roguey because it doesn't matter much. I have to agree with you on that one. I think that's why it's so divisive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 11% is one ninth, so it's just you so far. There you go. A little bit hard, but yes, maybe the best way. 
So yeah, it's a little bit hard, but but we'll we'll get there. So the respawning thing is cool. So like instead of like instantiating something every like instantiating the meat objects, we're I'm gonna set it up so that when you click on the meat object, it spawns a new one at the cursor. So that way we're not spawning a bunch of new things every time a tile comes in. Kind of awesome. If it's a tie, then we gotta redo it for the tiebreaker. That's true, that's true, that's true. Well, we'll let it cook, we'll let it cook. It seems like blocks and cubes are really, are really hashing it out. Uh, we'll we'll let it sit we'll let it sit you know it might take some time for for it to for it to really we've only got nine votes people are going to come in and out of the stream i'm going to be here for a while so we'll we'll check in later we'll check in later good good voting good voting this is important oh my gosh did it seriously just just go back look at the look at how it's so volatile it's so volatile it's like an actual race <laughs> it's amazing it's actually amazing uh, so, all right, so I want this to be honestly, processedly, constantly checking. So I want to, in fact, let's not even do that. Let's set up an on ready, but that's not going to work because it has to look above it. No, that's okay. Well, no, because it has to look at the one above it. So I think we want to say get owner, right? I think we want to say get owner. I think we can still set that up. Do we need to on ready that? Maybe. On ready. I'm gonna say on ready. Uh, let me add some space so the chat isn't covering anything up. On ready variable. Mm, um, let's say let's say we're deep. We're deep in in the in the real stuff here. Uh, on ready variable. I guess just block instance. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that had to be complicated. Block instance equals. I just like freeze when I have to come up with a variable name. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is my defining moment. Coding hype. Yes, we are deep in it now. Uh, block instant, or we're getting deep. We're getting there. We're at the surface, but we're plunging. Uh, block instance equals, so I'm thinking we do like get owner. I don't know what this is going to do, so I'm going to need to kind of print it. Really, I'm going to want to say get owner, and then we want to say block instance, right? But for now, let's just see if even this works. So it should report a mesh instance uh, if this is working correctly. Um, I kind of would like to even set it up to say if, no, because we can't do it that way. All right, so I'm going to say print. Let's do it on the ready function. And it's going to say print. Whoops. This isn't really block instance, but that's OK. Print block instance. Okay, can we get all these unhelpful things here away? Thank you so much. The vote, what's happened? Did cubes, god dang it. Is it gonna be cubes? Guys, I don't wanna call them cubes. I don't wanna call them cubes. They're not cubes. They are objectively not cubes. Gosh, man, my my sense for for trolling is 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 not look at that does that look like a cube to you does that look like a cube to you it is it's not it it's not it thank you thought t thank you every single one of you who didn't vote for cubes are my favorite what it's not a cube um okay all right you know what it's fine i don't care we're gonna let it cook all right we're gonna let it cook a good long time. That's a we're gonna <laughs> We're gonna let it cook a good long time. Come on, blocks! Come on, blocks! Alright, Rogi, you're also my favorite! Wait, how do I know you're telling the truth? How do I know you're telling the truth? I don't know. You can't I don't think you can prove it unless you screen recorded yourself making the vote. I think I just have to assume everybody has betrayed me! Okay, I'm not I don't I'm not really that egotistical, I swear. But really, uh cubes, come on guys, come on. Guys, we can't call it cubes. We can't call it cubes. Look at it. It's not a cube. Okay, it's fine. I'm fine. Uh, so, okay. Fine. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not even going to think about it. It's not on my mind. I don't care. Uh, so, here's what's going to happen. We're going to come back to the script. We want to say... Not on this script, on the block object script, print block instance. Okay, good. So we, I just want to see what it is. So first of all, I need to turn off the printing that is happening. 
I didn't vote for sections. I voted blocks, but that's because I forgot that Minecraft sections are called chunks. Right, that's true. That's, that, that's true. <laughs> Name it cat. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Just to, just to spite sp you all. Um, okay, so I want to say don't print this. And then we should get, if, if I did this right, or an error, if I did it wrong. There it is. <laughs> um, so is it the get owner thing? Like, because it doesn't have a get owner? Oh, <laughs> it's because I didn't. I didn't pass, I didn't pass that little if statement there. We didn't pass the if statement. That'll, that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it right there. Okay, nice. Oh, beautiful. So there we go. So it's reporting mesh instances. So get owner is working quite well. It is seeing the thing above it after it attaches. Exactly what I want. Exactly what I want. Oh, Rogi makes a good point. While I have my thumbs up, as a person of thumbs uppery, I want to go ahead and say, true, there is a like button underneath this video or on top of the video if you're watching it on mobile. Please, hyper smash that thumbs up button because it means more people will see this live stream while we're live and will come and vote for Cube. <laughs> uh, or not, or not. Uh, and also we'll see the live stream after it ends more. So thank you for able to do that. I do appreciate it. Hyper smash that thumbs up button. Thank you so much. Bloop, bloop, bloop. It makes you feel great. Sometimes there's colors and things. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Especially if you voted cube. Oh gosh. Cube or no like. <laughs> well, look, I have to abide by the results of the poll. So I'm going to have to say, uh, your like has no power here, but everyone else's does. Everyone else's does. Uh, all right. Uh, you voted cube? Noted. Uh, so, cool, cool, cool. I want to now get to the block instance. So let's see if we can print that hello from the block instance, this time from the other thing. Now, the reason why I'm doing this this way is because I'm a noob, right? And, and I still don't, I, I can't like in my head know how to code something and know it's gonna work. So I have to like kind of every step of the way, try this, try that, see if it works. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, and, and, and that's fine, I like it that way. Because otherwise, if I don't do it that way, I'm gonna like type up all the stuff, test it, it's not gonna work, and then I have to go through each step to figure out what went wrong. Boring, I would rather do it this way. And then next time I'll be like, no, I've done this before, I know what to do. And, and then I don't have to do it like this. Uh, like the old monitors, cat, cubes, I don't even understand. L plus ratio, mm, those, those are things. Cubes are midstream. <laughs> <laughs> midstream it is then. Uh, so, no, look, it's, it's, it's really all about, look, well, look, it's all about the votes. If the votes will it to be cubes, then cubes it shall be, oh my god, 22 votes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Usually by the end of these, we get, we get around, we get, well, there should be more votes, right? Oh, frick. Oh, for crying out loud. I think it's gonna be cubes. I can't believe it. I can't even believe it. Yeah, it's a landslide. It's a landslide honky ratio. God, you're such a freaking... Okay, all right, so here we go. <laughs> Get owner. So I want this to be block instance, right? Now, how do I, I don't, th I think, well, okay. So if I think I want to say get node, we could do get node or null, but yeah, we, I think we do the same thing. I think we a cube slide. That's silly. That's silly. That's just silly. I think we can for now keep doing get node or null. Uh, and then say block instance. And that like might work. I like might work. Uh, and then specifically, I want it to print hello. So we say print block instance dot hello. And let's see if, so what it will say, this, well, let's change what it says. Let's change what it says, just because it feels more official that way, you know? And what's wrong with an official thing? Cube slide sounds like an awesome, oddly satisfying video. Oh, it does. I never thought about that for getting inspiration for creating like cool visual content is just to like think of words together. That's a great like tip for content creation. Note it. Just come up with fun sounding words and then make something that looks like it. Cube slide. Uh, okay. 
So what am I doing? Oh, we're changing the message. Uh, and the message is on the block instance grid. Block instance variable fetched. Yes, but we want to say uh, block object C can, can call the block instance. Yay. OK, great. Let's see what we get. Orange dozer. Dude, totally. Oh my gosh. Orange dozer? You could totally make something cool based on that. Oh, we got errors. Uh, hello, invalidate index hello on block instance null instance. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, so we have to do that same is valid thing. Right. So, and again, uh, this is going, to, I'm going to add this to every probably, maybe. To, probably going to add this block instance to every single tile. Currently, it is not on every single tile because that is a huge task that I do not feel like doing right now. And there's funner things to do like this. So for now, we're going to set up the if instance is valid first, and then we can refactor it to not have that once it is on every tile, which is going to be a lot of work. Um, and it's not fun work. It's boring work, which is why I'm sparing us all and not doing it right now. Uh, so we want to say if orange dozer makes me think of orange Kirby with a pink sleeping cap and Z's and the blue sleeping bubble. Oh, dozer. Because I was thinking like I was thinking like like maybe a, an an orange that like knocks over things or like orange stuff that gets knocked over like a bulldozer. But that's. That's actually adorable, Rogi. See, it's he. This, this, this is could be honestly, Rogi. Maybe I know you're thinking about making a blender jam at some point. Just like having like some random words together like that is actually pretty cool for something such as a jam that you might be making. Just an idea, just a thought. Okay, so no error, no error. Love to see it, love to not see it. Uh, and then we're gonna pull up the debug level and hopefully we get the message uh, we do not. We do not get the message. It don't see it. Okay, why not? Well, I am putting it in the ready function, which would make sense. Would it make sense? Wait. I don't think that would make sense. Because if I, what if I, hmm. Hmm. Oh. So I think, so this is, this is one little tiny script that is on one thing, right? Is it on a thing? I put this on a thing, right? Oh, I did. It's actually on every house. This is actually on every house. First of all, let me give it a class name. Number one, what if the theme was color-based? That's so boring. For like an art thing? That's so boring. Do, 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 do. I think Visual Arts Jam, any program accepted. Nice. Oh, that's a good idea. Great minds don't necessarily have to think alike. Oh. <laughs> Those are almost wise words. And it will definitely be fun to think of themes for it, right? OK, class name. Do, 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 do. I watched someone make a match statement today, and it totally made sense because of your explanation yesterday. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Match statements are useful. They're useful. Theme the second Mona Lisa. Oh God, uh, this is going to be block object. Although we will refactor it to be whatever the votes say it should be. Oh, for frick's sake, it's gonna be cubes, isn't it? We're gonna have to refactor it as cubes. Oh man, uh, the exciting conclusion coming later in the stream because these streams are really long. Uh, block object. Class name, great, good. That's not going to make any difference here. So it's going to check the get. It's just a question for myself. If I were to say, but also, weren't we not having a crash before? Oh, because I'm using it as a variable because I'm readying it. Wait, but right, because we're doing this right. So when we said get owner, it was fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. Well, I'm curious if if it's it's pro I'm sure it's not the variable fetching. That's the problem. I'm certain it's not. But let's just because it should be happening immediately. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that doesn't work. What if I put this just just out of curiosity, if I put this in the process, what does that do? What does that do? Is that something? I might have to do something a little different to get this to work. What is the plan? Good question. Oh, wow. And then that's a whole entire error. 
Uh oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. I understand why that would happen now. Uh, okay, no good there. Wow. What's the error, pray tell? Do, 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 doesn't matter. Okay, cool. So that definitely doesn't work. Gotcha. Maybe you need a flag on uh, breakable objects if damaged. Ooh, I like that. Maybe a Boolean is damaged. And if these objects are damaged, you need to run a function on these what resets stats and break animations. Yeah, so so here's okay, so let me draw this. We're gonna we're gonna do a little drawing. We're gonna do a little drawing uh, to clarify what we what we need to do here. It's actually very similar to this drawing, in fact. Um so what we have is um uh level cube level cube uh re is recycled level cube you know whatever x you know it's it's got like a, a name to it right is recycled all right that is that is something we have on one end of this formula on the other end we have uh, objects that need to be reset. And so I like your idea. It's Excalidra. I like it. I, dude, I realized that MS Paint was a waste of my time. And Excalidra is so much easier to work with. Uh, so I am, I am retiring using MS Paint. Uh, so what I need now is to figure out how to, where are these arrows, I need to figure out how to get the information about the level cube that's recycled. Oh, it's such a stupid name. Dude, I, I hate it. It's such a dumb name. It's the worst name. You guys are all trolls. I, I dude, there is no way we're gonna, dude, that is such a stupid name. It looks like a coding language, hot dog. Mm. <laughs> I can see that. Um, so what I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to establish the the line of communication between uh, the level cube being recycled, which cube is it that was recycled, and the object on that cube that needs to be reset. Right? There's no way we're calling it a cube. It's asinine. It must be revoted. Yeah. Right. I know. I don't know, dude. I don't think we'll get different results. I really don't we'll think get different results. Um, I might try this Excalib, but MS Paint, how can I ever let that go? I didn't think I'd have it in me. No, it's awesome. It's so good. It's it's fantastic. Like you can do different shapes. You can you can put them on different layers. You can attach things to each other and they automatically attach. You can dude, it's it's amazing. It's so good. Get into it. Check it out. See what you think. You, there's a pencil, all right? You can draw. No, nah, it's it's the best. And it saves things. So I literally I did that yesterday. That drawing that was on there and I came back and it was still there. So it's fantastic. I love it. Uh, so, so yeah, so, so Thoughty, I, 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 I love that. And I think it's a great suggestion. And I think I need to do that a hundred percent. That way, everything isn't bothering to try to replenish itself. If it doesn't need to replenish itself, right? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yes, you can change the pencil color. It's not trash. It's a website. Look, Excaladraw.com. Go check it out. It's dope. Um, here, I'll even make it clickable for you. I'm, that's, that's the kind of person I am. That's the kind of person I am. Uh, so I think this is actually a really good idea. Uh, and then, and then, so the stage that I'm at right now is trying to make sure I can actually communicate between the level cube getting recycled and uh, the object that needs to be reset. So I'm just trying to test things to try and uh, get that channel open. And then once I get the channel open, then we can update stuff, which is which is fine. 
which will be fine. Albesca, I'll bet Albesca is here. I'll bet Albesca is here. I will bet Albesca is here. I will bet Albesca is here. I will bet Albesca is here. I'll 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 bet Albesca is here. Here. Welcome, Albesca. I'll bet you're here. I'm real sorry about that song, but you're also welcome. Uh, thanks for supporting Hyper Game Dev. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Things are going well. Uh, so I have generally established a line of communication between um, the uh, terrain controller that moves the terrain forward and uh, objects that are destroyed. Well, I'm kind of trying to get that. I'm basically trying to establish a line of communication so we can tell things to die or not, or that they did die, or no, that they need to undie. I'm trying to bring dead things back to life. I'm a necromancer. We're doing necromancy, and I haven't quite got the spells down right, is sort of a way you could describe this. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, and then yesterday we got the uh, level. This is we're getting errors. We're gonna we did we no yes okay so we got the level selector all set up yesterday, which is cool. So I can easily pop this open and change levels very easily, and it works and it looks kind of nice. Uh, so yesterday was a big success, and then uh, today I'm trying to actually make things matter, uh, and so to get this communication going. I have to figure it the frick out. So, okay, so right now, this is saying, if block instance is valid, print block instance, every frame. I mean, why wouldn't that? Okay, so what if I, what if I get rid of this part of it and we just get owner? We already know this works. We already know that this works. Uh, I just, oh, there it is. And so there it's spamming it everywhere, right? So we know that it, get owner works. Uh, if I say get node or null block instance, on the other hand, it seems to be reporting null. Oh, dude, is it because it's underscore? Oh my God, it's underscore, isn't it? Is it underscore? Why is it stupid stuff? And this is why, okay, it's not underscore. I'm actually really glad because I did not. Oh, it, that was it. Oh my God. Oh my God. That was it. That was it. It's because I didn't put an underscore. This is why you don't use names to connect things. That's okay. It's just to establish the line of communication. We can refactor it later. Uh, I can see in the horizon the playable version of this game. Exciting that it will happen. Yeah, right, right. Same, same, same. Every day more real. Yes, that's it. I'm here. I ain't, I ain't stopping until it's done. They'll have to kill me for me to stop it. Uh, so, okay, so now we know that it sees that. Now let me get it to print the variable. I want it to print the variable. So that way we know we can actually, you know, access variables on it. So I'm sure this will work. I'm a little, I'm almost a little unsure why it doesn't work on this level, but we're not gonna worry about it. Okay, there it is, block object. Block object can call the block instance. Let's friggin' go. Okay, good news, I love it. Thank you, Rogi, for saying that. I, you know, I feel that, and 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 the hacking plan, the hacking plan is looking more complete. You know, this isn't like a real reflection of progress, but it's nice to see like the green bar go up. I like that. I like that. It's definitely getting there. And like the other day, you know, I just went through my like all of my like tasks and stuff, and I'm just like, this is so doable. Like we got this. This is this is gonna happen. Um, it's just, it's just a matter of keeping at it. And I think that's true with like game dev in general and many projects, but especially game dev, just keep at it. You know, don't give up. You'll get there. Uh, okay. So now that we know we can connect with this, I guess I am kind of curious why it's not working on the other one. Oh, because there's, I know why, because there's no block instance. That's why it's not working. That would make sense. Okay, never mind. Not, not worried anymore. Okay, we're in good, we're in good shape. So, we want it to be checking if it's damaged or not. 
That's interesting. I so so Thoughty, I guess my I guess my so I like that idea. It's a little bit more effort. And I guess I want to be convinced, and not necessarily by you. I'll convince myself if I have to. I just need to talk it out. I guess I want to understand why that's better than just having every single object check anyway. I mean, I guess that's 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 less process functions. So because in we don't, I don't even know if I need it to be like a process function. So let's even for for context try what you understand better. I appreciate that. So for context, um, uh, the hit points script, which is what we're looking at right now. Let's see. I haven't looked at the hit point script in a while. Is dead. <laughs> okay, so it has an is dead. Is that actually used or is that some old thing? I think it's some old. Actually, it might be read by something else. Does the obstacle read it? Let's see. Is dead. No. There is top level is destroyed. That's not that helpful. Let's look on the obstacle. So this is the obstacle. There's a couple. So I guess I need to explain to you how this kind of works. So there are obstacles, right? The house is one such obstacle. And on the obstacle script, uh, there's collision, or on the node, there's collision. Uh, and within the obstacles is a hit point node. And the hit point node just shows you how many hit points it has. It manages the particle effects when it takes damage and plays the animation that destroys it as it dies. So here's the animation as the house gets destroyed, just like that. That's that's how that works. Trying to center it, probably didn't need to. That's okay. You get the idea. It destroys it as it it takes damage, right? This is all on the hit points. And the hit points manages, uh, of course, how many hit points are left. And then, because and not every obstacle is going to have hit points, right? So this, this is why these are separate. Um, and uh, the obstacle is going to have to know if it's dead or not as well. Health effects, am I grabbed? That's if it's taking damage pretty much. On is destroyed. Ooh. But that's the thing. We don't want to just say if it's destroyed. We really, you know, we need to check. We need to check. No perfect solution, just solutions, but a lot of solutions. True that. True that. Actually, because we don't want to just check if it's dead. If it's taken one hit of damage, it needs to be replenished, right? So actually, it makes the most sense to go to where the hit points, the health, the current health is. So I actually need to find current health. Uh, probably. I mean, I don't know. It, it, there's, yeah, there's different ways to do it for sure. So we have health percent lost here. Uh, I think the hit point script should have, oh, that is the hit point script. Oh, so the current health is actually being tracked on the obstacle. This is the obstacle script is what this is. Obstacle, obstacle, obstacle script. Hmm, interesting. So that means we should say if it is not equal to the maximum, if the current health is not equivalent to the maximum, then uh, it needs to consider replenishing itself when the cube recycles. Uh, so, okay. Cool, cool, cool. And do we already have something like that? If health current equals zero, if health current is less than or equal to zero, mm -mm -mm. just like ready, we don't even have a process function in here. That's cool. I like that. No, I like that. I think that's good. And really, in theory, that's only going to happen when it takes damage. It's, I mean, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna. I'm gonna honor it as long as I can stand it, and maybe it'll grow on me. Maybe it'll grow on me. You know, maybe it will. Um. So, okay, I want to see when it takes damage, and then at, really, that's all you need to you know. We don't even need to know what its health is. We just need to know if it has taken any damage. That's really it. Right, so 
on update, top level hit points, on top level desert health effects. When does health effects run? I need to look at these functions and when they're called. I'm scrolling up to the ready function. That's a mess. Okay. Here. Update hit points. What? Where does update hit points get called? We actually, it calls it right in here. So that's not great because it's going to update the hit points even if it hasn't taken damage. So that's not very helpful, actually. Okay. That's not very helpful. So we might we might want to put it in in here and then say if if when update hit points runs, check to see if the health current is less than the maximum health. And if so, now it's marked to be replenished, potentially, right? Okay. I think that I think that makes some sense. But let me just double check what else we got in the hit points script before settling on that plan of action is destroyed grab target so mm, getting attacked something ungrabbed Ooh, got hit so this so when it says ungrabbed it just means like the the animation hits it and then it starts to retract and so when that retraction happens that's ungrab which is you know it is what it is so um that could be even better. Then again, actually not really, because we do want things to potentially be able to crash into buildings and obstacles. So it may not be the player grabbing it that does the damage. So that's actually not good. Although this name just might not be great. And we might, yeah, we might want to call this anyway. It just might be bad naming at that point of that signal. I think it's I think it's it's probably fine to just say if it's less than a certain amount. But but actually got hit is really the main thing. And yeah, that raises some questions. I feel like we should change this signal name. Instead of something ungrabbed, it should be, you know, this so I've I've gone through a lot of different phases of syntax in my days. And this is not what I would typically do. Let me look. I'm going to look up in all of here what something ungrabbed tends to be associated with and see if we can't refactor. It's three places. Okay, I think we can update it if it's in three places. So it looks like it starts on the player and it gets emitted when the players the player reaches out hits it, and then the retraction begins. Something ungrabbed. I think that's terrible. I think we should say, well, the, the, the tricky thing is, is like, what is it that's taking the damage? Is it an obstacle? Would this also apply to other things? Because this also applies to NPCs. So we just say something damaged. I guess we would say something hit. <laughs> it's a terrible name in so many ways. But at least it, it it dissociates it from the grabbing, which I think is better. So I'm going to rename that as such. And then over here in hit points, we change this to something hit. Over here in the messenger, we change to something hit. This way, this way I just feel like this future proofs it a little bit. So when I when I do add in, so and when I say things bumping into other things, so for example, if we destroy a helicopter, uh, you'll notice it falls and it crashes. Um, and let's say it falls into a building, right? I want it to do damage to that building. Uh, and so that means it's not necessarily going to be a player that ends up you know, damaging things. Uh, or if there's these helicopters have bullets and they're shooting and the player like ducks behind a building, right? That helicopter should, if a stray bullet, in my opinion, should hit the building, right? So it's not necessarily going to be the player grabbing or ungrabbing things that does the damage. And so by renaming this now in the future, 
if I'm like, okay, so now I need to figure out how to l reduce the hit points of something. Where do we, where do I look? Okay, I'm going to go look at getting attacked. Something hit. Okay, that's the way. Got hit. And then I even kind of want to rename this a bit. Um, let me just make sure we're not referencing that somewhere. Uh, okay, that's in here. Something got hit. So it's actually in here quite a few times. So let's, oh, this is, if what got hit, I see, right, okay. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Okay, cool. So here what I'm gonna say, I like the conventions I've been adopting are saying on something hit. Uh, so something hit, and then we say on something hit for the function. I'm just, I'm still learning like what syntaxes I like the most. Uh, and I just want to be as consistent with that as possible. Okay. All right. I think that keeps everything functional. Let's just make sure. I can't imagine that would break anything, but it's worth giving it a look-see. Smack, smack, smack. Everything works. I don't see any problems. Good, good, good. Okay. Wonderful. And so now that that is set up, mm, uh, let's say in here, we're on the hit points, we are on something hit, we want to set that flag if it takes any damage. Now in the future, is there something else that we'll want to replenish besides getting hit? Maybe, but at least I'll know where to come find it and it'll make sense. Um, so we should also say if what got hit is itself and... And the reason why it's looking above it is because that's how it's checking that it is itself. It, it, it makes sense. It's fine. So let's actually put it further down here. This is a little, there's a little messiness in here. That's to be sure. I was going to say sure. And then I started to say certain. So it became certain. And that's just the truth. Um, I don't, we definitely don't want it to be after and await. That would be bad. Um, so... Do, is this attacked duration even a thing? Grab duration? Okay, this might be a thing. We might want to... I guess that's waiting for the anime. So that way, that way, if, you know, if the player... The time it takes for the player to reach it, it doesn't get hurt before the player's attack gets there, is that idea. Um, so I would think we'd want that... Actually, I guess we'd want the flag to be after that. Technically. Technically. We could also look at the animation players. That would be another thing to look at, is to say if the animation player has advanced forward, right? Because again, that this animation player that's on here, uh, it gets moved forward as the damage gets taken. And so we could say, if you're just even a little bit above here. But the problem is I have to set that up in every animation. So that's kind of annoying. Probably easier just to put it in the code. So we'll say, do we have like a has been damaged? I don't think so. Let's say needs, needs reset, needs reset. Let's say that. And we want to set it to true needs reset becomes true now if it's gonna check something has to be checking to see if things need a reset and then something else is going to need to run i guess we'd almost want we'd almost want something to it needs to know that whatever this information is getting picked up on needs to know which ones to do it on. I guess it could just iterate through all of them. And if that's true, then, okay, that's fine. We can do that. Uh, cool. Needs reset. It's interesting because we're actually setting up healing for these ob obstacles. We're, we're building a healing system which I, I actually haven't, like, I don't know if that's, I don't know, that'll be interesting. But I hadn't, like, thought of it that way. But now that I do think of it that way, it's, healing can be tricky. Uh, so let's add this on here. Variable needs reset. It's going to be false. 
and we want to iterate uh, through everything on here that might need a reset. Okay, I think this will be fine. Cool. So on the main script, when is it going to iterate? On recycle, right? So we, right, so back on the block instance, this, remember, this block is on every, sorry, this script is on every cube, right? It's on every cube. Oh, it's such a stupid name. It's on every cube. Well, it will be. And as such, if this becomes true, we need to say, so let's put that in here. So that's going to be constantly going. If recycling uh, for object in it's not going to be get to owner. so we want to say get owner which is weird because it will check itself which is fine but it's kind of silly seeming get owner i should probably spell that right get owner oops sorry i left that up get owner get children for every object in there, and maybe I'll set it up as a variable. Get owner, get children. We don't need to have that in every, we don't need to have that constantly be set. Probably, right? No, because things aren't gonna get spawned in. We're not really spawning anything in, at least not right now. So I don't think it's gonna dynamically change, probably. Not that that matters. On ready, uh, we're gonna say block node children, block children, or maybe all objects, all objects, objects on block. Let's say objects on block. How about that? Uh, Albasca says, I imagine that in any given cube, most objects won't need to be updated on reset, right? So it could be more efficient to have a list of nodes to update in the cube rather than a property on each node. Hmm. It could be more efficient to have a list of nodes to update in the cube. Yeah. Right, so just like have it, if it is marked, yeah, you're right. That would be more efficient. That would be more efficient. All right. All right. So what you're saying, I like that idea. So what you're saying is I come to the object here, or not this, on the hit points. Needs reset true. Instead of even needs reset true, we could tell it to get added to an array. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. So, I even think, I even think I'd rather go to this top level, this block instance here, this cube instance. Oh gosh this cube instance and say um uh check for the flag because i don't I, I i feel like i'd rather i mean is that and then on reset, only the nodes in the array get updated. Yeah, 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 for sure. I guess, I guess, like, I don't know if I'm being kind of inefficient by having this do a check in the process. No, I, I guess it is. I guess you're trying to avoid me for looping on the process. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Gab Games, welcome. Good to see you. GG, GG, A8, A, GG, <laughs> HF. Um, 
So that doesn't make sense. You would say GLHF. I don't, I'm sorry. Um, so, <laughs> oh gosh, I need something. A bite of food, a swig of tea, anything. All right. So. Love being here. I love that you love being here. I'm deep in the coding stuff. Should I do music? All right. Oh, oh, oh gosh. I was about to run up. I was about to say, okay, I'm submitting to the cube. And I was going to rerun a new poll. We just got two new votes. And guess what's looking a little lower? Freaking cubes. Freaking cubes. So you know what? I'm not going to run a poll for music. We're just going to play music. You guys don't get a choice because of the trolls. You can thank all of the trolls for that. No, you guys aren't trolls. Look, it's it's a valid thing. It's a valid response. I, I understand. I respect it. I respect it. Oh, we just got a couple more votes. Well, at least one of them against cubes. At least one of them against cubes. Uh, okay. I will play the music. I will play the music because because we're deep in the coding right now. At least I am. At least as deep as I get. So... <laughs> It will be a good time to have some background ambiance. Okay. Now, if I want to be tracking that, I guess it should add itself. I guess it should really add itself to the array. That makes the most sense. So the thing is it has to be able to access the array. So where does the array live? I feel like the array should live on here. And then this should check to see if there's an array in that node or in that script. We need to register some new account to vote another else. <laughs> That's funny. I, you know, <laughs> just, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because YouTube, YouTube has like really bad bot detection. Like it tries to tell if like people are doing that to try to like game thumbs ups or something. And it's not actually a good system. And not in the sense that it will miss actual botting, but in the sense that it is oversensitive. So you got to be careful. You gotta be careful, cause we'll accidentally get us get ourselves in trouble. Don't do it. Don't do it. But, but, ugh, ugh. I wish. <laughs> Lee's admits that she'd like to hack her own stream. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna say, let's create an array. Uh, variable. What will the array be? The array will be. I'm gonna. I, I will look for now. I will start renaming it. No, I don't want to rename it to cubes yet. Just just give it a little more time, I swear. We got to give a fair we have to give a fair vote to everybody who comes through here. If you think about it, why why is it only the people who were here at the beginning who get to vote? Like that's not fair. That's not democracy. Come on now. Uh block blocks to reset. And we'll just have it be an empty array. Okay. And this will be on our block object. So back over here on the hit points. Do we already have like, we don't, we have get owner going on in here somewhere for any reason? We do. We have it in two places. Get owner Q free, get owner is destroyed. Okay, just wondering. We have a deleting the owner. Oh, I think we stopped calling is destroyed. What's up, Dragonblade? Welcome. Good to see you, Dragonblade. Thanks for coming through. The early bird gets the democracy. Oh, that's horrifying. It's actually not horrifying. If, if, if that was how it actually worked, like imagine, imagine if like you could actually sway votes or like affect the system and have a more meaningful system of voting if you just voted earlier like your vote counts for more if you vote earlier i would be okay with that hell divers no nope uh cube divers cube divers uh basically i i set up a poll on what i should name uh, my terrain sections uh because i was not sure if i should call them tiles or blocks 
or whatever, and I asked chat for suggestions, and I hastily accepted the suggestion of cubes without realizing, because to me that was just a bad, like that's a stupid name for these things, because they're not cubes. They're obvious, cube is very specific. It is a, it is a polygonal shape that is equal on every side, okay? And uh, so, you know, well, I, I decided to put it in there and now I'm, I'm dealing with the fact that everybody wanted to vote for the troll one. And so now we have to maybe call them cubes. Uh, so that's the democracy at work. And the thing is, is most of these votes came at the beginning of the stream. So it's like, I feel like it'd be fair if I let it go a little bit longer so we can let actual everyone who comes through put in their two cents, which might not be in favor of the cubes, which is understandable. I think it would not be good. Another reason that poor people would count less, i.e. transportation difficulties and so on. That's a good point. You're right, because it would be, it would be gameable and work hours, right, it'd be gameable. I mean, look, l l let's, if, if you really want to talk about that, which I don't, I would say, like, you should be able to vote from your phone, from your computer, right? You should be able to just, like, pull up an app, bam, vote, done, we just voted. <laughs> like, it, there shouldn't be all the barriers that there are to voting in the first, so I'm also assuming that it's already an ideal voting situation while we're imagining things. Now they are cubes, ugh. If you uh, got a score by various things like punctuality, and that score would be added to who you vote for. You got a score by various things like punctu punctuality. Like who's the one who gets the score? And that score would be added to who you vote for? Like are you saying that people who are more punctual over the early voting, if people are more punctual, their vote is worth more? No, 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 Literally, like, imagine this, right? You you would only no. It's all it's all bad. You know what? My idea was stupid, and it was and it was and the point of what I was okay. It was I I regret what I suggested. Okay, <laughs> early voting should not be worth more. With that said, with that said, no, it was a stupid. I shouldn't have said it. I, I I take it all back. I take it all back. No, you're right. It's stupid. I take it all back. Uh, that would be impossible with all the security required for digital voting. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. So that, so I look, and that would be me just describing like, like let's start with the ideal starting point, right? Ideally, people can pull up their phones, bam, vote, one and done, right? Okay, now that we know the ideal, how do we start adding in the protections and taking away from that ideal until we get to something that is hopefully less what we have? It's nice to imagine. It's nice to imagine. Okay. All right, so. We wanna to add to this array. Now on now the block instance uh, that's on here or what will per perhaps be known as a cube instance, um, the, the choice is yours. The choice is still yours. Um, what, may, what may be known as a cube instance uh, on here, we're creating a, oh, we're not creating the array. Should I create it on here? Well, maybe I should create it on here. Oh, that makes way more sense. No, this is where the array should go. Not on the block object. That doesn't make any sense. Nope, it should go on the block instance, right? So what, what do these different things mean? So this is the actual terrain cube itself right here right this is the the actual terrain cube here and on that i've got the block instance so it's going to keep track of its own uh set of things that need to be reset that makes sense now these are the things that are on it that we're working with right now the houses right you can see all the houses on there and they have a script on the top level called block object or cube object as it may be, okay? On this object, I want it to check. 
I mean, do I even, at this point, I don't know that I even need this script, actually. I actually don't know if I even need this script. Well, actually, I think I do. Wait, maybe we do want the, oh, this doesn't need to be an array. Hmm. It's a little tricky because I need to be able to look outside of this, right? So if, I, if I'm on the hit point script and from the hit point script, we're looking up to the owner of the hit point script, right? If we look up to the owner of the hit point script, so if I say needs reset equals true, the owner of that can be the block object and I could for loop through everything on here and, and have it check to see if anything is set to true. But that's inefficient, right? So maybe, maybe I need two arrays. I think I need two arrays. That's ridiculous, right? An array in an array. Is that really what I'm gonna have to do? So the, the, the block object itself would have an array on it. Okay, I need to draw this out. This is stressing me out, dude. I gotta draw this. I have to Excala draw right now. Wouldn't be possible. <laughs> when if there was less computers, it would be. Yeah, maybe. Uh, okay. So. Here's what I'm, what I'm, I need to just draw this out. We need to draw this out. So we've got cube, cube. Oh, oh God, why is it called a cube? It's so asinine. It's deeply asinine. Oh my gosh. Um, cube, and then, Dude, I cannot stand. I can't. It, it it's like it's it's like it like gets under my skin. I'm about to I'm about to overthrow. Okay, cube the will of the people. Cube and then cube object and then we have hit points underneath that. So we could even do it like this. There's the cube, here's a cube object, and on every cube object are hit points. Put the object self to a global array instead of needs reset true. Right, but so this is my problem, is I need to, why does a cube have hit points? Oh my God, what? What are you talking about? The cube doesn't have hit points. The cube does not have hit points. Right, so, yeah, this is what we need to figure out is if that's true. Can I like group things? I bet you I can because this is awesome, right? Group it. Hell yeah, I can. Frick yeah, dude. Uh, so there will be multiple of these things. These are objects. These are obstacles, right? Houses that are destructible. Things like that cars that can be blown up or not they have hit points this this is basic stuff for this game and those we're calling cube objects and the cube itself is the whole terrain block god that's such a stupid name i'm calling it block until the votes are done i'm dude i i can't stand it it's so dumb it's so dumb can't take it. I can't, I just literally can't take it. It's like, it's like, it's like, I feel like I'm lying. I feel like I'm telling lies by calling something that isn't a cube a cube. It's ridiculous. So we have the level tile block, all right? <laughs> like how now I'm calling it a tile. All right, so we have the whole block. It's not cube, it's cubes. Get out of here with your literal crap. Uh, not true. It seems I've missed a lot. <laughs> oh man, it's it honestly doesn't really matter. 
<laughs> so we have a block, block object hit points. So when these block objects take damage, I do, I, I do like tile. I do like tile. So when these take damage, where's the color? Oh, I think I have to pull this up. There we go, color, let's go. So when these objects take damage, they're going to set a flag, but not necessarily, or they get sent to an array. That's the other thing, right? Maybe not put the objects. So, so well, here's the problem, Thoughty, is how do I send that information that it needs to be replenished? How do I send that information up to the block? Right? That's sort of the struggle that I have here. And so if I set a, gl a global array, it can't be totally global. It needs to be, it would need to be an array that's on here, right? So here we have an array. Array of block objects that need resetting. Yes, we can create it somewhere. But the problem is, so we're coming, we actually are coming from the hit points script, specifically. Not from the entire block object, it's from the hit point script. So the hit point script has to, in, in my mind, it needs to look up to the block object, and then the block object needs to tell the block, whoa, it's, okay, I'm still getting used to Excalibur. I just, I just started using it. And then the block object needs to come up to the block, right? So the hit points has to tell the block object, the block object has to tell the block, and then the block tells the array. So that's, that's kind of what I need to figure out. You like, how do you like, oh, there we go. Nice, we're getting there. You need to refresh on every cube when they go to the collector. I don't, I, I don't understand what that has to do with this, but I believe that it does, because you're always really helpful. So let me go back to the project, right? Here's how this is structured. We have, this is the block object right here. It is an instanced scene, right? I know, I know, that's okay. It is an instanced scene. And within the instant scene, we have the hit points, right? And on the hit point script is where we're going to check to find out if a thing needs to be reset. That's where that flag would get set. Or we could say, you know, add it to an array, right? We want to add it to an array or set a flag at that moment right here in the code. This is on this part. Now this needs to somehow get up here. But not only does it need to get up here, I mean, I guess it only needs to get up here, which seems easy, but it's not because remember this is instanced. So this isn't actually here. I don't know if I'm making sense. Maybe I'm not, maybe, maybe it's fine. Okay, all right. So let's say this, blocks to reset, we say on here. When this happens, well, I mean, how do I reference this? I need to reference this somehow. We would have to say get owner. I guess just like self. or get owner 
get owner. And, and the other thing is, the other part of this is, not everything has this stuff on it. Okay, let's let's go get it then. So up here on the, on this script, we have to do all this crap. For now. We won't always have to do this crap, but for now we have to do this crap. So let's not do it that way. I'm gonna scroll all the way up here. We're gonna on ready this. On ready block instance. All right, come back down to here. And we wanna say if, oh, one more thing I gotta go get. Come back over here. Say if instance is valid. If it's valid, then Block instance, what did we call it? Something I already forgot. Blocks to reset. We wanna add it to blocks to reset. Plus equals self. I guess that could work. All right. And then I would want to come up to this, append. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm still new to using arrays. Oh, thank you. Append self. Like that? Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me get rid of some things. We don't need this. I don't know that we need any of this, truth be told. And uh, up here, we probably don't need this anymore since we've established things communicate okay. I mean, actually, I might end up needing that, so we'll leave it. Let me get rid of all this. Actually, you know what would be helpful for now? I'm gonna ask it in the process to print everything that's in it. Kind of say like values or something. Just like print all the values that's in the array. Oh, okay. That's not how it works. Oh, is that a dictionary? That's a dictionary. Whatever. Let's see what that does. That's not gonna work, right? I mean, it might. Alright, we gotta switch to the right level, which is this one. So right now it's printing a bunch of nulls. That would spam lines. That's right. Correct. Correct. That's absolutely correct. And I'm just doing this for the sake of checking. I'm not saying it's a best way to do it. It's just what I'm doing. So there's all the spamming, right? It's just null, null, null. The array is empty. So if I attack one of these, in theory, it should add something to the array. Okay, it didn't. It added nothing. If you want to print all elements, you don't 
need to iterate, right? So not working yet. Otherwise we would see something get added. So we've got some, we got some work to do here. So what did happen? What didn't happen? Um, if I come back to the hit points here, just out of curiosity. Well, yeah, okay, so in here, I'm just gonna say print object took damage. See you later, S. Thanks for hanging out. Object took damage. And then we don't want this printing all the time right now. I just kind of want to see, like, just make sure everything's working. Oops. Okay. And let's see what we get. I need to make this the default level. Okay, there we go. Object took damage. So, so it, we're putting things in the right place. We hit it, it takes damage. It reports that it's taken damage. Actually, now that I see this, I can see that this is doing more messages than we need, right? We should say, you know, if its health is less, well, anyway. It's going to keep adding itself to the array over and over again, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's something to keep in mind, I guess. There is a potentially more efficient place we could put it. Chunks! Ooh, I like chunks! Thank you, Psychonic! Hello! Welcome! That was a great suggestion. It's just, it's just... Mm. I wish I would have added it. I wish I would have added it. So we know that works. Let's check to see if this part works checking to see if the instance is valid. And we'll see how that goes. And so it should print object took damage again. Peanut butter and jelly at how easy it is for you. Peanut butter and jelly. Oh, because you're jealous. <laughs> What's easy? This? This is the easy for me? Wow. Wow, that's amazing that this can be perceived as easy. That what I'm doing, that it seems like this is easy. Thank you, that's such a compliment. Okay, so it's not, it's not printing. So that's where we're having an issue right there, is the instance is not being seen as valid. Okay, good to know. Your space key broke? Well, that's what happens when you suggest terrible ideas for names of things. That's the curse that I put on you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every day we make big strides in progress. Thank you so much. Sometimes I, I, you know, I'm still a noob. So sometimes I feel like, you know, if I weren't a noob, I'd make even bigger strides. But no, that, but really I see just like a little bit every day. Yeah, I do. I see a little bit every day. I'm not, I'm not ready to feel like it's big, but I feel like it's strides. It's big. Thanks, Gab. Thank you for keeping me inspired. <laughs> Thank you. It means a lot. Uh, okay, so if instance is, if, if, is instance valid, block instance, apparently it is not valid. So why not? Where are we setting this wrong? I am not reading this monstrosity, Edward. Um, remember when I said the YouTube app lags? I think it was Bluetooth interfering with Wi-Fi. Are they in the same band? I don't know. Well... 2.4 gigahertz, that's a thing, right? I don't think so, I don't think they are in the same band. I don't think they are. But I'm a little ignorant, so I know. Because I know like, there's devices that are made to connect to computers via Wi-Fi for the purpose of avoiding interference with Bluetooth devices. I think. But I don't really know. I'm your motivation! We're motivating each other! That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. I like that. I like that. 
We're gonna help each other get a little further in this project. We got this. We got this. We got this. Same. Let's go. We got this. Look at those votes. Dude, something is wild here. It's like every vote brings it down like 1%. Like, it's actually kind of amazing to realize how many people voted for cubes. <laughs> Like, it, it actually really, really took over the votes. But, it's chipping away. It's chipping away. I'm gonna stick with blocks until I see that this poll has exhausted all possibilities. Wi-Fi is traditionally 2.4 gigahertz, but five gigahertz is becoming much more available. True, I think. It's a small game studio now. What is this? What we're doing? Yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. It's not. I'm not even going to honor that ridiculous claim. Honestly, it'd be more of a rig if I ended it early. Because it wouldn't be giving the full stream attendees a chance to vote. This? I... You know what? I agree. A long time ago, I had an idea for a game studio. And I did not realize that streaming was creating the game studio. I agree. And... and I mean, that's why I keep track of all the credits in part, because it's like, you know, when I'm done with this and I want to move on to like a more commercial project, who are the first people I'm going to come to to ask if they want to like join the team? It's going to be the people who've been here. Like y'all going to be the first people I come to. Y'all is the people. And we are working together to do this. I agree. You said it. I appreciate it. Edward, you need to put something in between your words. Dear God, get this out of my face. Uh, okay, so why does it not see it as a um, as a valid thing? But it does elsewhere. So we're looking at get owner. Get noter null block instance. So this, this, right now we're on hit points, is, oh, because the owner is this. This is the owner, I think. I don't think the owner is this. I think the owner is this. Yeah, Albesca. I think this must be the owner of the instance. So, th and that's, and that's kind of what I was trying to say over here, is that, we can't just skip the block object and come up to the block. We're on the hit point script. We have to first, still new to Excaladraw. How do I just straight up zoom? How do I just straight up zoom on in there? Just a little zoom, zoom, zoom. There we go. Um, it first from the hit points, I believe, needs to update the block object, and then the block object needs to then update the block. I don't think we can just skip past the block object, because this box represents an instance. Right? And so if I'm going to try to go outside... Okay, see, there's a few bugs. Sometimes these things do be getting a little buggy. Um... But you know what I mean? Moral support club, let's go. You got game, yes you- You got game, yes you do! Hyper game dev, we love you! Good game! <laughs> nice. I like how you even got your good game catchphrase in there. Totally. So, yeah, so- And, and so, Albesca, I can try it, but I, I- I'm almost absolutely positive Get Owner is gonna report this. And so I don't know if there's something more powerful than get owner to go further above and reach. Is there, is, maybe there is some function that I don't know that's going to reach beyond this directly up to there. I, I don't know if there is something like that. Hello from North Macedonia. Hello, North Macedonia. Welcome, Shell Music TV. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. Welcome. We're deep in some coding stuff, but we're here. We're here. Makes sense. I appreciate that. 
You are. You are. Get on I know, that's what I was thinking. You know, I, that like thought crossed my mind. You're joking. But I was like, that wouldn't work. Would it? Guys, do you see this one? Look, it's literally one vote brings it down 1%. Oh, but then if 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 blocks isn't the one that people vote for, it doesn't necessarily get us closer to winning. If you choose tiles or sections, this coming down by 1% doesn't necessarily get us closer to it not being cubes. Dang. So folks, so y'all would have to, if I was rigging it, I would be trying to campaign for people to do blocks. That wouldn't really be rigging. It would be campaigning. Dude, let's do get owner, get owner. All right, I'll try it. I'll try it. That sounds good. There it is. Get owner, get owner. And then let's make sure that's all correct. We're still printing object took damage, that's fine. And it, yeah, so let's see if, let's see. Let me see, let me see what that does. So it just should say object took damage if it works, if it actually pinged the right thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What did I do wrong? Just tell me. Just tell me what I did wrong. Just tell me the truth. Can I call method get node or null on a null value? <laughs> Wait, what? I thought you're literally, oh, because I have to do get node or null. That sounds hilarious, honestly. Like, wait, but your, your purpose is literally to get node or null. Oh, but that's not, oh, so I would have, oh my God. So I, wait, wait. would I have to then do it like this? Function argument one should be node path, but is node. Oh, come on. Oh, man. Yeah, that may not work. The nested get omer returns null, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It is YouTube premiere music. I'm so sorry. I should take this out of the rotation. Dang, that was a that was a good thought though. And it's not to say there isn't some way that it could kind of work. But it you know, it feels really sloppy to be doing it two levels. Why does the cube information from need information from hit points in the first place? Um I guess it doesn't, because that's the place that I've found so far to get the information. But it's possible we could find the information somewhere else, um, if we can. Can we find it? Let's see if we can find it. Uh, so the information that we need is, has it taken damage? If it has taken damage, it needs to be added to the array, basically. Albesca says, I'm not a fan because that kind of chain is easily broken. Yeah, right. I'd use signal to communicate from hit points to block object. Ooh. And then from block object to block instance. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that idea. That's a really good idea. This one is interesting to me. What's the array for? So the array uh, will get iterated over. No, it won't. Actually, it will. Um, the array is for the blocks to reset. So when the object uh, takes damage, who voted for cubes? Who did that? Who? Why would you? Who's? You? Again, you just ruined. It's over. It, I mean, oh, for frick's sake. 
Oh, for frick's sake. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I just checked to see if I could edit the poll. So what? So what? My gosh. I know you do. No, no, no. Uh, so the array, yeah, the array is for when the block gets recycled, it's going to check the array of the of itself. So it's like, hey, I'm a block or a cube that just got recycled. And I'm going to check on myself to see if there's anything that needs to be reset. And if so, we should actually call this objects to reset now that I think about it also. Um, and if there is something that needs to be reset, then do so. So that's what that array is for. Then you don't need any kind of array. Well, no, we don't need an array. But this is the direction that it's gone in. I was going to do, what I was originally doing was iterating over every node that's on the block. Yeah, that's the way that I was setting it up originally. But I was talked, not really talked out of it, but an alternate suggestion was made and I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. That's where I was headed. And I'm surprised you're saying that because when the suggestion came in uh, to, yeah, these were the options before. When that suggestion came in to not do that, I, I, I liked it because and maybe, Dragon, you're not thinking of doing what I was going to do. What I was going to do was was that very thing. I even started to create the Boolean. Needs reset. And the idea was, when the recycle happens, it just... We just have a script iterate over every single object on the block and say, Do you have the flag? Do you have the flag? Do you have the flag? And everyone that has the flag gets replenished. But... Uh, upon realizing that that would mean we're going to be iterating over things that, you know, pretty constantly that aren't necessarily going to have the flag, uh, a suggestion came in to maybe make sure we're only iterating over the ones that need to be iterated over for optimization purposes. Um, and I was kind of like, you know, that's, that, I like that. It's more precise. It just feels more intentional, and I just kind of, I liked the idea. And Albesca makes a good suggestion. I really want to try the signals thing. I think that's a really good idea on how we can pull this off. Um, but again, you know, I'm, I'm open to the idea of setting the flag, but I don't know. It just seems less efficient. And it seems messier, potentially. All right, let's try the signal thing for now. Uh, so this, so instead of going to the block instance, so we don't even need to ready the block instance here. Uh, instead, we want to look at the block object, which is this, which is where the signal is going to exist. We actually want to emit the signal. So on the hit points script here, on the hit point script, we want to create a signal. And the signal is um, I guess needs reset. And we'll get rid of this. So this is kind of like our flag, but it's more powerful than a flag because it can carry information, which is nice. So I'll come back down here. Instead of doing all this, we will say if is instance valid, block instance. We don't even care about that. We don't even need that. Well, actually, we could. No, actually, we don't. We don't even need that. All we have to say is needs reset emit self. 
And then on the block object up here, exactly, exactly, Fati. It's like, it's, it's actually a fabulous idea. Um, on the block object, we want to say hit points, which hopefully it'll be able to see that. Hit points needs reset, connect on needs reset. We'll create a new function. I'm gonna keep that just for the code. Funk on needs reset. And we wanna say object and now we need to check the block instance. So we, we do want to ready the block instance on this one. And we want to grab this again, if it's valid, which we'll, we can remove this later. We can refactor this eventually. I don't think I can make that smaller. I just need to see it on one line because it's so hard to see otherwise. All right, there we go. If is instance valid, block instance, block instance objects is to reset, objects to reset, append self. Not really self, append object. Okay. Ah, so we probably need to adjust this a bit. So hit points, needs reset it doesn't see that we probably have to be more specific than hit points because that's going to look at the class but we needed to look at the specific one well that's a little trickier that's maybe a little trickier because remember there's going to be multiple hmm this might be an issue. Because there's gonna be multiple objects on here. How do I connect the signal for multiple, and if I make a new one or something, how do I connect that signal to here? Not to here, sorry, to here. Because does it just need to be like saved or something? Let me see. Hmm. It might be an issue. That might be an issue. Because this is going to send a signal. This has a signal on it. But that doesn't mean that this even knows. Because otherwise, I would need to do like some kind of for loop to iterate over every possible thing in there. It seems like there's no way around iterating over something. If you have an array, or inefficiently iterating, if you have an array of houses, you can call a reset function on the elements of the array that can reset the hit points. Ooh. A very different approach. I like this. Okay. Wow. There really are so many different ways to do things. I mean, I knew that, but then to like hear the different ways is kind of mind boggling.
Okay. I think you did fix your space key. Thank goodness. That's a great idea. I like that idea a, a whole lot. So then we can go back to the flag and forget the signal entirely. So I'm going to definitely do that. The collaboration energy is strong here today, guys. Very thankful for that. So we'll leave this stuff here for now. And then we'll come back to the hit point script. And we're not going to do the signal. We're going to go back to it being a variable. We're going to go back to it being a variable. And instead of emitting a signal, we're going to say needs reset becomes true. Now we also need to say that anything with hit points is going to add itself to an array. So that array needs to exist somewhere. This might kind of bring us back to a similar problem. I guess, oh, I know what we should do. I know what we should do. We want to set that to true right there on the object script here. This is where we fetch it and we put it on the array where it's going to check all of those things. It's a little tricky. It's a little bit of a brain twisty thing here. So on the ready function for me, anyway, on the ready function of the block object, it's going to say, find all of the things that are obstacles. So how is it going to know to do that? This is the block object. This is itself. No, no, it needs to say, I'm the thing that needs to get added to the array. This is actually not that complicated. What we have to do is we have to get the hit point script. So we actually need to on ready hit point node. I don't think it's going to let me drag it. Oh, it does. Bless your heart. Thank you. Now we might get errors if this doesn't exist. So that's, that's a new fun thing is this has, we have to make sure this exists on every obstacle that gets created or every block object that gets created has to have this in it. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So we want to say, we actually need to create, so I'm going to come up to the block instance and we'll have a new objects to reset objects in block, two different arrays. And so this will look up to the block instance Find children, hit points, node 3D. Ooh. Well, it, it's only needs, it's only gonna be one. It should only have one. Actually, it might not. It actually might, it, it's actually possible that it could have multiple in it, now that I think about it. Like the helicopter has two. 
It's not a bad idea. I don't remember, was there a reason for having the script on block instance instead of terrain one? Because some of these problems of connecting would go away if these nodes were parented. Um, yes, so. Um, I'm trying to remember what that is. But I don't exactly remember. I wish I wish I could distract myself enough to be able to answer your question well. And I want to say that I don't want to go find out why, because I trust myself that it is better this way. Um. I mean, so you're saying if... The script, I mean, the script itself the script itself. I don't know that it needs to be on block instance. You know, I could go rummaging through the last live stream and I could find the point where I made that decision. Yeah, I, I could do that. I'm not unwilling to do that. I'm just not unwilling to do that. Sorry for the chaos. Okay, there we go. Uh, we are not, Edward. We are not. So that was probably later on. If Terrain had a script, you could connect a signal from the various houses and then add the objects to update to the array on block instance. I mean, at that point, we don't even need to have anything on block instance. I'm mute the stream, have them both talking at once. That's too confusing. Nobody needs that. Up in here. Nice. I think vegan ones, but it's the same. It's not very quiet. Yeah, it's that. my Good volume that's quiet. Again. Favorite snack food? I feel like we already talked about it. Because this. I keep uh, the music. If you think about it, it's the music that's loud. About what we're... Okay, so block oh, instance exists drink. at this point. If I go back... Probably Split. was creating Maybe. it right around here. With... Stuff. Okay, yeah. here it doesn't data. exist yet. It's worth it. So I'm probably deciding at this point. Something not sure about as a scene. Is alien meat is spelled with an I don't think that's gonna we can call it we can call it King title. Meat wing. No. Technical also find the thing that's supposed to have Let me go to when I created that instance node, because I bet that would be. I can't say every. That would probably be when I just dis discussed it, but I don't even know if I knew at the time why it's gonna I did be it. 
Oh, there here's a script on terrain at this point. This is gonna be hard. Be tough. Embarrassing. Let's see if it exists before this. Oh, we doing stuff. The animation. So like there's the animation. And it's not even the hit point script. Need to It's a little tedious to go through. Get Arguably a little tedious. <laughs> yeah, these audios. This isn't we don't need both these audios. Or something boring. like that. I don't know. Because <laughs> there's, there's no context. I mean, it looks like I was literally working with the script on there. So the script is still there at this point. Like, let's say... Uh, so, yeah, so the game isn't really working that way. So, the way things... Yeah, I, I don't feel like this is productive. I... I mean, we could do it differently. I just... Right now... Right now right like, it's nice that I can go back and look probably, through it. I'll probably just put a I do not hate the sound of my own voice. What bothers me so is, way, to me, it. it's like, like, I, I'm that, always, I don't right. want this to be like, it's more the chaos of talking about old topics, and I'm in the middle of an old topic, and then I'm talking about it, but then we're just skipping through it. It's too chaotic. Nobody needs to hear that chaos, you know? I don't hate the sound of my own voice. I just, I hate the chaos that skipping around makes others like if feel. I were to make this a instance scene, oh, 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 hold on. If I were to make this a instance scene right here, yes, I could then update it, but I guess the the question would be like why? I don't I don't know. So this that is I need, this I mean, is yes. talking about whether I should make an instance, not if I should put a script on there. And the reason why I want to put an instance potentially or not is because right now there's there's like maybe a hundred terrain blocks that exist. And right now there's no singular way for me to update every single terrain block. And because of that, um, I have to now go back to each single terrain block and add something that lets me update one and then update them all. So if I put an instanced scene in there, let's say I want to add, I don't know, a, a note onto each terrain that tells you what the file path is. I don't know, not, why would I do that? I don't know, but just imagine in 3D space, we have a little message that as it's scrolling by, it puts that. I don't know what you mean by prefabs. Uh, so, and maybe that, I think that might, if, if, if you're meaning what I think you mean, that's what I mean by instance. And so therefore I didn't. And so what I'm trying to figure out here is if I should add an instance scene in there that can then be updated in the future. Now that doesn't mean that the script has to be on that instance. The script could be on the top level. I guess I, I guess I I don't really know why we couldn't put a script on the terrain. I guess because it's like more stuff, and if I could consolidate the script instead of having to have a script here and a script on something else. But then again, maybe I don't need that something else, right? Why even have a script on the block instance in the first place? Why not just go between here? I I don't know. I mean, it makes me nervous. And maybe it shouldn't. Oh, we're gonna have errors. It makes me nervous. Um, because 
I just like. Ugh. Expected end of the block. What are you talking about? Where are you talking about? Right here? Get that out of here. Get out of my face. It makes me nervous because. All of these tiles are going to need that script, and I still have to put the instance on it. I guess there's no, I guess my, I guess I don't have a reason. If I'm, if I'm willing to spend all of the minutes I've spent here trying to figure this out, I guess I'd be willing to just slap a script on there. Welcome, Christian. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. I am, I feel a little halted by this question, and it's a good question, and it's important. The game's going good. The game's going good. Yesterday we got this menu set up so I can uh, switch between levels as needed. And now I'm trying to set up a system to communicate between uh, the script that controls the movement of the level with things that are destroyed on the blocks of the level. And uh, it's raising a lot of questions about how to structure the project and uh, the best ways to communicate between this object that I'm attacking right now, for example, and the script that controls the terrain. But but I, then I so so if I accept, maybe we try to put a script on there. Um, if terrain one had a script. You could connect a signal from the various houses. And then add the objects. Right. So the so the ob the block the object, the block object script, could send a message to the terrain itself. The terrain itself is already being checked by the script that controls the movement. It already sees that very easily. And if there's an array there. It could just say, okay, these are the things, the scripts that moves the terrain can say, hey, terrain script, you're the thing that needs to change all the stuff. And then that terrain script can say, okay, here's all the stuff in an array. I just got the message that I need to replenish all of you. And so then it will do it. Yeah, that would be a lot easier. Oh my God. Oh my God. That would be a lot easier. Dear God. All right, let's do it. I, I'm, I apologize for just how deeply dull it was for me to, to figure that out. And, you know, because here's the thing, even if it turns out that doesn't work, now I'll have an answer for why I shouldn't do that. And if it does work, uh, it works. So... Okay. All right. I'm sold on that idea. We don't need the block, the block instance. So, so I, I guess at some point, you know, I, I, I knew that I needed a block instance on every terrain so that in theory, I could add nodes to every single terrain easily without having to go through each of the hundred files. So it is important that I take this opportunity to go through every single block and add this instance. That does not mean that this operation that we're trying to resolve uh, needs to be done through a script on that instance. We're just planting this seed to potentially be dealt with later. Thank you. Yeah, the destruction does look good, right? I still have a lot more things I want to set up as destructible. And then actually the task right now is to reverse destruction in a sense. Okay. So let's let's do that. Let's let's put it on the terrain. I'm 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 all for it. I'm team put it on the terrain. So uh, all of this is pretty useless right now. We can just burn this down. I'll tell you what though, we'll leave it so I can just yoink it off of here. Like that. Uh and now if I come up here, we need to make a new script. Do I do I have a script that's relevant for this? Maybe. Block instance, block object, terrain controller. I guess we don't. I guess this would just be the block itself. It would just be the block itself. 
It's the block script. Kind of makes sense. Okay. And then, don't mean to open that. Let me get the music back now that we're not listening to double talking. And then, I'm just gonna paste all that code back on here. Well, we don't, we kinda don't need to do that. I don't know why I'm bothering. We don't need any of that. We don't need that whatsoever. In fact, we would just want the array, right? I mean, we still have to, we still have a problem. I guess, yeah, I guess this doesn't, how much less complicated does it make it? Because we still have to go from here to here. So the only difference, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm less sure of what makes this so much better. It's actually the same problem. The problem isn't that different. I don't think this actually helped us at all. It, it does, it does help us. Where it helps us is that terrain script that I was talking about. So, you know, if we look out here and we say there's a terrain script or terrain movement level block, block moving script. Right, it's just living out here. This could, in theory, more directly access the block, as opposed to, I guess I should make this, let's make this that color. And we say this would have to, instead of having to go here and then go here, Instead of having to start here and then go here, now I can just go here. I feel like that's all that it saves us. We still have to have the hit points go to the block object. So then we don't have to do this. That would take out this complexity a bit, right? Block moving script checks this. Actually, that doesn't really take out that complexity, does it? Whoa, you can put curves in here? Dude, that's wild. I don't need to, but that's good to know. Block moving script says, hey, you're the thing. Can I put like a note on here? Yes, I can. Recycle. And then this block says, what needs to be recycled. Recycle stuff in array. The hit points are going to update, they still have to update the block object with its information. And that's supposed to tell the block what it is. So I, I don't, I don't know that this really saves us that much, actually. Whatever, we'll just keep it going. And then what was the idea we we're going? This is kind of why I didn't want to even think about it, because now I'm just distracted. If you create the array in the global singleton, you can reference to it easily. That's true. But the problem is, the problem with that is, how is it going to know which, it needs to then also know which block is the one that has to be recycled. Because there's many different blocks, right? I mean, I could be wrong, but I think that that's something that would need to be considered. I'm still getting used to Excalibra. Let's see if I can figure this out. The array stores the references of these objects. Right. So how would that be tied would be my question. 
Now this scale draws a little buggy. It's a little buggy with the arrows. You can call a custom reset function of them. Hmm, I'm a little confused. So let me show you how I'm confused and see if that can be dealt with. So if we have a block that doesn't need to be, this is hard to draw. If we have something that doesn't need to be recycled, right? So this one doesn't need to be recycled. But the thing is, things will take damage. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's that's something that's missing from this. So let's let's add that in here. So we've got the player over here. Or whatever, really just dis just damage. Right? Things that cause damage. And the damage would be going to things over here. And it would be going to things over here. And so what I would worry about is if we put it in an array. It would have to know, if we put it in like a global array, running out of colors. I did. I do wish they had a few more colors. I guess it's nice in some ways that it's simpler. So this is our global thing, right? Global array. And this will take the damage and it's going to feed that damage in from or that I am damaged into here when it gets damaged. So it takes the damage on these two different blocks. The objects on these two different blocks take damage and they're going to tell the global array that I need damage. The block moving script is going to tell one block that you need to recycle and if it says to recycle the stuff in the array that global array it's going to recycle everything in which we don't want right in theory that would then recycle this block and this block but it would need to know to only do the block that's supposed to be recycling. Having it on the globals will complicate how you store them, right? Because you won't know which ob object in the array is from which cube, exactly. On every block, you need just reset once when they go to the collector. And you can clear the array at this time. Mm hmm Right. And so that's that's kind of what we're trying to figure out, right? Is... I understand your problem. There will be maybe a situation where you can damage on more blocks at the same time. Yeah. Right. I'm happy that Cube won the poll. You could close it. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's really showing me who's who in the chat. I'm like, oh, okay. I see which one of you are the ones. I see which one of you are the ones. Maybe it'll grow on me. Keep using it. Maybe it'll grow on me. Right. And so, you know, but how do I resolve that? Right. You didn't even vote cube. Oh my gosh. You voted tile? That's a vote for cube. A vote for tile is a vote for cube. <laughs> the only correct vote at this point is block.
So as I see it, this the, the global array thing doesn't work. You know, it, I mean, it could also then say which block it's on, but that just gets a little complicated. So to me, so I guess I'll just, I'll keep this. Let's push Excaladraw to its limits. Duplicate that. Come down here. Put the array in the terrain script. Right. Yes. Right. 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 So get rid of the array. Oh, I think it has like an eraser and you can just drag over things, which is nice. So it takes damage. The array is on here. Instead, it could be a global dictionary. The key is the block name and the value is the array of objects. Right, and so that's the thing, like how would I then, I then have to connect the block name. That, that that's, I mean, I'm, I'm still, that feels, I could maybe pull that off. That sounds like something I could maybe pull off. And so somehow it would, yeah. Hmm. But like, are we starting to get inefficient again? Because then we'd somehow have to check. We'd have to be checking to see, am I the thing that's being called or that's supposed to recycle? If I'm not, I won't replenish. Otherwise, we have to do kind of the similar stuff of going through every stage to find it. I don't know. That that almost makes sense to me, but I don't know that I'm convinced. Without more concrete, a more concrete plan. So if the array is on here instead. So I'm even, we'll make this. What is the? This, there we go. I'll make this, I guess since it's on the block, we'll make it white. So the array will be on the block. Recycle stuff in array. The hit points are going to somehow report up to the block object. I don't know what plan we've, we've gone with at this point. So if we have a flag on the block object that gets set to true, somewhere along the line, we have to run a for loop, right? Like we just have to iterate through a bunch of nodes. Like, can that just be okay? Can it just be okay if we just iterate through a bunch of nodes? I just feel like that's the easiest path is if we just for loop through a bunch of nodes. And, and, it, and is it that? Inefficient. So then if we did it that way, the hit points would report to the block object. So let's see if I can get, oh God, these arrows are so buggy. How do I get, oh, I have to, wait, oh, there we go. We. Oh, that's a, I thought that was the arrow, but that's a mouse cursor. Uh, the hit points. We'll set a flag. And then the flag will be checked. Well, it's actually going to set a flag on the block object. So it'll go to the block object. It's so confusing. Go to the block object. The block object. Trying to get these. The block object will set a flag.
I'll get better at Escaladra. I'm new to it, but we'll get better at it. Depends on the number of nodes that really needs to be updated against the total objects you iterate on. If most nodes need to be updated, a for loop works fine. It could be most, it could be none. It literally could be either, like equally. It depends on how much destruction the player does or things in the world do. I'd honestly need to prototype more of the game to be able to answer that. I'm not really sure what playing it is gonna be like until I build this stuff out, which to me kind of gives me my answer is that we should prepare for the possibility that most of the nodes might need to be updated or at least allow for that to be okay. So the hit points tell the block object to set a flag. The block is going to be checking to see, are there any flags? Or I guess we'd actually want this to go to the block object. If there's a flag, add it to the array. I like Excaladra, it just takes some practice. Did I type a U or is that just like a cut up Y? Oh, I'm just typoing. Okay, so the hit points tell the block object to set a flag. The flag uh, gets, means the block will add itself to the array. Can we make this have both ends? No, we can't. Can we? Yes, nice. So, <laughs> I'm so excited. So the block is gonna check to see if the flag has been set, and then if so, it'll set it to an array. And then when the block moving script tells it, the block, to recycle, it'll recycle the stuff on the array, and it will unset the flag, of course, as well. Like, that kind of makes sense. You don't need the flag if you use an array. Hit points call a function on the block objects. What function put the self into the array? The hit points call a function on block objects. The function just puts itself onto the array. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can kind of see that. But... How does, how does hit points call a function on block objects? How do you do that? I can call a function from, a child can call a function on a parent node? I didn't know that. And if so, how do you even do that? And so assuming that I can do that, yeah, yeah, how do I do that? I don't even, I don't even know how to do that. Sounds cool. I would do it the dumb way, ignoring performance. Yeah, and optimize when it's needed. Yeah. I like that. At this point, I would do a simple loop. If the performance is plummet, we will come up with a better solution, 100%. With a reference, maybe get parent, but I don't like these references. Okay. I didn't know you could, I didn't even know you could do that. As long, I didn't know that. I did not know that you could call a function from every, from anywhere. I mean, it's just as bad as checking a flag on a parent. I mean, it's, we already are doing that in a million places. So this, this is not necessarily the agreed on, you guys, are you saying something else too? Like when you say dumb way, duplicating it again. Whoa, how did I do that? Was that control click? No. Excaladra is cool. 
It takes some practice, but it's cool. So in so the other the the, the dumb way would be when the recycle message comes in, it just, the, the terrain block could iterate. My dumb way is to just search for the nodes that need to be reset when you recycle a cube. Yeah. Right, so no array is being created at all. Rather, Forget all this, forget all this, forget that, forget that. When it gets the recycle message, it literally goes to each of these, whether they need it or not. And they may well not. See if the game stutters or not. All right. I mean, you guys are talking me out of this whole thing. Shoot. I'm actually impressed that we're willing that we're 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 going to we're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing it this way. We're doing it the dumb way. Wow. I'm shocked and excited and I really want to draw it. Excaladra. I'm trying to learn you. Okay, there we go. So every single thing in that block is gonna receive it even though as you can see these two didn't get the damage i guess what it probably better way to put this if i wanted to make this look nicer would be we say for loop And that for loop would iterate over all of these, potentially recycling each one. Is probably a way we could represent that. Block moving script tells the block to recycle. It runs a for loop that recycles every block, whether it has damage or not, and then recycles. Simple as a pimple. You can do a bit of optimization by searching for the nodes on ready and save them to an array so you don't search all the children every time you recycle. That's nice. Yeah, I guess that would only cause an issue if some point there are things that spawn in, but I don't think I plan on do I think everything is going to be preloaded on every block. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Welcome home, Rogi. Welcome home. We have been, we have been hemming and hawing. And honestly, it's been kind of fun. <laughs> like I kind of live for this. Uh, so we've been planning out different ways to potentially do this. And these are two options right now for replenishing stuff. Oh, apparently there's three options. There's three options? No, there's not. Oh, right. Oh, there is three options. Wow. Cooking ramen in something plus lemon pepper onion powder will report on this flavor combination. Please do. So the, the, the options we went through are either when we recycle, when when it's time for a block to be recycled. We add, well, okay, rephrase that. When things are damaged, they put themselves into a global array, whether or not they're the block that's getting recycled. This is just one option. They go into a global array. So if we wanted to do this, we would have to sort out like maybe a dictionary right so probably like global dictionary right would be the better way to do it
So then we can sort out the keys and the values. So this is this is one option that we're not going to do. <laughs> but it, it's something we talked about, and so I'm just going to go over it. So damage comes in to the different blocks, and no matter whether it's the one that's being recycled or not, a global dictionary gets updated with the things that are being damaged. So in fact, it wouldn't even be telling the block. It would be telling the global array which block needs to be recycled. And then the global dictionary would tell that particular block, hey, you need to recycle yourself. And then it will recycle stuff in the array. That array gets added, not even the array, the dictionary. It's, it's, it's complicated. It's really, it's basically really complicated and really not necessary in so many ways. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> we have to add stuff to the global array through the block. It can be a local array on the terrain. Easiest method. All right, anyway, this idea is complicated. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, so <laughs> then the other option, reduce, reuse, recycle. Wait, I've heard that somewhere before. Yeah. Uh, so then the other option is there's an array on the terrain that when things take damage, they add themselves to that array. It sets a flag, unsetting. It's a little complicated. We can do it. I don't even want to talk about it anymore because this is so much more simple. It takes damage. And we just set a flag right on here. Right on there, we just set that flag. Right there, that's a flag being set. That flag gets set, and then this for loop, upon recycling, when this block gets recycled, the for loop is going to iterate. It's not more simple. Dude, Thonti does not like this idea. Thonti is not sold on it. It has a lot of pitfalls. Pitfalls? Like things that can go wrong. Things that can go wrong. I don't, I don't like it. I'm just gonna catch this up to the other one, but do as you want. I mean, to me, Where are the pitfalls, I guess, would be my question. Like, I can see how it it can be suboptimal, but how is it potentially problematic? Hit points sets a flag on the block object. The for loop is checking for that flag, recycles it if it has the flag. Simple. This one sets the flag. The terrain checks to see if they have a flag, adds it to an array. I mean, it's not that, I mean, this isn't that complicated either, actually. This isn't that complicated either. It's just. Like, either one, I feel like they're pretty similar. The biggest difference is that this one is going to be iterating over more things that aren't necessarily going to have a flag. You know? So I'm gonna do it the for loop way. I'm gonna do it the for loop way. And we'll just see how, how that goes. All right, wow, that was so much planning. That was so much planning.
<laughs> I've been lost ever since you started drawing. <laughs> Cheers. It'll be good. Yeah. All right. So now I gotta now I gotta get back into the project here and sort it out. So this is the hit point script. On the hit point script, we want to get a flag that is set. We want to set a flag. Oops. We want to set a flag on the hit point script, or from the hit point script, to the block object. Some hours of planning start to do something, yep. Yep. So let's set that up. Little piece by little piece. Little piece by little piece. We might already have this piece. So this flag is actually on the hit point, but we want to go up to the block ob object and add it on there. So this is block instance. We don't care about the block instance. We're done with block instance for now. Instead, I would want to on ready the block object, which would be this right here. So that's what I want to add the flag to. Thoughty, I think those are wise words. I think those are very wise words. Block object is going to be get owner. That's it. That's all we gotta do. Really, I don't even need to do this. <laughs> I don't even need to on ready this. I'm just gonna say get owner. That'll be plenty. Oh, it won't be, because, just kidding, the obstacle is the owner. We have to go one level above that. So this would be where we say get owner, get owner, which is kind of messy. We just, and, and so this, this will not work if, for some reason, I ever nest an obstacle. This is not a good solution. This is not a good solution. I don't think we should do it this way. A lot of people don't like planning and then the code will be shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It also depends on how good the planning is too. So this is a bit of a hiccup because there are some things out there like the copter, for example. So the copter, which by the way, isn't something that would apply to this situation but there may be something else so this is the helicopter the helicopter is a bit of a weird one first of all it's set up badly unfortunately this is the obstacle here are the hit points nested in the obstacle is another nested in the hit points is an obstacle and then there's hit points. So if on here, we were to say, get owner, get owner, it's going to go to another hit points. So I would need to check to make sure. But then again, this is an NPC, which isn't connected to a terrain. So it would be irrelevant. But the reason why this is set up this way is, is so if the helicopter gets attacked, it becomes an obstacle. So it's not actually, this is actually an NPC. Oh God, this is, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to like future proof it. I, um, <laughs> what am I trying to, what, what is the point I'm trying to make here? The point I'm trying to make here is not the house. Uh, the terrain block. The point I'm trying to make here is that if we say get owner, 
Get owner, get owner. Sometimes this is going to be a problem. It kind of, you know what I need? It needs to, it needs, mm. Like if I set a flag on the obstacle, honestly, you know what's starting to look good? The global one. The global one is starting to look real good. Because then I don't have to worry about structure at all. Guys, guys, I think I want to do the global one. I think I want to do the global one. Because there's still lack of clarity on how these will be structured. I know. I know. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm also not sorry. Global is not good. Wait, why don't you like the global one? Why don't you like the global one? Digital communications be like. Okay, so what this is supposed to be is we don't we don't even need I mean it's still dude this is why is this because we still have to get the information oh god I'm melting down I think my brain is melting down I think I am nothing. I think I am become nothing. Fine, I'll just, fine, forget the global. Can you tell that I haven't decided what I wanna do yet? It's just, I'm thinking about all the caveats on how I'm going to clarify this. Like how I'm going to access putting a flag onto this script. We can't do a signal. I mean, we do have a signal on here called update hit points. And this one emits update hit points. And it says, look above it. Look above myself. Update the signal that's above me to emit the hit points when I get damage. If we set up similar to this, it also receives the signal from that which is above it. So that's that would be the obstacle. So the obstacle has the signal update hit points above it. This also will emit it onto itself. And it connects to itself. And then this helps if it's like a double thing. I almost feel like we should do it this way. We should create a signal on the obstacle. Okay, I've got it. Signal. Update. I'm gonna call it a status, damage status. I mean, it could even just be update hit points. What does hit points come with? Does it, I don't think it, it calls with anything. No, because signal update hit points is too often. So we wanna say signal update damage. Update reset status let's say that update reset status on the hit points instead of doing needs reset here i'm going to come down here 
And I'm going to say, we're doing it like this. Just like we're doing here. I'm just going to like stick with what we're already doing. I'm going to keep it consistent. Update. Yeah, something like that. Right, exactly. I'm going to say reset status, whether or not it needs a reset. So that way, at least the names are similar. But yeah. So we're going to emit that. I don't think it needs to come with anything. It's going to emit up there on obstacle. We connect it. So it's listening. But it's already itself, so I guess we don't need to... Oh no, we do need to... Update well-being. <laughs> it's a nice synonym, but I feel like it's... Blobulous. So this is if it has, if this has a signal update hit points, if it already has a signal on it, if the thing too, so this is checking to see if it is a sub obstacle. That's what these, that's what this is doing. I'm going to add that in here. Check if it is a sub obstacle. That would be a nice note to have. So we don't need to worry about that at all. So we just want this. Blo I said blo blobulous, blobulous, amorphous would be another word. Unclear. I feel like well-being is unclear. It's non-specific, is what I mean. So I think I could say. Um, update, reset status, connect to, on update, reset status. I should rename this to go with that. I have a lot of syntax problems, I know. That's for another day. On update reset status. Okay. Funk on update reset status. So now we're on this level right here, and I need to get up to that level. <laughs> That's pretty silly. Pretty silly. I mean, I guess I could have just done get owner. Do I need to do get owner, get owner? Why did I get confused? Couldn't I just do get get owner? Why did I not do get owner 25 years ago? Why did I not do that? Why did I think I couldn't do that? Wait, am I stupid? I'm not, I'm not, but I think my brain was a little fried. Okay, first of all, I'm lost on here now. Let me try something. I'm bearing with myself here and my ADHD brain. How did I get to this script? I don't need to be on this script. What am I doing here? This is the health script. Okay, so I just realized something. I don't think I need this. I don't think I need this. I'm gonna comment this out. We're doing a do-over. Get owner is the root node of scene. Get parent is the parent node. Right. So this is basically get parent here. 
but I just realized. Because this is going to be, this is the top level of the scene. This would be the owner of hit points. This would be the owner. It's simple as a freaking pimple, dude. All I got to do is say get owner and it's always going to be this. I don't know why I forgot that, but I did. But I did. We just have to say, oh, I see why I forgot that. Well, we can just say if it has node, right? So if, or if it has, is there a way to check to see if something has, is there a way to check to see if something has a variable on it? Has peer, has attribute, has pose, has ID, has changed. Oh, you can't see what I'm looking at, sorry. Let me see if I can zoom that easily. Yeah. Has named classes, has setting, has meta, has signal. Right, we have has signal. Oh, we could do has signal. We also have has method. We should probably do has signal. That'll probably be the easiest one. All right, let's do has signal. I just need to remember how to use it. If how do we use it? <laughs> I think I've used it. I think I've used it like literally right up here. Hold on. We'll get there. I'll figure it out. So we would say get owner dot has signal and then tell us what the signal is. Therefore, we do want to put a signal in here. Signal update reset status so we do want to create that i don't want that to be here get rid of that get it out of here get all this out of here i don't care about any of this if the thing above it has that's going to be down here. If get owner has signal update reset status, then emit it. Like, just find it and emit it. Get owner. Update recent status. Emit. If it has it, emit it. Then on here, we want to say funk ready. Update reset status, connect on update reset status, funk on update reset status, and so this will be, we actually could do an if thing, so because we're going to want to unset this flag as well. It's a flag that we want to set, and it's a flag that we want to unset, potentially. So now we need to think about the unsetting. At what point does it unset?
We're not adding it to an array, but this has an unset. So hit points tells the block object to set a flag. That's what we're doing. When the recycling happens, it's going to go back and unset it. So this is the one that we're actually doing. We're going to do a for loop over this. The flag gets set right here. Hit points sets the flag for the block object. So when the recycling happens, when the for loop iterates through, because it's going to be, the so basically the block above it is going to be checking to see if that flag is set. And so really the for loop should be on the block object, right? No, that doesn't make sense. That makes no sense. Well, that doesn't not make sense, actually. We actually might need to do that. There's probably gonna be another for loop. I don't know, I, I, I won't think about it right now, but I'm gonna need to think about it. So for now, we won't do it, but I'm gonna need some kind of like, you know, if needs reset, true then do this do this blah 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 if or, you know else do this blah blah blah. so i will probably want to add something like that but for now let's not do that let's just do one step at a time because my brain can't handle anything else on update reset status um set the flag so needs reset becomes true. So we have to create that flag. To become true. When it updates the status. Needs reset becomes true. Now we need something that checks that. Right now we're on this level right here. The thing that's gonna check it is the terrain up here. Because the terrain is going to receive a message from the terrain belt. Or the not this the block moving script over here. The block moving script is telling the block to recycle. So it's looking at the thing that just got recycled and it's going to take the name of that thing I guess it could I guess it should emit a signal it should emit the signal that's on that thing right I don't know, my brain's having a bit of an issue with that. So let me come back to there. Okay, we're back to the main scene. We have the terrain controller. So this is all, some of this is a little dated a little outdated we don't we're not actually checking for a block instance anymore yeah it show is i believe i believe it's gonna stay one you can do with that reference you can do with that reference anything right so first terrain is the thing that we have the reference for And so I would want to say that particular thing, check to see if the flag is true, right? So if you're cheerleading in your head, thank you. Thank you, Rogi. I appreciate that. Thank you. If first terrain 
needs reset. Now here's the thing, it won't always have that. That's the problem. This will not always be. And so we're gonna get an error if this is null. I mean, I guess we have to say first, if first terrain needs reset is not null, but I don't think that's what's gonna be null. It would be if first terrain, it, would, it wouldn't even be able to find it in the first place, so it couldn't even check it for null. Thanks, Insane. So that's another problem, is I would need to make sure I add this script to everything right now, which is, by the way, oh, a whole stressful thing. Hmm, how would I even check? So the block instance actually made it a little easier. I guess I could say there's this function somewhere for it. There is? for checking to see if something has a variable. I mean, I could just create like a stupid signal that just exists for the sake. Wait, does it have a signal? Did we did we create a signal that I already forgot about? Update reset status. If it has update reset status, we can do that. Literally, it's that's let's go. That'll work. Something has a function, right. Yeah, method, I think it's method, if has method. I think this will work though. This is kind of similar in that sense. This is temporary, but we need it for now. If first terrain has signal, right. I think we're achieving a similar thing doing it this way. If first terrain has signal, I think, do I need to put this as a string? I don't, I don't know, I don't think so. Maybe, do I? Let me just double check. So on the obstacle, I think on the hit points, we have something like that. We do need to put it as a string. Okay, I will do that. If first terrain has signal update reset status, then if first terrain needs reset, then uh, I guess we I wonder if we can if we can do like I mean this is having an integer is very unreadable. Let's say let's make another signal. Let's make like yet another signal. Because all I need to do is, we could run a function. I guess I could just run a function. Right, I don't need a signal. I can just run a function. Okay. If you can reference to an object directly, custom functions are better than signals, faster. You know, I'm starting to realize that. I'm kind of starting to realize that. Let's, let's, let's do a messy mismatch of both of them. And I'm gonna say here, we're gonna call a function. So if I say first, if it needs reset, on needs, I don't know, I don't know really. So for signals, I've been doing on needs things, like on something something. But maybe I should do a different syntax if we're calling the function. I feel like a signal makes it a little less mysterious. Blobulous is a character in an indie game? Okay, that's awesome. Now I'm just thinking about like searching things up. I mean, I could just control shift F and we'll be okay. I don't know that I need to search. I think we'll be fine. I think I'll just say on
It's not really on needs reset though, is it? It's it's really we're saying reset terrain or reset block objects or re yeah re reset block objects. We'll say that, and that's a function that we're running. Okay. Now, back on the block object, we have to create that funk reset block objects. Now, we do the for loop that needs to, so where we are now is on here. Uh, specifically right here. This is where we are. Reset block objects, right? And reset block objects. The script is not the terrain script. This script is not the terrain script. Correct. This script is uh, the block object script. So it would be a house, it could be a car, it could be a building. Uh, if I come back over here, this is the terrain script here. This is the terrain script. You call the reset block objects on the terrain. Well, yeah, is that okay? I thought I could call a function from, if I have a reference, can I just call it anywhere? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh. 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 You're right. Right. Totally. Oh, you, you're right. Oh my gosh, thank you. Oh man. Whoops, whoopsie, right. The terrain script has nothing on it. It's literally blank. Oh my gosh, okay, thank you. Whoops, freaking whoops. Oh, it gets confusing. Um, right, for frick's sake. Oh my gosh, um, okay. So instead, I need this, which is, this is the terrain script, the block. There's the block object. I would need to say first terrain, then look at the block object, but that's not, no, that's not, that's not gonna work. So I actually need to put this, some of this stuff, reset block objects. Yeah, we gotta get this off here. We gotta get this out of here. We gotta get this out of here. Okay, so maybe I will do a signal. Okay. We could just do has method. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll be okay. This is not a big deal. Okay, this is fine. This is not a big deal. Um, <laughs> right? So we'll just pass this for now. <laughs> we will not ass it. We will pass it. Uh, and we can just say has method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This makes sense. This makes a lot of sense. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so we come back here. Don't stop. Don't make that invisible. Don't you dare. Okay. So if it has method, this makes more sense. If it has method. And then what is method? Method's looking for a string. I've never used it. Let's see what it's looking for. It's looking for a string name. Okay. Okay, so I guess I don't need to put the parenthesis or anything like that. We would just say reset block objects, just like that. If it has the method, reset block objects. And this is, but I'm a little worried because the terrain, what if the terrain doesn't even have a script in the first place? Will this return an error? Because the problem is not that the other terrain blocks don't have the method, but they don't even have a script on them. 
So I wonder if this is going to return an error since it's not even going to find a script in the first place. It'll be okay. It won't be like, hey, there's no script to find a method on, so therefore I fail. It'll be like, it's okay. There's not a script. There's not a method. It'll be false. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm glad to have that confirmation. Okay, so if it has the method, and if a node has a default script anyway. Oh, oh, that makes sense. Wow, I wish that was more obvious. We still need to check the needs reset thing. So this, so we actually have to come back to the this script. So this is where the for loop will go through. So really, so really what's going to happen is this is going to execute the for loop right away. It's not going to check to see if anything is true. This is going to run our for loop. So I'm just going to do a print run the for loop. Okay, and we'll deal with that in a second. So forget all of this. If it has that then run the then just do first terrain reset block objects except i should indent it correctly for reasons that make sense if first terrain has method reset block objects first terrain reset block objects if it has it run it and then nice <laughs> And then we should get print run the for loop. If I haven't messed up something else, which is totally possible that I've I've left some stray code uh, incomplete somewhere. Okay, it hasn't. So right here, we're not gonna get anything because that block isn't present in this level. But if I load this one, we should get it, bam, run the for loop. When this one goes, we should get two run the for loops, bam. Nice, I only saw one. Oh, it's actually only on one. Actually, it's only on the colorful one. I actually haven't put it on this one. So let's put it on that one. So this is good. It's working. We've got it. Putting that through when the colorful one gets recycled. Good news. So far, so good. Not complicated, but it's nice to have something <laughs> after all of that. Uh, I will put this block just so we have it on both of those. Let's put it on this terrain block as well. Uh, so, I will just open up this, come to the terrain folder, find the block script, and that will go on here as well. So now in the top left there, we see, bam, it's got a script. Just what we want, everything is good. Now, just to recalibrate here. The block objects, they are, let me just make sure those are getting, let me make sure that's happening. I'm gonna make sure that's happening. I'm gonna say print object has been set to be reset. <laughs> okay, whatever, it doesn't matter really what it says. Let me make sure that's working. I haven't actually tested that yet, technically. All right, so both of these should report that it's time to run the for loop. Now, if I attack this, object has been set to be reset. Nice. Object has been set to reset. Object has been set to be reset. Looks good. Run the for loop. I love it. We're in good shape here. The messages are appearing as they should. Object has been set to reset. Object has been set to reset. We're good. It goes away run the for loop. Beautiful. All right, we're cooking. So now this is on the block object right here. Now we're going to go up to the terrain. And this is going to need to run a for loop over all of that. So for 
objects in get children <laughs> just get them all oh i guess we can also didn't someone say we could do like node 3d or something to just like be more specific now that that would yeah, that is, we can say node 3. I haven't, I haven't updated every obstacle yet to be node 3D. So like, for example, this is gonna need to be reset. This is a meat object. It is gonna need to be reset. But I've, I need to make this be a node 3D. It's currently a rigid body. I need to make it a node 3D. That's like something I just need to do. So, it will exclude things that we need. You can check by type in the loop if object is type. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me just make sure. Did I add that? Block object as type. Did I? I could have sworn. Oh, that's just in programming. Let me just check everywhere. Rigid. Really? Okay, all right, let me add that as a task. Update humans to be node 3D at the top level. So that's something I need to do. Probably won't take long, but who knows? We're gonna guess a 30 minutes on that one at some point. And then another thing is Ensure all objects that need resetting uh, have node 3D as top level. Really just all objects. Honestly. Oh, I didn't put a time on that one. Oops. Estimated that honestly could take a long time. I'm gonna put four hours on that one. <clears throat> okay, so if object is type, really? If so in in the for loop, for objects in get children. If object This, I can say this? This can't be correct. You're saying instead of that. Like this? If object is node 3D. For every object in node children, if the object is node 3D, is block object. Right. Well, oh. Oh, wow, you're right. Oh my gosh, you're right, because we made a class. This is the power of classes. Oh, I almost I almost didn't even use what I set up for myself. Oh my gosh. Oh my freaking gosh, the power of classes. Okay. If object is block object, why didn't I do this sooner? Okay, if object is, I mean, it would have been seconds sooner. Uh, if object is block object, Thank you. Then, um, we want to say, well, I guess I don't know what we're doing yet. <laughs> it's not only if it's block object, it's also if it needs reset. It's a lot of ifs. It's a lot of ifs. That's a, that's a lot of ifs. I guess we could say if is block object and needs reset. But, but will it know what needs reset is? Create a check reset function on block objects. Oh. Work out the inside of the air later. Good call. If object is block object, what I need to say 
So I would say object. Right, reset object function. Cool. All right. And then on here, we say func reset object. If needs reset, then, you know, reset the object, whatever. <laughs> object has been reset. Okay, let's see if that works. So I don't know if I've left something undealt with, but we're gonna find out. All right, so what should happen is when I attack one of these houses, after that house gets recycled, that is to say it goes past the player and it goes into the collector or gets added back to the terrain belt, when that happens, we should see a print message down here that it's been reset. So I'm gonna attack it. We're not gonna see anything. I attacked one thing one time. Once we get past the player, we should see one message that an object has been reset. Okay, we got one. Let's see if just, just, cause it should print multiple if we get multiple. So I'm gonna hit, right? One thing, two things. Go by, do we see two objects? Yes! Cool, this makes sense. Why wouldn't this work? I don't know. We're being walked through this very helpfully by helpful people. Of course it's gonna work, but you know, it's just nice to see. It's nice to see. Oh yeah, objects getting reset, baby. I love it. And it's just gonna keep happening every time we cycle through because they're not actually getting reset. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. Okay. Wow, I mean, that's pretty much the most important things. Not really, because we also need to set this to false, right? Yay, yes, it is. It's really exciting. It's good. It's like it all, it all is doing as it should, when it should, so far, so good. Uh, <laughs> um, so, okay. We also need to set it back. So it needs reset, right? We wanna say, do the reset, and then, Right here, we can say, needs reset, goes to false. Bam. Bow. Okay. So now we have to do the reset. That's the next phase of this challenge, is actually getting it to do the reset. We don't actually have a reset to do yet. <laughs> so that's real. That's... That's really real. Okay. So where does the reset need to happen? All right, good night, Albesca. Yeah, thank you so much. I need to, thank you for saying goodbye. I don't expect anyone to say goodbye. But if you do say goodbye, it will remind me to update this. I must give the credits where the credits are due. Albesca, you have been so helpful. I appreciate you. I don't know, I'm Dr. Seussing it up right now. What do, you, what do you want me to do? Okay, so good night, Albesca. Thank you for all your help. I appreciate you hanging out and stuff. Uh, I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Uh, we did, I think, terrain spawning. Actually, this is a whole new category, I think, unless I've already, I guess we don't have a category for this. Add it in. It's time to be added. Terrain uh, recycling. Terrain recycling. Albesca, gotta give you a point. Uh, who else has been advising us? Certainly Dragonblade. Certainly Thought Tea. Dun, 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 dun. There's Thoughty. Terrain recycling.
Albesca, we just gave the point. I think, is that, is that everyone then? Well, if I'm missing somebody, you let me know. Okay, updated that. Now I need to find a place. I need to find a place. All right, before I do that, I have to use the loo. I apologize that I have to use the loo. Goddess forbid, I'm human. But I'm still sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna run this. I will be super right back. Less than two minutes. Uh, and enjoy the music. Stretch your legs. Get a snack. Get you a snack. I'll be right back. What am I rhyming for? Why am I rhyming so much? And then what I'm gonna set up is um, figuring out how to actually replenish it. I don't think that part is gonna be that complicated. I don't think it's gonna be that complicated, but it is going to be. All right, I will be right back. To do this, to see this work, what can I say? I came back and I feel great, and we're gonna do this. Oh, 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 we gonna do this. We're gonna make this come together. We're gonna bring it back to the world of happeningness from its unhappening etude let's get it going let's make it real a thing that does stuff oh yeah i can feel it coming all right i'm really sorry about all that i apologize dear god why am i doing that i don't know because it gets me excited sometimes you gotta do something a little wild you're trying to do say coding that in computer i don't know you gotta get a little extra sometimes right not not you me me i have to do it and i did it let's go all right so we have uh, some, we have connections, we have a line of communication between the terrain that's moving when it needs to recycle, it knows it, it tells things, hey, it's time for you to reset. The thing says, okay, I'm the thing that needs to reset. I'm gonna reset, but it doesn't know what resetting is. It doesn't know what it means to be reset. So it's time to teach it what it means to be reset. Uh, now, in order to be reset, we have to at least reverse the animation on things. We also need to increase the hit point numbers. Uh, those are, and then we also need to make it visible and we need to re re restore its collision. It may not need its collision restored. It may not need its visibility restored. So that would be something we could say, if it's not visible, make it visible. We could do a toggle. No, the toggle would be bad. Something like that. I don't really care. <laughs> I'd say we just do the dumb thing and we just, we can do performance checks later if it's an issue. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So 
onto the actual and that's on the hit point script. So the hit point script is where all of that gets controlled. The animation position, right? So uh, on here, I'm gonna zoom it out just a little bit. Oh, come on. I, I, I just, I just want it to, to fit on the screen. That's all I want. Let me see if I can, I just, I just want it to fit on the screen. I want it so bad. What if I, what if I do like that? and we scooch it like that. Does that give me like a little extra wiggle room that I'm dreaming of? Just scooch it. Look at that little scooch. No problem. Oh, look at all that wiggle room. Then I can, oh, liberation. Okay, cool. Still could be better. Oh, that's what I'd like to see. Look at all that space. I feel like I don't need the big thing on the left, <laughs> actually. I mean, it was it was helpful when we were dealing with the multiple tiers, but at this point, I feel like we don't need the multiple tiers. Okay, so on here, this animation, play, seek, pause, it's going to have seeked to the end, and I need to tell it to go back. I wonder if I can do stop. I wonder if stop will reset it. So I also need to figure out where that happens. When we say the reset, on the thing above it. Oh, we do still need to go above it. That's okay. So if it needs a reset. Okay, I'm just kidding. We do need this back for now. I, I do still need this back for now. So if the block object here says, hey, it's time for a reset, it has to look past the obstacle down to the hit points. That's a little tricky. It's going to look past the obstacle. I wonder if we can, when we do on update reset, hold on, I got it. When we do on update reset status, we send an argument. And that argument is the hit points node. Huh? That kind of makes some sense. That I'm going to be real with myself here. I think that kind of actually makes some sense. Uh, I need to advance the music because I'm feeling, I'm feeling like the energy is sapping away from me every moment that I don't have a tune. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. We skipped way too many pages. No, no, no. Yeah. Wait, no. Back. One more page. Yeah, right there, baby. You play those tunes. You bump those tunes. Okay, so... A little louder now. Come on. We're try trying to have some hype here. Uh, when the signal is sent from hit points, so from hit points, we are emitting a signal. This one. We need to have it call with itself. Right? We need to, now this means that there's going to be an error if we don't come back to the block object. And we need to add. Oh, well, but it'll, it'll, it'll call separate versions of this function, right? Since it's a signal. So I feel like we could, I mean, even if it wasn't a signal. Right? Can't we just say object needs reset true? And then we'll say, so we kind of need to add it. Well, we, we came back to the array. Actually, we kind of need to come back to the array. Because this block object, do we need to come back to an array? No, because it's only going to be one per, it might not though. There might be, there's a possibility that there's sub obstacles with sub hit points, right? Like, let's say, let's say it's like, um, what would be an example? What would be an example? I don't really know what an example would be, if I'm being honest. I mean, hmm. I don't know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. Because because all right, Katie. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for lurking. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for supporting our game dev. Good day or night to you as well, Katie. Good day or night to you as well. Thanks, Katie. 
Thanks, Katie. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm trying. I come here and I try so hard. I got this. We got this. Thank you. Uh, maybe store hit points object in a variable. That's what I was thinking. But like, but like, my fear is like, what if there's multiple hit points on a single object? I don't know why there would be, but like, maybe there could be. What if there's a? What if there's a? a Oh, I know, ooh, I know exactly, ooh. Okay, I know exactly the situation where that could be. The buildings. The buildings. Then we're... <laughs> oh no. Um, so, this building right here, right? The buildings are something that I want to have multiple pieces within them. So the how, oh stop, 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 stop. Oh, I didn't stop my character quickly enough. That's okay, we can just come through again. It's, it's okay. Oh, that was the perfect spot. I don't know why I didn't, I pressed the wrong, these debug keys are kind of confusing. Okay, here we go, stop it. So, uh, show the hit points. So right now I only, I don't, I haven't actually set up hit points on the buildings yet. But on the houses, it's just like one thing, right? It's one thing, you destroy, it destroys. On the building, it's a little freaking ridiculous that you could, you would just like, your little hand, I can't actually click on it yet. But if I did click on it, it would be a little silly if the whole building would come down. So we need an array, right, right. Because maybe this part of the building would get destroyed. And then this part of the building, and then this part of the building, and then that part of the building, right? So it'd be like segments of it. Yeah, then we need an array. Yeah. That's okay, that's all right. We need, we need an array, it is what it is. Okay, all right, we'll do it. I'll, I'll freaking do it. Uh, so, uh, right now, Thank you for, I, it, honestly, you just saying that was like, yes, right, I do, I knew that, but like you saying that makes me think I do, like, yes, here we go, onward. Uh, so, the, so we're, we're, when the signal comes down to the hit points, or rather, let me rephrase that, when the hit points go down, the hit point script says, Hey, I am me, and I need to be reset at some point. That message comes from here, and it goes up to the block object, which is right here. And it's saying, hey, this is me, I'm the hit points object. Really, we shouldn't say object, right? I need to kind of rename this. Instead of object, this would be, and we could just say hit point, hit point, I don't really like that too much, but <laughs> like, like we could say part, object, object, piece, object, part, object, part. I'm gonna call it object, part. So the object, part, which may be the whole thing, you know, maybe I'll say hit points. You know what? I'm gonna say hit points. <laughs> I like hit points better. So, hey, I'm the hit points that needs to be reset. It will call with that. Hit point object is good. Oh, I kind of like hit point object. I kind of like hit point object or hit point. Yeah. Just one hit point. <laughs> Just one hit point. I almost want to say like objects hit point, but th then I need an apostrophe because every hit point will limit a signal. That's true. That's true. But it's more saying like, cause what it's, it's not, but it's, it's, it's like what it is. I was thinking more, it's like hit point script. Maybe that's what it should be. Hit point script, hit point object with hit points, object, Thing with hit points. Thing with hit points. <laughs> Thing with hit points. It's because all it's saying is, hey, I'm a thing that has hit points and those hit points are lost. Th 
damaged damaged part let's just say damaged part how about that damaged part if you're gonna hit point right here you need to just append the object to it yeah yeah so right so let's let's yeah let's ever ever onward so now we know the damaged part so we need to come up here we got to create an array variable damaged parts right if I can type the right thing damaged parts and then all we have to do is say damaged parts append damaged part like that and then if it needs a reset we say for damaged parts for damaged part in damaged parts I'll just say part just to I don't know keep it simpler for part in damaged parts Well, I don't think we, we have that sorted out yet, either. So for now, we're just going to pass it. Um, back on the hit points. I guess we run a function, right? So we just, so I guess we could say we just run, run a function that's on each of these, right? A resetting function. So, so reset damage or something reset damage we have rain nothing severe wind gusts maybe a little hail not too bad thank you for letting me know thank you for letting me know we got a hyper game dev meteorologist let's go function on is destroyed oh that's collapsed i was like was that do nothing okay I can't believe we put an event on everything. Okay, anyway. Funk. Uh, reset. Damage. Yeah, that's what I'm... That's you already know. I'm not exactly sure what the best way to do this is. I'm thinking we could just say animation stop. And I guess I don't have to clarify what animation is stopping. Yeah, because those animation degrade. Yeah, it'll just stop all the animations on there. I think that'll reset the animation, but I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure that'll put us back to the front. And then we also would want to increase the hit points, which is going to be interesting. So this is where we reduce health right so health current we subtract health current we look a level up so we would need to look up a level like we do here thanks insane so if we say this here it will be uh health current set it to health max reset the health reset the animation we'll see if that works so it's the function is called reset damage come back to the object here and we say Um, for part in damaged parts, so we would want to say part reset damage. Like that? Like that? Did I code? 
What time zone am I in? Personally, I am in central time. CT. CT. There's a website that I like the best for checking this. Time zone. CT current time now. There's like there's some some of these websites aren't that helpful. Some of them are time dot is. I found this to be the most accurate. Technically, this is my time zone. Uh, the stream lives in the ET time zone. So whenever I tell you this, you know, like tomorrow we're doing a game jam at 6 p.m. ET. Uh, that would the best time zone. That would be this one. Because I used to live, I used to live in this time zone. But I now live in this time zone. So the stream is is the stream time officially is ET because that's just what we've always done. And then CT is my personal time. Central part of the USA. That's right. I live in the middle of that big old emptiness. Kind of. I mean, I live in a big city within that emptiness, but you know, still. Why is it the best time zone? Why is it the best one? There's so many tornadoes. <laughs> uh, it is very affordable though. Okay, it's part of why we moved here. All right, so this should work. This just, honestly, honestly, like we might be at a point where it actually works. Like we actually might be at the point where it just works. Unless I did something wrong, which is possible. Let's find out. It's actually, I almost don't want to know. It's a time zone of which I happen to be in. I don't think about it. You don't need to think about it, yeah. Seven hours the difference between us. All right, that's not bad. Dude, some of the folks who come through here have a freaking 12 hour difference. They're literally on the opposite of the planet. But still, that's that is seven is seven is a lot. Wait, so that means for you it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's midnight. It's midnight. Okay, it's midnight. It's midnight. All right, this is a moment of truth. When I click on this on this house, I'm gonna destroy it. That red house on the colorful one. In theory, once it gets recycled. It should come back! It came back! Hey, it came back! Tear this house down! Tear the colorful houses down! Come back around! They come back! Tear these houses down! And when we come back around, they'll be back! Tear all these down! Ruin it! Who cares? They come back! What difference does it make? What difference does it make? They're back! Yes! Now, we ain't quite done yet. We ain't quite done yet. But... But... We know we got the workflow of how to make things happen up in here. So that is a good thing. That is a very good thing. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Also, a game theory, yeah, <laughs> game theory. Uh, okay, now, what is, what is missing? Besides needing to put this on every single terrain, an obstacle, uh, you may notice, you may not notice, but I'll help you notice. Uh, I can click on this cow and it picks up, you know, I can actually destroy this fence and it destroys, which is gonna need those scripts. But if I try to click on this house again, not, not that one, because we hadn't destroyed that one yet, it doesn't do anything. The reason for that is because I haven't restored the collision yet. I still have to restore the collision. It seems like the visibility is already on there. It kind of makes me think we should put the collision on the animation, because I think it, it becoming invisible is set up on the animation, which means that all I have to do is reset the animation and it changes the visibility. We might as well do the same thing with the collision. So that way I don't have to, you know, do more code. That might be a good idea. 
And so if I bring up the hit points, oh, we have an issue. So the hit points are not actually replenishing. So we do have to figure out, so there's, there's another problem. The hit points aren't actually coming back. So all we've done is reverse the animation, not reverse the hit points, nor have we restored the collision. So we're not, we're not out of the woods yet, but at least we know we have the, the flow of getting things to update, which is good. All right, let's sort it out. I typed words and it did things, yowie wowie. I typed things and it did words, yes. Or I typed words and it did things, yes. Yes, that's true, that's true. Seems like that happens a lot these days. Uh, so let me see where the collision stuff is happening. So the collision, interestingly, isn't on the hit point script. I'm surprised, but maybe not. So is that handled on the obstacle? Is that easier, apparently? Yeah. On update, top level hit points, health effects, if the health is less than or equal to zero, the collision is turned off. Hmm. Wow. What? Why would, why would we be doing that here? Update hit points connect on a, what is, I'm a little confused. <laughs> I'm a little confused what this line of code is doing here. In the ready function, it will turn off its own collision. Why? If it has update hit points, two levels above it, connect update top level hit points or connect update hit points to update top level hit points. Okay. Also, if it has the collision shape, if it doesn't have the collision shape, let us know at a break point. So basically if it has the, oh, I see. So it's saying if I'm a sub obstacle, then make sure I'm not colliding because I, I'm not supposed to be a colliding obstacle yet. That makes sense. So let me, I'm gonna, <laughs> we're gonna clarify that. If I'm a sub obstacle, uh, make sure I don't collide yet. That's what that's doing. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. All right, so this is kind of just what I'm trying to understand here is where all of this stuff happens. So here we have, if health is less than, if you're dead, then the collision goes off. I guess we don't want to do this in the animation. So that makes sense why we wouldn't want this in the animation then. Okay, so those are the two places where this exists. Function health effects, it goes off. So we need to tell it to go back on. Now health effects gets called. I don't like that name of that function at all. Update hit points, really it should be on update hit points. So I'm gonna change that to on update hit points. And we're gonna come to health effects and we're gonna rename that to on update hit points. We're refactoring a little. It's true. I don't think I'll regret that. Okay. So that is going to come from, where does that come from? Itself. And that's being emitted from the hit point script below it. Okay. Makes some sense, I guess. Makes some sense. Uh, we should make this more consistent. This is on the hit point script. On update hit points. 
I need to come find the health effects again. On update hit points. It's a little confusing with these names being the same. I'm gonna keep it real. This makes that, well, we don't really need to worry. Oh, this is, oh, we don't need this at all. We do need it to update the damage label. This is literally, wow, this is just for debug purposes. That's the only reason this exists, by the way. Interesting, okay. Wow, man, really get lost in the code. Like one day I just need to spend like, or not even one day, like one week, I just need to just go through every single line of code and just decide if it makes sense anymore. That was such a little thing. Uh, okay, so, on the hit point script, we up we update the reset status, right? We reset the damage. If we wanna change the collision of the thing above us, now I'm not sure why this doesn't work. I'm gonna have to look into that. Oh, maybe because we're not calling health effects, and so it's not updating the text. It actually might be updating it. It's just this function isn't being called, so it isn't gonna run. So we need to update the hit points. Oh, we need to, we need to run update hit points. That's why. That's why. We have to emit update hit points. That should update the hit points. Because updating the hit points will then, by extension, run the function that we need. Okay, 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 okay. So come down here, update hit points. That makes sense. We still need to do the collision. I could just say on the thing above it, could probably just do that. It's kind of messy though. I kind of hate it, but we could do it. So the collision thing isn't even on here. Like I would say collision shape 3D disabled false, which is gonna be a little fricking messy. Oh, did I do that wrong? Let me come up here. I don't think I did, but it might not, since it doesn't find it, we might have to create a special function on here. It will probably make more sense for us to do, is if we just make a function. Okay, we can do that. Cause I don't think we have like a reset damage function on here. I could even just call it, you know, funk restore collision. And it makes the collision shape 3D. Uh, be enabled again. I wonder why that didn't work. Is it big? I don't care. Oh, I need to do a slash maybe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We don't need to worry about this. So I will say on above it, we want to say reset collision, call that function or restore collision. Probably you want to say, I think we said it, we called it restore, which is a little confusing, but that's okay. Restore collision. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's see if that does all the things. All right, we're gonna switch the debug level. Burn this house down. Make sure we have debug numbers up. Yes, it's back and it's destructible. Bam, done. Delete this whole row of houses, all of them. Burn them down, baby. Cycle back around. And they're back and they're destructible again. They've been replenished. They are healthy again. We have done it. We have done it. 
I'm gonna do a little dance party because I feel happy about that. It replenishes. Oh yeah, give me full screen, baby. Oh yeah, destroy those houses, put them in the ground. Make sure those people inside are dead. It doesn't matter, they will come back like they never died in the first place. We are successful. Raise this town to the ground. It's okay. They'll come back. Who really cares? It's just a game. We'll find out. There it is. It's back. Burn it down again. Burn it down again. Tear everybody's lives apart. I'm happy at last. Nothing makes me sad anymore. And DJ dropped that beat. Okay, 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 okay. We get it, we get it, we get it, we get it. So, um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, the rest is about the same from here. It gets easier. Yeah, right, 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 right? Maybe. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure, probably, totally. I mean, <laughs> it'll be fine. Everything's fine. Uh, cool, great. So this is wonderful. Wow, I'm gonna have a snack. I'm gonna have a little bite of a little snacky snack. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. I love it. A little snack for me. What, I didn't earn a snack? Come on now. I think I did. Okay. So with that done, what's next? Well, I need to add um, this to other objects, right? No lag and huge loading time. Yeah, a bigger loading time, right, no lag. That's right, no lag. Just a lot of work. Yep, <laughs> yes, correct. Well, I mean, I hope no lag. I guess technically, I don't know if there's no lag. I don't notice any lag, you know? I mean, we'll see. <laughs> but the lag is, is not what it was. Yeah, I don't think there's lag. So, um, so the next thing Let's just do this fence. There are these fences right on here. Keep an eye on a tornado to my south. Oh wow, that's that's horrifying. Let's let's set up these uh, these these fences to also go. Oh yeah, let's check FPS. Not good because I'm full screen. The FPS is horrendous when I'm full screen. Just terrible. Look, I drop it down. Look at all those frames we get. So number one, that. Uh, but let's see. Do, 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 tear these houses down. It's not good. It is not good. It is not good. But like, you know, I I guess what I wonder is, so if we were to like build it, you know, would the FPS be better? Is it because I'm running it in the editor? Oh, the SDF, right. Right, right, right. Oh, let's try it, TAA. Wait, I wouldn't mind taking a victory lap distraction. That's fine with me. If there's a moment where I'm willing to be distracted, this is it. All right, I'll turn off SDFGI. And then that is, you're talking about, is that something that's like here somewhere? Where is that? Where does that live? That's a thing somewhere, isn't it? Maybe that's in project? Anti-aliasing, right. Where is that? Where does that live? I can't remember. I've set, I set things that people told me make it look better and I never looked back. Oh, right here? Use TAA, right there. Isn't gonna make everything look uggo? 
Isn't the game gonna look uggo if I do that? Oh my god, it's not even clicking right away. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Insane Alpha Beta. All right, I've removed those things. Switch on FXAA. What? Okay. Okay. At screen space AA. Where is that? Instead of TAA? Oh, here. Oh, okay. Oh, it's fast. I like fast. All right, I'll do that. Let's do a little distraction victory lap. I don't care. So the game is going to look a lot uglier, but that doesn't mean that we can't fix it. Oh, whoa, look at those frames. What? Now full screen, ooh, full screen is still brutal. Full screen is still brutal. But it's not as bad. It's still above 60, which is good. I'll take that. I'll take above 60. And honestly, it doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks pretty good. I mean, you know, the shadows are brighter and I want them to be darker, but honestly, they, I, I that, that's a whole week that I wanna do is just like diving into shaders. And what I, what I really want for the game is I want it to be cartoony. I want there to be like outlines on everything. I want the shadows to be really harsh and the, the lighting to be really harsh. Better than 50, but not a huge difference. Yeah, there's probably still other settings. I mean, I've got volumetric fog or something. I got I got a lot of crap going on. There's probably plenty of things I could still optimize. But hey, you've given me hope. You've given me hope. And we can fix it up. I hate that we lose a lot of the like darker shadows. Which cartoon, decade, and genre? I don't know. That's that's like, honestly, that's some like research that I've been meaning to do and I haven't done yet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My partner, Insane, was just like, we got a tornado warning on our phone. And I was like, don't worry about it. Insane Alpha Beta already told us it doesn't matter. So thanks, Insane. You knew. You knew. I'll put some settings to a game setting panel later. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's already better. Pixar to commercial. Oh. Looking at the window, yeah. They use they, them pronouns. Uh. Or me? Oh, that was, you saying me? Yeah, I was looking at the, <laughs> No, I was talking to my partner. Windows over there. Partners over there. Uh, Pixar commercial. That's interesting. Dr. Seuss it. I don't know, just something, something maybe almost comic booky, but like, but like more animated. <laughs> But, but also, I still want it to be three dimensions. Like, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be like straight up like 2D cartoon that is, that is, you know, just has 3D rendering. Like, I do want it to look like 3D. Maybe like Borderlands a little bit without as many borders. <laughs> Borderless lands. Without, and without all of the stylized. I don't know, it's... I'm just not sure yet. Something like that. With sky contribution, you can darken the shadowing. What is sky contribution? Is that a real thing? That world environment? World environment, sky. Borderlands dope. Yeah, maybe something kind of like that. I'm still, I'm still, still kind of working on that part what the visual I, I should I you know I, I I try to put together like mood boards when I can but also you know I mostly get into other stuff development and all that 
Adventure Time. Yeah, maybe kind of like that. Inside the ambient light category. Okay, let's see. Ambient light. Oh, sky contribution. Why does the search not find those things? Why doesn't it just find it? I guess because it's within here. Well, then why is there not a search in there? Wow, that's, the music is like slapping. Jesus. Um, I didn't necessarily mean that in the good way either. Okay. This is kind of what it looks like. I wouldn't say this is quite what it looks like, but it is kind of what it looks like. One means max skylight. Oh. Zero means no skylight. Whoa! Ooh! Dang, you like know what you're talking about. Sometimes, Thonti, I really think you actually know what you're talking about. Oh, wow, this looks just as good. This looks great. This is fine. I don't even notice the difference. What? Insane Alpha Beta said that it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just people's research. What's happening? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I hear like a weird alarm sound happening outside. Oh yeah, the alarm outside? There's an alarm outside. So the alarm outside is, is technically for um, like people who are outside to warn them that things may be falling, that they should get out of the way and stuff like that. But not necessarily that there is an imminent tornado, but rather, if you are outside, get inside. Yeah, there's not an exciting just tornado storm. Like, I'm pretty sure Insane Alpha Beta is like, is like, looking at like, meteorology. Okay. Well, I'm down here, that's Oh, that's why you're oh, that's why you're coming down here. Oh, because we're in the basement. I'm from the East Coast. That's scary. Yeah, they're from the East Coast. They're from that Eastern time originally. Insane says, not that it doesn't matter. It's a probationary warning. There is no tornado at the moment. Just storm rotation nearby. Thank you. <laughs> Samurai Jack, where there are no outlines. Maybe. Precaution, oh, not probationary, pro pro probationary, precautionary. That sounds like the word. Uh, I don't remember. Samurai Jack, yeah, and, and if it was through, oh, whoa. So I was kind of imagining outlines, but only because everybody says that makes it cartoony. Thoughty says, I've never seen a tornado, but I'd watch one from a distant distance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, the last time a tornado came through, I, um, I was sitting on my stoop and <laughs> I could see, because we were on a hill, our house is on a hill, and in the distance, I could see a tornado, like, like, out there. I could literally see it touching down in the distance. It was freaking wild. It's, it's scary, you know, but... You know, and I think what's the scariest about it is like the randomness of it all. Like, is it going to come get me? Probably not. But maybe, but maybe. I kind of like this without the outlines. That's pretty cool. Samurai Jack in 3D. Oh, but this is not like obeying the like rules of the world of the art style. Ooh, Samurai Jack tribute. This is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. It's a little bleaker. I'd almost, I, I don't know if I'd want that color palette. I like the style. Don't know if I like the palette. I don't even know what I want with the palette. I have so, there's so many art, there's so many art decisions that I still have to make. Never know the path of it, yeah. You can have like a vague idea, but not totally. But I think I think you'll I think we'll be okay. All right. So what the heck was I doing? We were doing some visual stuff. I think we got a lot of that set up. Let me. Oh, you know what I was gonna try? I was gonna try just adjusting it a teensy bit. 
What if I just bring it up? Oh, that's too much. Oh, yeah, just, just a taint. Just a little weints. An eensy weints. Looks good. Looks good. Uh, and let me like, let me give you a credit for that. Honestly, thought to you. Like, that's a whole, that's a whole absolute credit right there. Helping me with this, the, the visuals. Art direction. Is that art direction? Is that art direction? I don't think it's art direction. I mean, if anything, that would go to Gab Games. Gab Games was the one giving me those thoughts here. Right? That goes to Gab. But I feel like there's something more specific here. NPC spawns, score dunk, grab mechanic, optimization, debug tools, debug, particle effects, optic destruction, reach, multi-arm attacks, moral support, grab, obstacle. I could have sworn there was something for that. Tech support, game concepts. I mean, I guess that could go into Godot Consultant. All right, I guess that's, I guess that's not a thing yet. Let's do it. Uh, lighting and environment. We'll say that. And that kind of, honestly, that kind of goes into optimization and stuff too. I think I got a thought to you. I got to throw you an optimization credit as well for that. That's kind of a lot of help you're giving me there. You helped me achieve many things. I need, this is, I need to, this is, this is hard to search. This is tough to search. Okay, so there's optimization. There's thought to There we go. Done. Now it tends not to sort it for some reason until I like refresh the page. Whoa. So let's do that. Let's refresh. Oh, control R resets it. I was like, why does it not reset or refresh? Because it's resetting it. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's still not. I don't know. Sometimes it takes a while for it to get that right. Let's just move Thought T up manually. There you go, Thought T. And then Gab Games probably is up there a little more too. Oh my gosh, Gab Games way below where you belong. What in the what? There you go. Scores adjusted. Okay. This distraction has gone on long enough. Let's get these fences. Let's get these fences coming in. So right now, whenever I destroy these houses, they finally respawn when we come back. But if I like take chunks out of those fences, uh, those fences aren't gonna respawn. So let's see if we can just easily repeat this same process and, and get those fences to come back. See how, see how simple that is. See how simple that is. To the south, a tornado did touch down, but it lifted. And since uh, the winds were getting strong in the storm, they issued a warning to play it safe in case another tornado appeared. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm amazed you got both of our cats down here. Oh, I didn't know that he was already down here. He was like at the foot of the stairs. Oh. Yeah, I'm honored and flattered that you're here helping, Gab Games. They let the warning expire. Whoa, I like the sound of that. Love right back at you, Gab. Does that mean it's all good? All right, so let's get this fence respawning. So on the, the fence script, on that script, I don't even have to add anymore. Oh, oh, we have to add the uh, block object script. That's what we have to add, right? So over here, over here, we have the block object script. 
that's sitting on the house. And it's and it goes on every house because it's an instance. Uh, and so I think that's the only thing because there's already hit points on the fences. So I think that'll be fine. So I'm going to open up the fence instance. Uh, and as you can see, there's no script up here. This is the fence, as you can tell. It's totally a fence. Uh, we're no longer under a tornado warning, just a severe thunderstorm. Uh, so let's just attach the script, and maybe that'll be enough. That literally might, it might just work. It just might work. So I'm gonna come to terrain, block object. It is now a bona fide block object. I'm, I'm curious to just know if that's enough and, and we can just call it a day right there. So we're gonna go to that, destroy that fence a bit. I don't know if we did it enough there. Yes, it's back, that's it. We just gotta attach the script. Modular logic, I love it. Now I did just see a frame drop right there. What was that? Was that just like something else? That was just something else probably. Everything's fine. Uh, breaking up the fences. Oh, I wonder if that happened when I grabbed the human. There are some changes I need to make to the human. Yeah, the fence respawns. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Love it, love it, good news. Great. Like it's a whole new, it's, it's really weird to like know that it's not actually respawning the block. It's like a part of me is like, this game is fake. This game is lying, it's not real. <laughs> but I mean, it, none of it is, but it, it really feels like I'm faking it. But hopefully, you know, I will forget that and I'll just be playing it and it'll be fine. Oh, cubes dropped down to 39%. Freaking hell yeah, it did. It's been sitting pretty at 40% for a long time. 41 votes and still 40% pretty much are in favor of cubes. That's brutal. That's brutal. It really, it really didn't budge. Really didn't budge. I was partial to tiles, but then, you know, sections is not bad, but it's so long. Blocks, I like too. Blocks kind of evokes a similar thing to me as cubes, but cubes is really, cubes is really bad. It's really bad. I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed. And I will totally honor the results of the poll. Like, <laughs> come on. Right? Maybe. Uh, so let's get something else going, which is actually what? Actually, what else do I need to add? I guess every, oh, I need to put on every terrain block. That's the other thing I need to add, is I need to, so like over here, right? If I destroy these, these are definitely not gonna come back. So I just destroyed that whole row of houses. So I would need to update each terrain block to be able to remove things or, or add things back that get removed. So that would be the other thing to add in there. I'm just destroying houses on the left side or whatever. And actually there are a lot of objects that just aren't set up right. So see those houses didn't come back at all. Gab game says, uh, in the subway, so if I lost connection before you go, as always, it's been a pleasure. You make the work day 10 times better and inspire me to work on my own project. I love the like feedback support that we give it. You giving me support, I'm giving you support. You're giving me support, I'm giving you support. You're giving me support, I'm giving you support. You're giving me support, I'm giving you support. And it just keeps going and it keeps going and it's like this beautiful, amazing blossoming of creativity. We are so powerful together. We can take over the world. I mean, maybe we don't have to take over the world, but that we don't need, we don't, don't worry about that. Forget that I said that, I didn't say that. But um. Yeah, we can do great things. We, we can do great things. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for saying all that, Gap Games. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. We can do this. We got this. Um, cool. Well, 
I guess at this point, you know, so I, I, I thought today, maybe, just maybe, where are we at? Five hours? We have a lot of time left, technically. Technically, I got a lot of time. So we could move on to the the spawning, but I think I think before I move on to the spawning, I feel I feel like it's gonna make the most sense to add this script. I think it's time to do the rote repetitive thing of adding this these scripts to everything. Now there is one more caveat, which is that a lot of these obstacles aren't even done being set up in other ways. So like this tree, for example. If I hit this tree, you don't see any particles coming off of it, for one thing. No particles are coming off, which is a problem. And then on the other hand, or in addition to that, when we bring it down to zero, it doesn't disappear. It does lose its collision. Oh, it didn't. Oh, I'm actually a little surprised that it didn't lose its collision. Wait a minute. Is that a, did we introduce that on accident somehow? This is why I'm here, the vibes. Let's go. Oh, I see, you're saying you're laughing out loud, nice. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Okay, I was worried that these weren't getting reset. I don't know why that tree isn't losing its collision. Let's see if this tree does. Oh, it does, but then it gets it back. I'm a little confused what's going on there. I'm just a little confused what's going on there. I might have to investigate that. So I guess I guess this stream kind of becomes making sure all the rest of the obstacles are set up correctly. Why does that still slow me down, I wonder? It's a little surprising. These trees stop us. Click, 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 click. I keep, I'm about to die, so that doesn't help. All right, let me restart it. Let me try that again. Let me just try that one more again. Oh, I think the um, this barn is set up as an obstacle, so that stops us. It's got seven HP. Tear it down. Oh, we, we go through that one. So something is set up wrong on the tree in general. So I might need to look into that. Might want to look into what's going on there. Doesn't go away. So I could go ahead and set up all those obstacles so we can see them all. Yeah, let's, okay. Let's do that. Before I add something to every terrain, I think it makes more sense if we just add more obstacles to this debug level and we just, we get them all caught up. So they, they behave as well as the fence and the house. I think that kind of makes the most sense. Hell, I could even come in here and add the fence. Let's do that. Let's add the fence particle effects, you know? By the way, I do have some problems with the house particle effects. You may or may not notice, but the particle effects don't actually face the same direction as the house. So the house is askew. It's a bit, it's at a bit of an angle, right? But if you look, the particle effect actually happens. It's kind of hard to tell, but the particle effect, look, there's some, there are some problems with this for sure. So you see how the house just broke off of the roof just broke off of there. Sometimes it breaks the roof off again. I don't know if you guys notice the things that I'm noticing, but they're there and it, it does kind of bother me. Let me see if I can illustrate it again here. So I'm gonna hit this. Look at the angle of the roof pieces when it breaks off. See how they're like flat as if the house was rotated this way, looking right at you. That's kind of a weird problem. In theory, I could just never make the houses be askew. But that's kind of boring. If I always have to have everything be facing the same angle. I like this angle. I think this angle is awesome. I'd prefer to have more things at these angles. I think it adds like a kind of a cool effect. In fact, I might even say everything should be at these angles. Whoa, that kind of sounds cool. Uh, but then it, you might have noticed another problem there. Sometimes, so the roof is already destroyed, which means we shouldn't see any more roof pieces if I attack it again. So I'm gonna attack it again. Roof pieces, where did those roof pieces come from? Why are they there? Who invited them? 
So there's there's some there's some issues. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna write these down in my hacking plan because you know there's just some things here that need to be noted. There's a couple things here. Let me see what I've got. Anything with particle effects? House particle explosions face forward slash camera uh, instead of the direction their parent obstacle is facing. Okay, we do have that bug on there. So let's add a new bug for the particle effects. Um, uh, animation degrade particles sometimes emit when they shouldn't see house roof <laughs> something like that we'll call that oh we have to specify what kind of bug it is is it a programming bug or an art bug that's a tough one that's kind of hard i guess that's a programming bug how long will that take who knows too long probably a long time i'm giving that one four hours all right, so at least it has, at least it now has a task on there. Now I can move on. Now I can move on. Okay. All right, so let's start setting up other objects. Let's see what's going on with that tree. Oh, I was going to add particles on the fence. All right, let's do that. <laughs> we'll do something. So... These fence panels are actually their own separate thing. They, wait, there has to be hit points on here. Oh, there's the obstacle, and there's the hit points on the fence right over here. There's hit points, there's animation degrade. So if I wanted to set this up, what I'd need to do is create the degrade thing. Speaking of moving on, Insane Alpha Beta says, we're in the clear for the rest of the day. What did you say? I'm told that the hour has, or the the warning has been extended another hour. Yeah, yeah, it is scary. It is scary. I don't know. Insane Alpha Beta, I mean, Insane Alpha Beta's talking pretty confident. And often Insane Alpha Beta comes through and they're like, you need to be careful. You're in danger. And then nothing happens. Which makes me think that when Insane says that nothing is gonna happen, it prom it probably means that nothing's gonna happen. But but it is it, there is kind of a lot going on out there. I can hear Oh my god, dude, it looks it looks wild out there. Yo, Insane, you want to see this? I feel like you would love to see this. Let me get my camera. This is kind of intense out here. Actually. <laughs> you know, we may be in the clear, but I gotta tell you, it don't look that clear out here, Insane. Are you sure? Are you entirely sure that we're okay? I don't know if I'll be able to convey to you what it looks like. But I will try. Alright, hold up. It's gonna be- let me make it smaller so it doesn't make everyone dizzy. Uh, It's kind of scary. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, uh. Uh. Yeah, it is quite dark. Okay, I'm trying to get this. My wire is not cooperating. I'm literally, I'm going in here. I'll just feel better. Yeah, yeah, do what you want to do. 
Look at it up there. Look at it. Look at that. Look at those trees go. Look how cloudy it is. It's freaky. It's freaky out there. And it's got this like green hue. I don't even think you can see the green hue. Honestly, I should at least save my work. Can I message you on Discord? Sure. I see why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see why you want to say that. We might need to, uh... <laughs> Guys, we might need to take cover. We might need to take cover. It's a little serious out there right now. Look at that. Yeah, it's, we, we, I think maybe, um, I think maybe we might need to take cover. <laughs> it's looking a little serious out there. It's looking a little serious. All right, well, you know, we did good work, guys. You know what, guys? We did good work today. <laughs> I think I'm gonna, uh, think I'm gonna make a little GitHub push. Look, look. We stay inspired. Look, okay, you guys want to call it a cubes? We're not gonna call it cubes. I'm gonna keep it real with you. We're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take cover. All right, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. But with that said, we are gonna take cover. All right, <laughs> we are gonna take cover. I'm ending the poll. Let it be known that cubes won as what we call the things that spawn in on the levels. Let it be known that that's what won. And I will decide to ignore it. I will decide to ignore it. Insane Alpha Beta says, wait, don't leave yet. I've given you, I've given Insane Alpha Beta some extra details on my coordinates. Hey, what's up? We just have, uh, why is outro music playing? Because I think we need to duck and take cover. I feel like it might be a good option for us just for a little bit here so i'm gonna do a github push because it does rain snow storm or tornado we commit our code okay uh obstacles replenish at last uh that's I think that's good enough. You know what? Sometimes we don't need to type out a bunch. Sometimes that's enough to type. And we be okay about that. Well, look, it's kind of clearing up a little bit. Right? Maybe? <laughs> Is that clearing? Maybe. Hard maybe. Hard to say. You should be fine. And St. Nova Beta says you should be fine. Okay. You know, it's just like, it's one of those, it's one of those like primal instinct things. The heavy bits are leaving. Wait, is this, is this a false alarm? Okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard not to feel the primal urge to protect myself from that which threatens us. And honestly, Insane, besides that, it's like, it's, you know what I would say, too, is like, this is the kind of weather that the power goes out in. And look, I honestly, I, I don't know how clear it is, but um, I need power to do the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well go out on a goodbye than a, you know. Mm -mm. I see the picture, insane. I see. 
yes. It's a very interesting picture. Saving me, yeah, we're being saved from a tornado. We're being saved from a tornado. Oh, wow, we really are, it's, it's right. And so the wind, which direction is the wind going in that picture? Also, yes, cubes, yes, cubes one, cubes one. And I will absolutely 100% not honor that choice. It's a stupid name. It's such a dumb name for them. They're not cubes, they're strips. They're, 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 they're rectangular. It's, 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 no, I will not abide for this. Abide by this, abide to this. I will not, no, no, I refuse. All right, guys, uh, we're ending the stream a little early just because we have storms and stuff. Regardless of whether tornadoes come, look how clear it looks. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful right now, actually. It's not bad. It honestly looks like it's going to be pretty good. I'm such a scammer. I'm a big scammer. Not much rotation, but very gusty winds. Right. And so, like, you know, if the, if the, if the power goes out, you know what I'm saying? Can we get an image of just the desktop? Of just the desktop? Oh, my desk? You mean my literal, actual desktop? Maybe. But then we have to lose the storm. Look at the storm. That's cool. Storms are cool. Uh, all right, y'all. I'm out. I'm out. I apologize to end the stream early, but I don't want to worry about power going out or anything like that. So uh, thank you everyone for your help today. Oh my gosh. The storm might pass. It really might pass. You think we can hold here for a few more minutes? It's already passing? Do you guys think I should just stay? I know Sriram, I feel like such, so honestly, I might be a scammer because I might be scamming about leaving. Could you imagine if I'm scamming about leaving? I've already played the outro music, which means like 50% of the audience has already left. <laughs> Anyone who was here. It might pass. Maybe we're okay. Maybe we're okay. Maybe we're fine. You know? Only two people have left? Oh my god, there was so much thunder. It's so scary. Like the power, but that's the, that's the other thing is like the power could still like go out, you know? And if the power goes out, then the stream just like ends on a whimper. That's no fun. Nobody knows what happened. Those who left voted to the key. <laughs> that's what you get. That's what you get. You wish you got some rain. <laughs> that, no, that makes sense. Rain is rain is useful. Droughts are bad. Droughts are not what good is. Droughts are not what good is. It's on the other side of us at the present moment. Oh, okay. Generally, most of it is gone. I mean, it's kind of cool. I'm glad that I can like put it up on the screen, so at least you can see what it looks like out there. It's raining there too, it's about to. Stay, 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 my Taylor Swift voice, nice. I wish I knew the melody. I'm embarrassed to say, I'm no kind of Swifty. Not on purpose, just never worked out. Every day, 36 Celsius. That's hot, right? I'm a stupid American. <laughs> I don't know what 36 Celsius is, but that's probably hot. It passed over. You can see the sky. That's true. Randy, come out here. Please. Come, come. I'm, I gotta coax my partner out. Okay, look. I'll pump this down. I think it's pretty hot in America. I'll pump the outro music down, okay? We'll, we'll take this false alarm. For now. Are you coming? Okay. Look out the window. Whoa. You see how much better it looks? Uh-huh. You yeah. see how much better it looks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, it looks a lot better. It, like, it got really, really severe there for a second. Yeah, no longer. Mm-hmm. 97 Fahrenheit? Where do you live? You don't have to tell me, but, like, dang. So I think, and, 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 wait, can I show you some other stuff that mm -hmm. Insane Alpha Beta sent me privately so that way we don't get doxxed on the internet? Okay. Um, so, okay, this is us right here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This is us right here. There's the storm stuff, right? And then here's us right there again. And so it's it's mm -hmm. moving. It's moving away. Like the yeah. red is over here now. You see? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See how it's starting to get Well, insane alpha beta. What about that stuff below it? Is that coming or is it maybe it's going like this? Can you draw an arrow of the direction it's moving? <laughs> But yeah, you can so but you can kind of even see by looking outside that yeah. we're in like the good section. Yeah, it looks a lot better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I didn't want to tell you which part of St. Louis, Missouri I live in, because, you know, we don't wanna we don't wanna worry about it with any kind of doxing. So I just wanted to make sure that you did know. You're pointing an arrow. It's going east. Oh, it's going east. Oh, that seems good. Yeah. Oh, well, then we're super OK. Guys, I think today's a new day. I think it's a new day and we don't have to end the stream. <laughs> ah! Cool. Cool. Well, welcome to Middle America. Here we go. All right. Well, I'll leave the uh, I'll leave that up. A new a new dawn, you might say. Uh, I'm sorry that I outed myself as never going to name something blocks that isn't or it's cubes. Sorry. No, I will name it blocks. No, no, no. I will name it blocks. No, that doesn't count. I will name it blocks. I will not name it cubes. It doesn't make sense because it's not a cube. Sorry that I had to out myself. I was going to wait till the end of the stream to do it, but it turns out we're not at the end of the stream. Look at that sunshine. It's actually gorgeous. It like literally washed all of my sins away and now I am reborn. We ain't naming it cube. We We ain't. Huh? I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have gotten biblical. There was no good reason for that. You're a newly born Swifty? I maybe I need to get into it honestly. Maybe I need to maybe I need to let this be the sign that now's the time. What is a programmer what if a programmer goes to your repo and wants to change it and they see the stream and think oh it's cube. <laughs> I will reject that. All right. I think we're actually good. I think and and insane alpha beta knew. Insane alpha beta always knew that we were good. But, but, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't totally sure. I wasn't totally sure. Uh, what overlap? The, there's like two warnings that happened. The first one that was for Northwestern Redacted. Mm. And then the second one is for Northeastern Redacted. Wow. And it's like in both really small oh. windows of time. So that makes sense. It's just like moving really fast. Right. There's people driving out there. Look at this. Look. Look at Insane Alpha Beta yeah. drew an arrow that on it. That looks great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for taking cover and putting our cats in shelter. Yeah, Lila's over it, but Travi's like hunkered down back there. He's like, this is nice. Yeah, it's, there's mold in there probably. Yeah, well, I. <laughs> You're not getting all up in because you're just crouching there. I'm. I don't know what you're getting. Okay. I'm necessarily going to leave, but it does look great, so. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I guess we're continuing. I guess we don't have to worry about the um. I guess we don't have to worry about the power going out anymore. So okay. Never mind. False alarm. Not the outro. Sorry for trolling everybody in that regard. I apologize. It's it's good times. Everything is fine. Uh Yeah, 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 yeah. That's enough information to dox you. 
One is prove it. Prove that you know where I am. I know, and St. Alpha Beta, honestly, you do need to tone it down. You do need to tone it down. Like, literally, stop it. Um, but <laughs> I do live in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, but that's a, there's, that, that, that encompasses a lot of places. So I'm, I'm okay with representing my city. I'm okay with representing my city. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Back to it. Everything is fine. I will leave. I will leave this up for the geo guessers, uh, and so we can appreciate the beauty that's outside. I apologize. I apologize that I thought we were shutting down, but you know these moments happen. These moments happen. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know. Anyway, sunshine. Sunshine. Yay. Okay. All right, we're back to it. We're back to it. Hey, you know what that did? Sometimes, sometimes you need, uh, you need imminent danger to remind you to commit your code. Sometimes that's what it takes. There's a little threat of your entire home being washed away. <laughs> uh, all right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'll keep, I'll keep the window up there. I'll keep the window. It's anyway sunshine. I'll keep the window up there because it's fun. Because it's fun. And then what I was going to do was add some particle effects to these fences. Uh, so the hit point stuff, we're just back into it. Just right back into it, baby, like nothing happened. Awesome wassum. So we have this animation player here. Uh, any natural calamities happen in St. Louis? Um, tornadoes. Uh, tornadoes do. Uh, but didn't. They almost, it almost, apparently it almost did. Apparently it almost did. But we got okay. We got okay. Um, so, as you can see, at the end of this animation player, It disappears. Very nice. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to explode as well. So I'm gonna create. I'm gonna make a new particle effect because I have some suspicions about the way I make these. I have some suspicions about the way I make these. Do 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 do. Of the new <laughs> oh, we're like right outside like of it. Straddling our literal location. Nice. Yeah. Let's not. Let's stop talking about literal locations. Sorry. But thank you. Come <laughs> on. Thank you. Okay. So. I am mm, going to add a particle effect. Dun, 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 dun. I think GPU Particles 3D is the one we tend to do. Wait, I've created Particles Destruction. Oh, I have a script. Whoa. Can I just like add this in here? And what does it require? Oh, okay. Wow, so it comes with the script that it needs. That's awesome. That's dope. I love that I did that. Yeah, that's probably the song. I think the sirens were the song. Thank you. I mean, look how beautiful it is outside. Look how beautiful it is. It's beautiful. It looks like a, a sepia-toned postcard. It's, it's, and it's not even sepia-toned. It's just beauty. We just got a, hel a healthy rewatering of all of our plants. It kind of is really lovely. It's like kind of absurd. Dude, it trips me out how the like the pattern in the um what you call it, the screen on the window that it changes when I move the size of this. That trips me way out, dude. I like can't even believe that. That's nuts. Okay, anyway. 
So, we have a particle effect. This will be fun. Let's make it do things. Let's make it do things. Uh, I want to have it playing so we can see it. Can I post a Hyper Game Dev banner logo thing in general or live chat? I want to make some fan art with it. What? Honestly, I thought that was pretty funny, Edward. I just didn't laugh out loud. Um, wait, which banner? What banner do you mean? Which one? And can't you just like screenshot it or something? Can't you just like screenshot it? Alright, we want to say this is... It should... Oh, there's... I see. We have to actually add something in here. The one that looks like the Discord logo. So when you say banner, you just mean logo. You just mean logo, is what you're saying. I see. I gotcha. What would be the easiest way to do this for you? I'll tell you what. Let's do it like this. Oh, you found it? Oh yeah, itch.io has one. There's a lot of different versions of it out there. I'm always changing it. We need to add a process material. That's one thing. But that's not the only thing. I also need to add... It's been a while since I made this. How do you do this again? Passes? Draw passes? Yes. This is where we do it. Let's give it a box. There it is. There it is. That's my particle. And... We're gonna say maybe like lifetime we could shorten a bit or is lengthen. There we go. We want this fence to explode. Give it some velocity. Of a such, isn't there like an initial not initial velocity ratio. I'm trying to remember how to do this. It's been a minute since I did this. Honestly, I get a little confused sometimes. Oh, initial velocity right here. There we go. Initial velocity minimum. There it goes. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So we want these particles to kind of fly a little bit. This is a nice break from the code for a second, you know? We're gonna bring that maximum down. We want it to look like a fence falling apart. I could use uh, the same particle effects that I've already made, but I kind of don't want to. I kind of don't want to. Because I'm not totally happy with them. And so I'd rather just like practice this again anyway. Direction of velocity, radial velocity. And I guess I'd like it to be a little bit more... So it's always going in that direction. Let me see what these... Angu orbital velocity. I almost wonder if... if in I mean, we do need some initial velocity, right? If I don't add any initial velocity. Oh, maybe that would be a good thing, though. What if I set the maximum to three? Minimum to one. This kind of gives us a little more going on, I feel like. Because now it's going all around it. This is probably something I need to change in my other one, too. Let's make this go up a bit. I guess this will also contribute to, like, explosiveness. It doesn't feel very, like, randomized to me. It feels like it's it's very much leaning towards, like, one direction. I get a little confused by these emitters, honestly. Orbit velocity. I don't think we want that. Directional velocity. Angular velocity. <laughs> the music is groovy. You're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. If we give it some more spread, 
Ooh. Spread it out. Flatness, I don't think we want flatness. Actually, it's kind of interesting. If we add this on direction... Yeah, give me some upwards. Give me some upwardsing. More. Maybe that didn't really... That didn't do much more. I don't know that we need more than one. Angle maximum? Angle minimum? I mean... Ideally, it would just... I don't know if I fully understand what angle means in this context. If I'm being honest. Particle flags. I would like to see some rotation. Damping as friction. I don't know about that. Lifetime randomness. Oh, cool. No. Let's bring that lifetime down, actually. We want to see more of them. Oh, and then if we do explosiveness, it'll do a bunch of them at once, which is kind of what we want, which is exactly what we want. So what is the lifetime that we do on the others? I actually would like to make that the same. I'm gonna come to the house, look at its lifetime. Its lifetime is two seconds. I would wanna keep that the same. I think we actually do need to keep that the same on every single one. Do we set that on the script? Oh, we do. So it doesn't even matter what I set it to. That lifetime is gonna be updated on the script. Well, we'll still stay consistent with it because consistency is tight. Okay, there's the fence. Coming back to our friend, the particle. And we want its lifetime to be two seconds. This isn't bad. This isn't bad. Obviously, I want to change how many there are. So let's increase the number. Yeah. And then it's a, it's a little floaty for my tastes. I don't know that I really care, to be honest. Uh, we want to adjust the shape of this a bit so it looks a little more fancy. And I guess we could just have like, like, like it's like the boards of the fence. It would be a lot easier if I could see the fence. So I know that this is actually the size. It's not. It's there. They somehow are going to get bigger. I don't know about that. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So we need to make these considerably smaller. Considerably smaller. And then let's change the... Oh no, we don't want them to be that long. Quite a bit shorter. I mean, I guess I want, wait. I want it to be tall this way. My bad. It's a little confusing trying to punch the numbers in. Like this, like this. I'll say point .1, one. And point one. See where that gets me. Kind of looks similar. It almost looks a little too big still. I'm gonna bring the length down even more. I think it should, it should probably be like as no bigger than the smallest fence piece. Yeah, I like that. We also want the position to be different, of course. So it actually comes from the fence, would be ideal. Feels a little too extreme, actually. Like with the reference of the fence itself, I'm kind of thinking that's too extreme. I want I want things to tumble more. I wish they tumbled more. Gr 
gravity. We don't want to change the gravity. Linear radial acceleration. Whoa. Oh, maybe I want that more than like orbital stuff. Tangential acceleration. Let me let me bring the radial velocity all the way down for a second. Oh, that looks fine. And then what if we turn up the radial acceleration? I like that. Now I of course want it to spread over an area a little better. So if we go to, where is that? It's in here somewhere. Spawn position, emission shape, instead of point, we can make it a box. That is probably too big of a box. Unfortunately, it doesn't really show you what the box size is, which is irritating. We have to just imagine the box. Another thing we can do is we can do, uh, Is it called directed points? And then we make a texture. So if I click on, I wonder if I, can I do it from the collision? I can't, I think we have to do it from, oh, that's gonna be a little tricky cause it's the whole mesh. Mm, actually that won't work. Cause we could create points, a point texture. Can I, mm. I don't really know how to create a point texture otherwise. All right, never mind. We won't do that. Yeah, never mind. We'll just do a box. We don't want it to be in the negative because that causes chaos. Probably want it to be wider. It looks really weird. So that, that must be the radial <laughs> acceleration. It's like coming back inward at itself. That just ain't right. Let me see if that goes away. You can see that, right? It's like, it's almost like it, it has space physics. Let me reset that. Oh yeah, that's better. Honestly, I feel like this is kind of good. What if I increase this a bit? Right, so maybe just don't make it too much. And let me check these positions. They, I think the pieces are still too big. The pieces are much too large. So let's deal with that. Let's make it about half its size. It's a little kind of on the small side now. Give it a little more chunk. Chunk it up a bit. That's too much chunk. It's quite, it's quite a bit explosive. It's really, it's really doing a lot. Cause I, I kind of want even more pieces to come off of it. Like, like, I could conceivably believe that every piece on there is the one that broke apart. And I really wish they would tumble. I wish they would like rotate through the air. That's what I really, really wish. But I'm not really sure how to do that. And, and I have tried. I guess if, since it says rotate Y, it makes me think, well, I, I just wish it was like, cause if I like tried rotating this like on an angle, you see, it doesn't actually angle it. Mm -hmm. 
And like angular velocity, like I don't even understand. It doesn't, it's not, it's not flipping it around. I kind of like the way that looks, maybe. It does add a lot of randomness. Tangential acceleration? That can't be good. Definitely not good. It causes more of that inward stuff. Turbulence. Oh, I think that's quite bad. I remember every time I've enabled this, I was like, nope. Oh, yeah, because they, like, fly away. They, like, get a mind of their own. Please, please don't do that. Collision sounds cool. Like, oh, they'll collide on each other. I don't know that that's what that means, or if it works. And it sounds like whatever it is, is going to be messy. Like, from an optimization standpoint. It kind of looks better though, doesn't it? This song is Rich in the 80s by Div Kid. What was that song? I don't know, it seems like a bad idea. What if I turn it off? Does it look worse? A little bit. A little bit, actually. It does, it looks worse. It looked a lot better when it had that collision. It does make an improvement. Oh, right, we can change the scale. That's always kind of a nice way to add some like, some like variety in there. Tell them they can be a little smaller. Or a little bigger. We don't we don't want it to be bigger. I definitely don't want it to be bigger. But sure it can be smaller, I don't care. Alright, I think I'm just I'm just nitpicking at this point. I will make the box a little wider the space that it covers that was in position here we don't want to widen the box too much or it stops making any sense all right let's see what let's see where that gets us i feel like this is pretty solid at this point okay so now that we have the particle effect, amazingly, uh, after all of that, I now want this particle effect to indeed be a one shot and we don't want it to be emitting at all. Yeah, that was a nice song. That one was nice. Which one again? It was, uh, you had a good vibe. Div, div kid. Sometimes I wonder if like, you know, these artists have like other ones too. Oh, it does. This one's also the same. Do I know Jan Blomquist? I don't. I don't. Would I like it though? Jan Blomquist. Oh, wow, it's literally a V. It's literally a V. Sounds similar, though? Like, reminds you of that? I like some nice electronic music. Never heard of it. So then we want to say, down here in our animation, I'm going to keyframe it being off, the particle effect being off. And then on death, we want it to play. 
And so I'll keyframe that right in there. And I sort of listened through as many of the instrumental tracks that YouTube had without license that I could play on stream. I just went through them all and uh, and decided which ones sounded good to me. Noted. Noted. I'll check it out later, unless I forget. I'll try not to forget. You can always post it in the Discord in the video section. I don't expect you to, but that's that's the best way for me to remember. Yeah, put it on Discord. That would, that would help a lot. Okay. Especially in the video section. So now, when we get to that point... Oh, I forgot to set emitting to true. There we go. So when we get to here, it should explode. It may not be perfect, but hopefully it'll be good enough. And if, if I set everything up correctly, we shouldn't have to do anything else. It should just explode. But you can see, like, it took it took some time. I mean, it was nice to do a little coding cooldown, but it can it can definitely take some time. All right. Whoa, dude, it lagged so hard. Did you see how hard it lagged before it did that? Oh my gosh. Oh geez, these look terrible. They're flying away. <laughs> Uh, of course, it's not matching the color, which we have to fix. Oh God, they have like they have like buoyancy. Why do they fly away? Oh gosh, doing dude making particle effects is honestly kind of a freaking pain. I'm about to just copy and paste the settings from a freaking another one. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, that's so much fixing I have to do. I can't believe it lagged before it happened. Unacceptable. I, I see it now. Now I see that they're flying. I see that they're flying now. Is that the radial velocity? Is that what that is? And they're obviously, they're going too far. There's not enough of them. That's better, no lag. They're still flying away. And And you see how like the animation is like playing? Oh, <laughs> first of all, I forgot to turn off one shot. That will do it. That will definitely do it. I might as well just code that in that one shot gets turned off. That would be wise. Obviously it's not matching the fence color. Dude, they still look floaty. I wonder if that's some of the angle stuff that I did. Let's get rid of the angular velocity. I hate doing particle effects. Like, I, I like the results of particle effects and I can find that satisfying, but it's just, it's a little like, I don't know. Mysterious. Bro, they are flying. They're absolutely flying. I don't even know what's making that happen. Is it flatness? Is it direction? Maybe it's direction. Maybe that's the problem. It could be angle minimum maximum too. 
and now we're just like removing everything that we added. So it's like it's like not even the same particle effect anymore. We're just we're just changing it entirely. Okay. Please don't look like you're flying. It's better. It's a little better. So the other thing I would change is the angle. That's better. Uh, let me, I'm gonna increase the amount. And it, it also, it's, it moves too far. It moves way too far. They kind of just need to like blow up in, in place. So what if I bring the spread down? Bring that spread way on down. Yeah, keep it at default. Dude, they still look they're getting they look like they're getting sucked into a wind tunnel. <laughs> what? Is that the angle that's doing that? No. Unless that did an update. I hate particle effects. I, I, I'm just now realizing how much I hate particle effects. I wasn't quite, I, I knew it in my heart. I've now reset like every setting. Obviously I've missed one. Scale shouldn't matter. I hate particle effects. This isn't fun. <laughs> this isn't fun. Emission shape scale. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. It's still not better. That's still not better. He sent it. I don't know what he's singing about because I don't understand it exactly, but it seems quite deep. But musically, it's very good. Nice. Noted. Noted. Thank you. Why is it getting sucked into a wind tunnel? Unacceptable. All right, I've about had it with this. Oh, all right, you know what? I, I hate to say it because of all of the effort we put into it, I put into it. But I think I'm just gonna snatch an anime a particle effect from somewhere else. I didn't want to do that because I'm not exactly happy with the behavior of these either. They do things that really bother me and I didn't want to just replicate that. But apparently I'm just not going to be satisfied with any of these particle effects. So I guess we just pick it and we move on. And the particle effect, it's its going to be its own entire freaking day or something, you know, unfortunately. And the frame, I have to be careful. So I'm taking from the frame of the house is the one I'm going to use. I need to be careful because there's going to be some overlapping elements that um, might cause some issues. Particles, fence, we'll call it. Getting rid of this one. I'm burning it down. I hate it. I don't want it to exist anymore. It's not, it's not what I want. So as you can see, it looks very Woodsy. I'm sorry that we just had to ob obliterate all that. So this right here, I need to make sure I make this unique or else we're in danger. So at least, at least, the other thing I have to do is I have to make this unique or again, we'll be in danger. And then for the material, what I have to do is I have to It's gonna be a little tricky. I have to fetch the color from the fences that are on here, which is actually gonna be a little difficult. I might be able to just, I don't know. Because I need it to be, um, I might wanna do it in code, unfortunately. Most unfortunately, is this, this isn't a fence script. Mm. 
there's there's a lot of things that I need to sort out here. Is that RGB? Uh, no, it's raw. In the albedo, there's a raw section. And that's what this is. It's called raw. Can you just find what the color is, then put it in the editor? Yeah, so the, so, okay, so the problem that I'm having is, so I guess I didn't explain that, thank you. Uh, I wanted to dynamically, I want the particle effect color to dynamically change uh, when I change the color of the fence, right? So the way that I've done that before, so you'll notice, you may notice, uh, with the houses. Let me take a little bite of food here. Yeah. So with the houses... Let's do the colorful ones. They'll illustrate the point best. If I destroy this purple one... That wasn't a good example. This blue one... Okay, this it's actually not working. <laughs> I thought it would work. Huh. Well, apparently, I haven't set up a good system for that. I thought I did. I thought I did. I'm actually surprised that that isn't working. Ugh. I guess I have to do it individually? It's a little confusing, because... This does have a shared material. Funny if you put people randomly in the houses and they fall. Yeah. Already doing it. Already doing it. Uh, and it, and that, that's part of the gameplay. Because uh, if the player wants... It, it depends. So, but generally speaking, if the player wants to get abductions, they need to maximize the amount of people that are around. And so if they completely destroy the house, they're going to kill people inside, which means they don't get that potential abduction. On top of that, if those are innocent people, then they're actually going to be penalized for killing innocent people. So destroying a house will absolutely kill people. Uh, and then you want to avoid that happening because otherwise you'll be penalized. Um, and then on top of that, like... Like, let's say there's people who you won't get penalized for killing. You want to keep them alive so you can abduct them, for example. Only people are above the first floor. Yeah. Uh, put some fan art. Not really in live text. Okay. Nice. Nice. I will check that out later. I zoned out, zoned back in, and the first thing I hear is that they're going to kill the people in that house. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we talk about here. This is what happens. Death. Death to all of them. Okay. Now, what I wanted was for these colors to be tied. And so what I had tried to do in the past... Yeah, I think... I think probably the best way to do that... So the house isn't a good example. I thought the house would be a good example. It isn't. But actually, there's a good thing about that. Because I've started to set up this thing where there, there are these uh, export color pickers. So right up here. If I change this color, that's going to change the color of the fence. You can't see it, but it is happening. So if I close this, open up the fence again... you'll see that one fence changed its color to blue. I kind of hate that. I kind of hate that. We could do it on a block object too. It's tough, because I was going to say what I could do is I could make sure that those colors trickle down to the particle effect. It sucks, because what it ends up implying is that means for every fence, I need to set up a unique particle effect 
color. What I would want is for the color to be set in Godot for the object, and then that goes there. Um, and I just don't really want Uh, I, I want it to be easy, right? Like I go to one place and I change the color, the albedo, and then that changes the fence color and the particle effects that explode off of it. Both of those colors change at the same time. That's what I want to happen. Um... I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I guess this is just a task for another day. I will absolutely not use textures. It's just a task for another day. And unfortunately it gets more complicated than I want. Do I have this? I probably have this on the hacking plan somewhere ugly. Let's see, probably not even. Animation degrade particles sometimes emit when they shouldn't. House particles explosions face the wrong direction. We don't have it. Add it in. Add it on there. Uh, devise way to change object parts colors that also update other aspects, e.g. particle effect colors. That's That's just like a whole dang task right there. I'm gonna uh, honestly. I don't know. I'm I'm giving it seven hours. I'm giving it seven hours. That that seems like that's gonna take me a while to figure out. Truly, if I'm being honest. Sounds like a good way to learn about particles. Maybe when you do it, you'll start liking particle effects. No way. <laughs> no, it's it's like look. I like particle effects in general. What I don't like are Godot's particle effect settings. I find them not intuitive and limited. Maybe I'm just not using them well, but I, I don't find them that wonderful, at least in 3D. Maybe they're better in 2D, you know? But in 3D, I find them really tedious and uncooperative and confusing. And I feel like I've spent a good amount of time trying to wrap my head around it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't enjoy using them. You know, setting the color isn't hard. The hard part would just be figuring out where do I change the color? Because here we already have a problem where, you know, I'm changing each individual fence piece. It would be great if on the top level I changed the fences, but it's it, it gets into it, it gets really complicated because different ob I should even put that as a note in there. Different objects are gonna have are gonna demand completely different um, solutions. So it's it's kind of like it's its own entire task, unfortunately. So. What I'm gonna say is different objects demand different solutions or, you know, solution must be adaptable. E.g. the fence rows have multiple fence meshes. Now one solution there would be to not have the multiple fence meshes. Right, just make that one thing in Blender make it one whole piece in blender right like that's an option i just don't know all right all right so not something i can update quite as much as i wanted to right now that's okay i got a little distracted because we had a great success earlier and so i just kind of wanted to take a break from that now i want to take a break from this <laughs> I'm not enjoying this. So what I will do for now, I mean, obviously I need a color. If I want to do particle effects, I need a color. Honestly, I don't want to. I'm, I'm done with these fences. Get these fences out of my face. And this might be something I do sooner than later too. I don't know. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll put, a, I'll, all right, fine. I'll put a color on here. 
I'll finish setting this up, but I really don't want to, but I'll do it. So right now, I'll just make it, they're all, they'll all be white fences, which they're not all white fences, but for now, we'll pretend that they are. Uh, I want the position of the extents to be a little shorter here. We need to move the particle effect to be lower down. Uh, I mean, it, sometimes. It is right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're asking me if I... Yeah, I did make it unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, if I didn't... I think I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, I could check that by coming to the frame over here and making sure it's emitting brown, and it is. Yeah, thanks. Hey, hey, it wouldn't be the first time. But, uh, yeah, I remembered to make it unique. I very easily could have forgotten, though. Thanks, Rogi. Okay, so bring this down a little lower. They're all a little large for my taste there. And you know, this way is great and all, but it doesn't obey angles for some reason. Like for some reason, you know, if, if I rotate the fence, it's not going to rotate the particle effect. And I don't know why. It's very irritating. Really, in so many ways, particle effects do not behave like I think they should. Let's see, we want to do... Display scale. We need to bring that maximum down quite a bit. 0.07? Sure, I think it's a little wide there as well. We don't want them to be blowing outside of it. All right, that might work. Okay, and then on the animation, come back down here, not there, the degrade. Well, I need to make sure I set this to not be emitting and to be a one shot. Add a keyframe of it not emitting come to the end at a keyframe of a keyframe of it emitting and hopefully it looks uh, okay it's not going to be brown when it should be brown but to be honest there are many layers of problems right now with the particle effects so perfection isn't what we're going to get all right there we go it explodes the brown ones also explode white for right now. That just has to be okay. That just has to be okay. We also have these houses not blowing up in the right colors either. So we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Wow. So that was that was interesting. So now I'm gonna, the reason why I was doing this is because I wanted to set up more obstacles. I wanted to just like practice setting up obstacles to replenish, which was kind of the goal of this whole stream, which we've gotten to that point. But I still need to make sure everything can actually do that. Uh, so over here, uh, let's add, let's add it to this one, since this one is the more visually consistent one. I'm gonna say, let's add a tree. The tree has some problems and I need to sort them out. What is going on with this tree? Talk to me, oh, so there's there's a problem with the tree already here. Whoops, hey, I'm big now. I meant to, no, I'm big again. I meant to say, zoom in, don't make me big, make this big. Uh, this tree, You made a new file type, you put it in live text. 
Okay. Okay. Tree. So you can see it's an area 3D. So that's already a problem. It needs to be a node 3D on the top level. So we've already got problems there with the tree. So many of the objects need to be completely reset up. It's because, you know, since I'm learning Godot at the same time as making this game, I'm going to set things up in ways that don't end up being ideal later on because I don't I don't know what I consider ideal and I wouldn't know what the project demands that I should set up ahead of time. So it's like I kind of have to catch up all the time and be like, oh, this is the old style. Now I've, I have to make a change to catch it up to be like the new style, which isn't my favorite. It isn't my favorite, but, but you know, I can't let that deter me, right? Because it's easy to be like, well, I should just start over. I should just make a new project. But I think that's a really destructive, sometimes, way to do things. Because then, it, not necessarily, everybody's different. But for me, it would be very destructive, and it would hold me back. Uh, and so I think it's really important for me to just keep moving forward, keep moving forward, even if it means having to, like, go back and redo something and fix something and, and so that i'm not saying not redo it when i say destructive i mean you know to just say well i wish i could start the project completely over or start a new game that had all of the assets set up exactly the way that i'm going to want them to be from start to finish first of all i don't know i still don't really know what that is and secondly i think that's a good way to lose to never finish a game. Uh, so I'm still moving forward by coming back and fixing something so that way I stay in the same project. And I feel like that, that that's a pain point, but it's okay. So if this has a top level area 3D that needs to be changed, uh, what I have to do is create an entirely new tree. I basically have to recreate the tree altogether. By the way, this arrow thing is a whole other thing that we need to do. I need to remove the arrows from all the ob objects and spawn one and have one arrow that teleports to the thing you're hovering over. This is supposed to be an arrow that hovers over every object, but it became clear that that is well, when I upgraded to 4.2, it stopped working. And someone made the great suggestion, why do you have an arrow on every single thing when you could have one arrow that goes to everything? So now I have to fix that. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm fine. But it does mean that right now I have to create a new object and I have to make sure I put an arrow on there because the code is expecting there to be an arrow. So it just, it just becomes all very tedious. So whatever, we're going to do it. Proof of concept that we can set up our new thing with new stuff. It's fine. All right, so here's, is this the tree? Is this the tree? It looks like it could be the tree with none of the colors. I guess that has to be the tree. It must be the tree. Rogi says, I think the start over versus refactor has a very large margin in which it comes down to development style, but there are extremes when one way is inefficient. What a, what a, what a, what a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. A lot of vaguenesses in there. A lot of vaguenesses in there. But I, I feel like you're, you're, you're basically trying to say that it depends, or in your opinion. But, you know, and I, I don't know if you're still talking about what I'm talking about, but like what I mean is specifically a situation where realizing that one started off in a way that is going to cause problems, that is causing problems now, instead of trying to start over, it depends. Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to explain it. My brain's too tired. We've been streaming too much. I've been working too much. I haven't been eating enough. I mean, I have been, but I just mean I need to take a bite. I'm hungry. Uh, 
I can't. I can't, Rogi. I can't with your your vague, overly complicated sentences. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't right now. My point is, it would be detrimental to the project if I didn't just accept this mistake. And I decided to say, screw it all. It's not worth it. Do everything over. Like, that would be detrimental to my progress if I were to do that. And I think that's something that others might understand that feeling. Especially when you're making something as big and complex as a game and all these systems are interacting with each other. And you realize that something that is, interacts with many different systems has a problem and you have to now fix it on so many different levels. That can be incredibly demotivating and, and it, it can seem like attractive to totally start over, you know? I think you did start talking about something different. But then again, I wasn't being very clear, so. It's understandable. Oh, all right, this tree. So I actually have to remake the tree. So I'm gonna create a new scene with this tree. And now you can see it has a node 3D at the top level. We must preserve that. So in here, I have to add an obstacle node. In an obstacle node, I need to add a hit points scene. Right here. Hit point scene in the obstacle node. In the hit point scene, I need to add an animation player. The animation player needs to be called animation degrade. Ideally, inside of animation degrade, I create an animation called degrade. You took a nap earlier and dreamed you were moving around a GTA style open world and you were moving around elements to make a cool theme park. And as I was exploring, the buildings were popping up. That sounds amazing. That sounds so cool. That's like, that's like one of the best possible dreams you can have. That, that's among top tier dreams, I would have to say. That could totally be a game. I mean, it sounds like a game. It sounds beautiful. Like buildings like popping up around you. Like that concept on its own sounds extremely fun. Just like beautiful to like behold, honestly. So we've actually created a custom warning here. Oh no, we haven't. Just kidding. We did do that somewhere. Did we do that? I don't remember. We're adding a collision in here. We have to give the obstacles some collision. So let's do that. A box shape. I think I need a couple box shapes so we can do the top, the, the leaves and the trunk. Sometimes these trees might not have the leaves. They actually function without the leaves, like visually. There's like a trunk, it's even got little like branches on it. It's so wild trying to like stick to the same task. It gets pretty ridiculous. I will not make into it a game, but it was fun to, ex I will not make into a game, but it was a fun experience. Yeah, you're pretty particular about the things that you're actually motivated to work on.
You can just put multiple shapes and they just work? I did not know this. You can put multiple shapes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. So we'll add a second one in here. Yeah, and in a way they like they're like both working. So both collisions are considered valid collisions for it. Kind of a thing. This is kind of weird to... Oh God, that's so hard to see. This is, this is kind of hard. It's kind of hard to visualize here. I think I'm getting confused too by like the different angles on the stump in general. It's it's tough because you know, I would like the player to be able to like even move through that gap and and be safe. But whatever. It's fine. This is good enough. Okay, cool. So there's that. Right? Oh. Ugh. I forgot to make it unique. I forgot to make it unique. The other one has a different shape now. Mesh Collider on Trunk, that's right. I gotta redo the leaves now though. Because I forgot about the unique thing. It's very easy to forget. It's funny, you know, Godot loves to, or, or at least, uh, the founder of Godot loves to talk about how not having it's better if there aren't defaults so we can put our own things why you got default things not being unique you got a box collider at a moment not a mesh oh yeah right that's what I want yep yes correct Dang it, Rogi, why didn't you remind me? Because I've never used multiple shapes. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. You also haven't done multiple particle effect colors, but I guess you have done multiple colors. That makes sense. But yeah, Gab, we're, we're, we're right on track. This is the correct thing. I'm making the collision for the Area 3D. This is for obstacles. Basically, if the player clicks on this, on either of these collision spots, it will get attacked. If the player bumps into any of these collision areas, uh, it will hurt the player or stop the player, depending on what the obstacle does. In this case, both. I almost want to put like a like a sphere, which is, by the way, more performant anyway. Or a capsule. Let's do a capsule. Just the more I look at it. I feel like this will this will like hug it better. You know? I cannot stand that the tree is white. I gotta fix that. My eyes are bleeding. It's pretty good. That's definitely, that fits a lot better, I think. OK, 
Okay, so then, Mesh Collider, I wonder how much it costs performance-wise. I don't understand what you're talking about. Why are you saying these words? Mesh Collider. Why does everybody keep saying the word Mesh Collider? Why do you keep saying these words? I'm, I'm very confused. What do you mean? It's a collision. It's a collision. It's a collision shape. Why is the word mesh entering into this? I don't understand. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, we could get the same material if we wanted. It's a collision shape that uses a mesh, like the tree to define the shape. Yeah, right. So, so you're so what you're saying is a collision that's just shaped like it. I see. Um, really, because that costs more. From a performance standpoint, mi minimally, but a bit. So we're just sort of like saving a bit where we can by using these more simple polygons pretty much okay you know what we'll just give it a new color what if we just give it a new color Give the leaves a new color too. But you know, in many ways, either works. You know, I prefer to not worry about whether or not those collisions are taking up an issue, taking up any optimization issues. And, and you know, if at some point I'm like, oh gosh, it looks bad. It really needs to be um, exactly the shape of the tree, then I'll do that. All right, so that's tree stuff. Um, so we've got an obstacle on here. We've got collision. We've got this. We need to add an arrow hover, unfortunately. We can add the navigation obstacle on there as well. It's absolutely better performance-wise. Oh, I like these colors better. Um, what else do we need? Damage label. We need a damage label. Let's just copy that, paste it on. Oh, that's part of the instance. We don't need that. That's actually, it should already be in there. We might actually have everything that we need. Probably, maybe. I oversaturated this considerably. Okay. So then I have to save this since it's a new tree. Objects, foliage, tree one. This is tree one dash o two o o. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now I'm sure I've missed something here. We definitely want to put on the top level. Actually, this is the new thing we did today is adding on a block. This is actually in the terrain section. So we need to call it, it's not a block, no. It's a block object. It's a block object. So we wanna make sure we put that script on there. And let's see what I forgot. 
<laughs> Let's see what I forgot. Maybe I forgot nothing. I probably forgot something. So we don't want to put this tree on here. We want to put the new tree on there. That's the new one. And let's see, uh, let's see what went wrong. Now it doesn't have, it's not gonna disappear. It's not gonna have, ooh. All right, what do we forget? We forgot something. Missing an arrow hover. Really? I really thought I put that on there, but I, I believe you. Why would you say that if it wasn't true? Granted, the arrow hover is going to go away again someday anyway. Did I put it in the wrong place? Oh, this is so frustrating. Another thing I hate are these tabs at the top in Godot then it just does this stupid little arrow. I don't know what I wish would be better, but I wish something about it was better. Something about it isn't good enough. <laughs> Why is that complaining? Oh, does it need to be an obstacle? I see, it needs to be an obstacle. Before, it was out here because the tree was the obstacle. So it was fine, So because it's the obstacle script that's looking for the arrow hover. Over on the new tree, the obstacle is contained within here. So I need to make sure that the arrow hover is in there. That's why. All right. Now we can see. Now it still doesn't, it's still not gonna disappear no particle effects, uh, but let's see. Let's make sure it works in any other way. Okay, the hit points are appearing. Oh, we didn't set any hit points, so we have to set the hit points. I also need to move its position, so I'm going to make the children editable. Get the damage label, move it up, so it's actually visible above the tree. And then we can hide it again. And then uh, we need to set the amount of hit points that it has. So the obstacles health max. I don't remember what we said. Seven. Is that what we give to it? Ten. Yeah, I guess it's an entire tree. And it's a huge tree. Ten seems like a lot. Let's give it eight. Let's give it eight hit points. No, it is a big tree. I would imagine there will be bigger trees. Okay. So we get past this. There it is. All right. Check the numbers. It's got seven hit points. Oh, I guess I didn't press enter from eight. Hit it once. Boom, boom, boom. It goes away in theory. Okay, good. I need to get it more in the way so I can properly actually test it. Make sure it's collidable in all the right ways. Grab that tree. Let's just bring it in the center, which I'm going to want to change. I do not like having these in the center because then I run into them when I don't want to be. But for now, we want to make sure we run. Oh, <laughs> wow. We didn't run into that at all. It did hurt us, but it didn't stop us. Oh, I know why. We have to, on the obstacle, uh, declare it as slow down amount. So right now it's none. We have to say full. That is to say, when you run into it, it stops the player fully. Or it slows down the terrain fully is really what it's doing. All right. Open up the level. There's our tree. 
we run into it as we should pull up the numbers it's got those hit points attack it we should pass right through it oh 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 so remember rogi when you said it just works this is why it won't just work this is why it won't just work because uh there's two collision shapes on here so we actually need to do like a for loop and iterate through all the possible collision shapes and tell them all to not be there that's what we got to do so we actually need to rewrite this script a bit because it's only turning off one collision shape instead of both collision shapes so we have to deal with that so anywhere it says Collision shape 3D disabled. We actually have to come through. So in all three of these places, there's, there's four. That's a lot of places. That's a lot of for loops. That's a lot of for loops. All right, fine. So we'll say for collision in get children. If collision, can we say, was it is? Is that, did I type that right? Then we want to say collision disabled true or false or whatever it might be. Did I code? Did I do code? I literally just learned a bit of this today, so I don't know. We'll find out. We're gonna find out. Okay, so false is what we wanna make this one. This one is false. This one is gonna become true. That one's good. This one's gonna become false. I don't know. Seems a little too easy to me. Okay, so we're gonna run into it. Attack it to death. And see if we pass right through it. We do! I'm a coder! I'm a coder! What can I say? Okay, cool. Now we wanna make it disappear. And it re- and it resets itself beautiful hey that's kind of cool it's kind of cool to see it working and you you saw how much effort it was to create that there was there was a bit of a workflow there to get that set up but you know it's doable so for every obstacle type it has to be set up that way not every single one that i plant down but every single new one that I need to set up or repair or whatever. Now we haven't added in the particle effects, so that's a whole thing, but you know, I'd kind of love to see like pieces of wood flying off of it every time. Maybe the leaves fall down, you know, all that would be really cool. But man, I don't have the patience for particle effects, man. Not today. <laughs> oh gosh, what, I'm just gonna do a whole day of particle effects, probably. Uh, so let's go to the animation. Uh, we want it to be visible at the beginning. We could even set different points. We could say that when you first hit it, all the leaves fall off. It's ridiculous, but it's kind of fun. So we don't have particle effects, but we can at least have a little fun with it. So I'm gonna come down here to the bottom on visibility and I'm gonna keyframe it to be on on the leaves right there you can't really see because i'm in the way so i keyframed it to on that's the trunk 
uh, the leaves, we want to do the same thing. Keyframe it to be visible. So now we got trunk and leaves keyframe to be visible. Uh, I'm going to say after one hit, so right away, basically this, when it takes damage, if it takes like one hit, it'll be here. It depends. It's a percentage, but it'll be... And then if it's when it's fully dead, it'll be here. So everywhere in between is like the granular damage that you're taking. So we just know that after it takes one hit of damage, I want those leaves to no longer be visible. So we will turn that off, keyframe that as such, and then we'll say at the end of it, that's when the tree trunk disappears. All right. That should be enough for that to happen. So we gotta go find our tree. Run into our tree. Achoo. Knock it down. <laughs> oh, there it goes. The leaves are gone. I guess if the leaves go, then I need the collision to go. That gets a little messy. I wouldn't say it gets messy, though, because we can... We can set that up in the animation. I think that's that's kind of the point of the animation too, is with that's kind of a point of the animation too, is to be able to set case by case changes to different objects. And so what I can do is I can say the collision shape, you know, and so then the code will be fighting with this, but it shouldn't matter. I think we'll be okay. So we want this to be off in the beginning. And then here, we want to make sure that this property comes on. So it turns off the collision. That might work. But then it's going to be off. I don't think that is going to work. Because I don't think the code is going to override that. I guess we can kind of test it, maybe. Possibly. I, I don't know. If, that's kind of a hard thing to test. How do I test that? I probably could have attacked it and found out. At that point, you have to wonder why it even hurts you, you know? Should it fully stop you if you collide into something you can kill with one hit? <laughs> it's kind of, kind of strange, but that's okay. Yeah, I do have a little concern. I, I do have an idea how we can get around it. I have an idea. I'm going to set the snap here to 0 0.01. So that way we can get in between. And instead of having the collision shape property changing sooner. So up here, we're not defining what it is at all. Is that how animation works? Is that how keyframes work? Does that really get me around it? Like if I were to say the leaves aren't visible right here. And then I were to scooch this down. And let me say they do become visible here. And then I skip there. Yeah, it's still not visible. Yeah, okay. All right, I think that will work. So then there isn't any information about whether it's visible or not until we get here. I don't know. I don't know if this works. <laughs> I may or may not be able to tell if it works. I could, well, I don't I don't know if turning off collision makes it visually disappear. It might. Let's turn on visible collision shapes. This might actually help. This might actually help. Actually. So we see all kinds of stuff everywhere. So there, yeah, so it's there. If I hit it, it goes away. Nice. That works. Good. We still run into the tree in general. Although, now we have another problem where you can see that I didn't actually make the collision shape go all the way up. Which, if you think about it, if the leaves are gone, we now need some collision there. So let's, let's sort it out then. I hope it's not too uncouth to have multiple 
stuff there. So then you can see the other problem, right? We know that this is down here at the bottom, and this could be why it would be nice to do what you're calling a mesh collider. But in theory, this is like more performant or whatever. So then what I could do, <laughs> if I really wanted to, is I could do multiple boxes on here. You know, and then like, since since we're doing a for loop through it, you know, in theory. Hey, good night, Thoughty. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your help, and thanks for hanging out so long. I had to take a break from the coding stuff, but look, it sets up and it works and it replenishes. I appreciate you. Get some sleep. Maybe I'll see you next time. And yeah, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Tati. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. No. No. It's okay. People come. People go. That's all right. They're entitled. They're entitled to it. They're entitled to it. Oh, did you think I was leaving? I'm not leaving, if that's what you meant. I'm not leaving. Not yet. Almost. Almost, but not really. Not really. Okay, I have to make this unique. I will make this unique. No, I'm not leaving yet. Scooch it over. Shrink it down. Like that. And so, you know, that kind of creates like this little area that doesn't collide. So it's, it's got some problems. But I don't care. I'm okay with it. It really isn't worth it. I mean, we might, no it is because because then it won't be like flush on this side. Actually, it kind of already isn't. Do I care? Can we just bring this all the way down? I guess I care. I guess I care a little bit. Let's see how small of an area, but this is something that's going to need to be considered at some point, honestly. Because one of the main parts of the game is that you're dodging obstacles and you're avoiding obstacles. And I might need to go through and redo all these collisions someday anyway, truth be told. Um, because it needs to feel fair. It needs to feel fair. Because there's going to be obstacles all over the place, you know, and it's just, it's just kind of a whole thing to think about one day. And, and so you can see, if you look at the player, I mean, right now, you can see very clearly that the player has these collisions that represent their limbs, but they're not moving. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can... Let's see if I can get in there. So you see this like capsule around here? That's supposed to be the leg, right? So ideally, this would be moving with the leg. Like when the leg moves forward, that would move forward and that would come back. It's also just a capsule. I would think for the player, I would wanna do a mesh collider. So it wraps around the leg because it's such an important thing. So there's a lot of things missing already, collision-wise. Um, that's just kind of a work in progress thing that I, you know, there's just so many things to do. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's gonna contribute to some pretty weird collisions, some unfair collisions right now. Hey, what's up, Jose? Welcome, good to see you. How you doing? How's your Slender game going? You're the same Jose that's in the on uh, the uh, Discord, right? Um, so you know, if I like move a little bit, 
Like, I'm clearly not colliding with this. Like, it, like the, the mesh isn't. The mesh is clearly not in the same place. Right? Why would I run into this tree? Why would I run into this tree? Well, because of that collision being there. So the collision point is obviously happening right there. But for a game that's all about dodging, and it, and it will literally make your arm tiny and less effective and ruin your, your run if you're getting injured, it's really important that the, um, the collisions make sense. So there's a lot of work to be done in general. Is there no collision down here? What the heck? Where did that collision go? I don't know. So there's a lot of work to be done uh, on the collisions in general. And that might, there. it's very likely that that changes anyway someday. Uh, you're the same, Jose. Nice to see you too. I'm working on Genesis right now, making a temporal forest map uh, for lighting in the flashlight. Nice. Yeah, uh, Jose has been sharing progress on their first Unreal Engine project. Uh, I believe it's their first. Uh, and it's a Slender Man remake, and it honestly looks super awesome. Uh, it's turning out really well. Going for the flashlight, nice. Temporal forest map. Ooh, you're getting fancy. You, you're gonna use those Unreal graphics. Cool, cool, cool. That sounds nice. Good progress. Where's this collision going to? Collision shape two. Why would that, why would that go away? Did I tell it to go away? I don't think I did. I didn't mean to tell it to go away. Whoa. Oh, this is a weird bug that happens sometimes. It seems to be related to the helicopters and like when I change levels, maybe while the helicopters are spawning. Oh, jeez. Oh, we put a W in here. Heck yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. I appreciate that you're sharing your progress. It's great to like share in that with others, like to, to see what you're up to. Okay, so I see both collisions are on there. Attack it once, the collisions are there. So maybe, <laughs> I was just bugging. It's, it's all there, collisions all there. And then when we hit it two more times, there it goes and it disappears. All right, we're good, we're good. It's fine, it works. Bam, bam, bam. Break it apart, done. Tree is set up, it replenishes as if it was a fresh tree that just came in. So that system works well. We added, we got new objects spawning in here. That's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. Honestly, Honestly, it's looking pretty good. I I don't I don't think it's reasonable to work on the meat objects tonight. I think that that that's a whole other thing. So that that aspect is so when the the scene comes back, when the tile, the block, the block, not the cube, when the block comes back. So here we have two cows. If I grab both of these cows, and let's grab these two cows as well. When it spawns back in, those cows are gonna be gone. They're not spawning back in. They're not reappearing. So we, we haven't yet set up the replenishment for the meat objects. And honestly, I'm not about to do it today. <laughs> I'm not about to do it today because it, it's, it's very much a different task than replenishing the obstacles. So I think I'll just maybe set up some more obstacles and stuff and not worry about that right now that's what i think but it's great to see you know the tree and the houses and stuff coming back every time 
It's really good. We got the tree set up. Finally, this tree works properly. So I could add another obstacle in there. Part of me almost wants to add something that I haven't done yet. Do I dare? Do I dare add a building in here? Now, it's not going to have any of the particle effects, because, again, I don't have the patience to set that up. But I'd almost like to see the proof of concept that we can set up the building. I might be getting overambitious with that. I may well be getting overambitious. There's a real good chance that that's what's happening. And you know what? I don't care. I'm doing it. Let's do the building. Let's be ambitious. So that's going to be in our level one, our level OO debug. Terrible name, but that's what the name is. I'd like to change that name. If I change that name, there's a reference to it somewhere, unfortunately, that I also have to update. I hate this name. It's just, it's bothering me. I'm changing this name. Instead of level OO debug, this is going to be, um, it's not even a level. It's just debug. Terrain debug. Instead of obstacle damage, this one is going to be obstacle replenish is what we're kind of testing here. Now I do have to come to my, it's just, it's, it's, it's peeving me. It's pet peeving me. And I'm not okay with that. I need to come to the menu, the debug menu. I really wish it would automatically update it very badly. Very, very, very badly. Where did we set this up? Where is this set up anyway? In here? There's an array with all of the... It's not in debug. It's not an in information. It's not in HUD. It's not in menu. Where is it? I forgot where we put this. Where is that? Wait, where does that go? Globals. Oh, it's in globals. Wow, that's kind of a hard place to remember. How is the development of this game going? At what stage is it? It's a good question. I mean, technically, I'm in the prototype stage. So I'm still designing the prototype in general. So I don't even know, you know, how this is going to end up at the end of this whole journey. Still kind of figuring that out. Debug, obstacle, replenish. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm still kind of planning things out. Uh, but I am also... I know where I want to go with it. Will the game be multiplayer or single player? Single player. Definitely single player. Oh, for Jose's game. Oh, that's a good question. I might add a, um, uh, a leaderboard or something, but that's it. So now you can see this has the new title on here. Yeah, I, so the game is about being an alien that abducts meat objects. And uh, you're going to have to get a certain number of meat objects to beat each level. So like this would in theory be one level, you beat it, you go to the next level, you beat that, blah, 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 that's it. Uh, you have to avoid obstacles, your limbs get weaker 
as you bump into things and you take damage. Um, so the limbs shrink a bit. Uh, there's still not really like abilities. You can only attack things with one arm. Obviously this animation is pretty rudimentary. Um, there's a few particle effects. I, I mean, I would say 20, 15, 15 to 20% done, maybe. It's got a lot of work ahead of it. But I'm just riding, I'm just vibing, you know? I'm not in a hurry. But I want it to be like a roguelike uh, where in between levels you get power-ups. Uh, and it'll change how the game plays, but I really want to get more of the gameplay set up before I start trying to do things like power-ups. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a ton a ton of work to do, but it's coming together. It's coming together a little bit at a time. All right, so I want to try to add a building object in here because the building poses a challenge because it's going to have multiple obstacles within itself. And I want to kind of see if what we did today will actually work with that. And so what we did today, what the whole task today was, was to get the um, the terrain to replenish uh, obstacles. So obstacles, when I destroy this house, and we come back around to that same house, it's back because we're not spawning in a new block, a new level block with this house on it. Instead, um, we're actually taking the same block. So if I, I can even show you a little bit, if we zoom out here, You see how there's like these blocks in the back? Those are blocks that are currently unloaded. That is to say, uh, they are not. So see how that one went there? They're behind the camera. They haven't spawned in yet into the main level. So we go back to the camera you can't see those that are behind us there. But when we come out here, they're back here. It is a trick. It is a trick. Exactly. Because when I had, and so when I had them spawning in, because before, instead of going behind the camera, they would just get deleted. And then we would spawn a new version of the same block but that was causing lag spikes and the game was slowing down every time it loaded in a new one. So by hiding these behind the camera, they're already loaded in and we don't have to worry about, you know, causing the game to get slower in order to spawn a new terrain block. But because of that, that meant that the objects that you can destroy, since in the game you can destroy stuff, the objects that you would destroy, since we were just taking the same thing and putting it back on there, they wouldn't be fresh. They would still stay destroyed. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that they would know, hey, I just got recycled. I just went back behind the camera and I came back. And so now I need to be given life again. I need to be healed as a building or whatever and so that's what we set up today was basically setting a flag that says i'm on a block that just got recycled i need to be healed and so now those things get healed when they come back in however however uh that isn't set up yet with the meat objects. So the things that you abduct, the cows, the humans, right? When you score those points and you abduct them, they're gone. And they don't come back. 
And so that's the other thing to set up replenishment for. But it's a little more complicated to get set up. And I'm not still, I mean, I kind of know how we're going to do it. Uh, but it needs to, it needs to function differently than the buildings. So I'm going to grab these things. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll work on that next week. I look forward to working on that next week. But see, now those aren't replenishing. That's a bit of a different problem to set up than the houses. Uh, and so it's a modular system as well. So I just created this tree and this tree also replenishes. And so in the little time I have left today, I would like to uh, set up a building that can also replenish itself, which is a bit more complicated than the house because the building is going to have multiple pieces nested within itself. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'm going to find out. So yeah, there's there's all kinds of things still to work on. Look at that debugger. 4,500 errors. It's, it's just, that's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing I gotta deal with. Not today. All right, so on the replenish obstacle one, I'm just gonna grab one of these empty blocks here. I'm gonna rename it. We're just gonna call it buildings. We're just gonna call it buildings. And let's add some buildings on there. Well, let's just add one building. Yeah, let's just start with one. Okay. Now I haven't actually set up the building to even be an obstacle. So like we don't even collide with it at all. It's just chilling. So let's do that. Now my idea for it, I actually haven't, oh God, wow. Dude, I didn't even set this up in Blender the correct way. Whoa, hold up, hold up. I have, to, I have to actually go into Blender and divide it into pieces in a way that I haven't yet. Whoops. Well, it looks like we're doing a little Blender today. Earlier, I said about 11% of the main show streams. Feature Blender. This is that 11%. So, I wanna open. Blender is your favorite? It's your favorite? I like it, I like it. And actually, I'm going to, yeah, save a copy. I'm going to call this building1-02, and I actually want to say underscore OO. I'm going to save a new version of it. You're in Blender, and is it Monday? I know, I know. I usually save them for the Monday member streams, which are exclusive to people who are paid patrons or paid YouTube members. But I'm not creating something today. I'm just kind of modifying it. So it's not really art that I'm doing today. I'm just kind of uh, reorganizing things. I like when you work on Blender because uh, it's visual enough that I can draw pictures and send them to you and it actually helps. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I can see that. I don't know if this task will... Uh, afford that luxury, but we'll see. So what I need to do is I need to, because like with the house, when we attack the house, the roof goes away, the windows go away, the walls go away. When we attack this, I need one like piece of this building to go away, another piece of it to go away. Right now, they're all connected as one big old thing. That's a problem. 
that's a bit of a problem. So let me open, nope, not that. Let me open the new one that was just created. I might, I don't know if I have actually time to do this, but I'll try. I will try. Okay, we wanna be on this one. And I wanna make sure I apply all the modifiers because right now there are probably some modifiers that are unapplied. Oh, there aren't. Okay, cool. Bold. It's gonna be tricky. Not really. Let's do x-ray, and then I'll make sure you guys can see what keys I'm pressing and stuff. Okay. So I'm thinking you literally have to tear off each part of this. You have to attack each part of this. Maybe some of them are joined together. Maybe not, you know? Maybe we'll do them each in their own sections. I guess it's better to look at it from the top. Yeah. Okay, so I wanna select all of these and I'm going to separate this selection into a new object, right? So now that stuff is its own object. Now in here, in these blocks, I'm going to want to select just these and also separate it into its own object. And then I want to group these together into one object. Object join. And we call that, we'll call that building part one. Whoops, I don't know what I just did, but it was wrong. Okay, there we go, building part one. So we got the balconies and the building all up in there in one nice piece. And then I just gotta do that with the rest of them. Now, it gets a little complicated too because I'd wanna split them themselves because if we break it, it's not like each one is gonna just die right away. I'd actually want it to be that the windows break out on each one. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. We're not, I'm not gonna make all the different frames. What I really want are just these different sections to be separate. Oh, did I miss a part of the foundation? Do we have like a foundation or something? Or I didn't select Oh, the trims and the windows. Okay, wait, we still got we still got a few things to add in here. We gotta do the trims and the windows. There's a lot of pieces in here. We ain't we ain't done yet. That ain't one piece yet. Okay. So we're gonna come into the trims. It's a bit of a tedious task. but I can handle it. So make sure X-Ray is on. Oh, we gotta go to edit mode. Make sure X-Ray is on. Gotta be a little careful with this. See, cause I grabbed the other building. Can we do linked? Is that, is that a thing here? Yeah, we can do linked. There we go. Mesh, separate, selection, and then the windows I also have to come into. Select all the windows, make sure I actually got them. You think I did. Mesh, separate, selection, and now we take the windows, the trims, and put it into building part one. Object, oh, we can't join it because it's not visible. Object, join. Okay. 
Windows trims object join. There we go. Gotta have some windows. We must. They're too important. So now let's see if that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> We're upside down. That's a trip right there. It's very strange that these don't have bottoms. <laughs> I never looked at the bottom of it. But these don't have any bottoms. It might just, honestly, you know, I think it's just the color is different. I don't think it's actually not there. It just like has a different color. It's funny. Okay, building part one, done. Let's go to the next one. Trims first, sure, why not? Get the trims, mesh, separate by selection. We should get into a workflow here. Come to the windows. Let me just select it. This is the hardest one because it's kind of hard to see them. Wow. I mean, I really can't even see them on this one. But I mean, they're there. Right? Are they there? They are. <laughs> Why can't I select them? I can select everything else. And then if I, oh wait. Am I in trims? Is that why? <laughs> I'm in trims. That was confusing. Oh, I was confused. Okay, we'll get into the workflow eventually. <laughs> uh, mesh separate by selection. Get out of edit mode. Come into the blocks. Edit mode. You should probably just be able to do linked. Oh, wow. I'm not actually in there. Edit mode over that. That's the blocks. And then trims... I'm just a little confused. Let me come back to the top. This is harder than I thought it would be. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's just a little, it's a little confusing. We'll get there. Separate by selection. Let's just blend them all together or join them all and see if, what this does. Windows, trims, blocks. Gotta get out of edit mode. Must be out of edit mode. Windows, trims, blocks. Object, join. Oh, forgot the balconies. Come into the balconies. Select those. Mesh, separate by selection. Get out of edit mode. Grab the balconies. Click on the blocks. Join it. And now we've got another building. All right. Building. Part two, okay. Hide that one, get to the next one. Sure, let's do this part first. Edit mode. Select that, make sure we don't have things we don't want. We sure do have things we don't want. I wonder if I can do a linked, kinda. Kinda, sorta, not really. Try again. Make sure we only select what we want. We missed a few things there. There we go. Looks like we got it all. Mesh, separate, selection. Go to object mode. Come to the balconies. Edit. Select the balcony. Mesh, separate by selection. Back to object mode. Go to trims. Edit mode. 
We'll do linked. Hover over it. Click linked for that. Mesh. Separate selection. Back to object mode. Go to windows. Edit mode. Select the windows. Mesh. Separate selection. And then I'm going to click on windows, trims, the new ones, blocks, balconies. Oh, I'm in edit mode. Gotta get out of there. And you have to reselect them all. Windows, trims, balconies. Let's join them all into block. Rename it. Building part three. Let's see if I did it right. Looks pretty good. Looks perfect. All right, another building down. Or another building part down. Just chipping away at it. So see why this is a bit of a complicated one? That's a lot of pieces. It's a lot of pieces. And then there still needs to be pieces within that, in theory. But I'm not going to worry about that now. All right. Oh my gosh. All right, edit this. We're on blocks. Select that, make sure I got it all. Looks like I do, I think. Probably. Mesh, separate, selection. Go back to object mode. Balconies, edit, select, mesh, separate. I could probably even just do like a shortcut for separate. I just don't know what it is off the top of my head. I mean, it's P and P, but like, I don't know, will it, will it be that obvious? Maybe. Get out of here. Trims. This one we can hover over, press L to select linked. Oh, we're in object mode. Trims, edit mode, hover over, select linked. Join us control J. That's true. Um, so if I do P, oh, here we go. If I press P, we get selection, bam, easy. Thank you. But unfortunately, I don't do that one as much, but I will. And I will remember that, maybe. Uh, okay. Let me just make sure if I get rid of trims and block. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, cool. So come to Windows. Go to edit mode. Windows are always hard to see. I feel like I have to go to 3D. I'm gonna do that one last. Are we done? Oh, wait. We did blocks, we did trims, we did balconies. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay, fine. So for the windows, I don't know why they don't look right otherwise. Can I, are those linked? Oh, those might be linked. We might be okay if we do it that way. I think they're just like panels. Yeah. Oh, wait. Wait. There's the door. Almost forgot the door. We'll select that. Oops. Shift. L. Oh, that didn't work like I thought it would. Oh, I see. We don't have to press shift. Gotcha. Okay, I think those are all those. Oh, nope. There's more windows over here. Don't miss those windows. Okay. Gotcha. I didn't really realize how the windows were. I forgot. I made it a long time ago. Not that long ago, but long enough. Long enough. Rogi says, it's taken me a while to start wanting to use keyboard shortcuts. I just started using them in Krita this week. Yeah, you you said that you don't like shortcuts because I guess they're like uncomfortable to your hands. I remember you saying that. All right, and then we do P, selection. Windows are separate. Go to object mode. Grab the windows, grab the trims, 
Grab the balconies, go to this, control J. Oh, it's not control J. Wait, it is control J. Oh, we have to be out here. Weird. I, I hate that. Like if I do things in here versus out here, it like behaves differently. Okay, so there's that. Looks like we got it all. Very nice. At least this is like not too complicated. In Blender, you like the really simple shortcuts, but nothing fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple control shift four, five, six, F5. Escape. Numpad. That's too much. Building part four. I'm very randomly naming these. I'll probably want to renumber them. If you're using your graphic tablet, forget it. Your arms are too short to even reach the keyboard while holding that thing. Use a keep. Oh, I s wait. Do you, do you? Oh, you mean like the on-screen keyboard? Okay. Or are you saying like an external keyboard? Oh. A graphics tablet. So you mean like it's connected to your computer? It's a separate device, and you so you have so you have a keyboard, a tablet, and the computer. And you have to hold the tablet and manage the keyboard, and that's like too much. Maybe that's what you're saying. I just I don't use everybody people people be telling me to use tablets. I'm like ugh, I gotta buy something. So I like I'm still kind of not hip to the tablets thing in terms of game development. Okay, I do get it. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, P, oh, we gotta be selected on the right thing. P and select. Graphic tablet is like a mouse. Right, right, right. I don't know, I got like brainwashed and I only call them Wacom tablets. I want to start calling them graphic tablets. But I remember like years and years and years ago when I first learned about them, I only had heard of a Wacom tablet. And I was like, oh yeah, Wacom tablets, like Kleenex, you know, or some product that we just call frigid, frigid air, fr refrigerator, you know? I'm just like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a Wacom tablet. No, it's a graphic tablet. Stop promoting companies, especially because they probably suck. The company, maybe the product. Uh, we're gonna select the trims. P in selection. Go back to object mode, come to the windows. Edit mode. Oh yeah, windows are a little tricky. It's okay. We know the trick now. Grab the panels, look for, or just look for the panels around. I don't know why it's not grabbing this one. Maybe it didn't know what I was hovering over. Uh oh, okay. Let's try it from this angle. Wait, why isn't it grab it? Grab that, click on this. Click on this. You still have yours from when you were a math teacher. Dang. Oh, faithful. I love seeing neatly organized things and you keep your workflow super clean. Thanks. I maybe know what you mean. I mean, I, get, I, I don't know. That's just kind of the way like my brain works. I think I know what you mean. Oh, there we go. When I got out of uh, x-ray, it let me choose it. Yeah, I have to like be very like this, then this, then this, then this, and this, and this, and this. <laughs> like, it. Otherwise, I lose track and my brain falls apart. It's an ADHD coping mechanism, frankly. Whoa, wait, what's this? Did I forget to include something? I think I did. I think we missed a wall somewhere. Ugh. <laughs> Wait, where did I miss it? Which one? The last one we did? I have to do some undoing, unfortunately. 
I keep it as clean as I can. I have to go back to before I joined these because I missed that one wall. And I am not about to try to reconnect it. Oh god, it was so long ago. That's a lot of undoing right there. It happens. Alright. Now I can actually do it. That's, that's low-key one of the harder ones, is to get all of the walls every time. So I do an x-ray on for this. I just need to double, triple check that I actually have them. Because if I, I have to undo it, because trying to rejoin them is, is a nightmare to me. And I'm not gonna engage in nightmarery this late at night. See, I missed a wall there. A little more obvious this time. Maybe I can, since that's linked, maybe I can do L. There we go. Got it. Oof. Okay, now the whole building has been selected. And I can do P, selection. It is separate. We must double check. It looks good. Object mode. Trims. Edit mode. L to select everything. Uh, press P to separate it. Go back to object mode. Come to the windows. Select all the, oh, go to edit mode. Come to the windows, go to edit mode. Hover over them and press L. And then, make, oop. Whoa, we're doing things. Okay, there we go. Moral support, yes, moral support. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Okay. It's so windy outside right now. It's like a freaky wind. Makes me uncomfortable. Okay. Got the window selected. I'm gonna do P, separate. Looks good. Go to the balconies, edit mode. Let's go above. X-ray. Oh, we gotta do an edit mode. X-ray, good. Select all these. P. Separate. Where's IAB with the Stormwatch? I know, right? That's what I was thinking. I guess it's just it's just some after storm stuff. Oh, it's just after storm stuff. It's it's fine. Uh balconies, trims. Oh, we're in edit mode. Come back to object mode. Balconies, trims windows blocks I can't do control J here oh I can do control J there okay that worked maybe I just didn't press control J last time okay this time I'm gonna make sure we got it all we did rename it to building four building part four building part Four. Okay. Now we can go on to building part five. Wonder if I can get away with linked. 
Oh shoot, I could have done linked all along. Why didn't I try that first? I don't know. You know why I didn't? I feel like linked sometimes doesn't work when I'm in x-ray mode. Right, or maybe no, no, it is missing things. So I could do linked a little bit. Then go to x-ray mode and select the rest of it. Maybe it's better for like picking up things we missed. All right, P, separate. And then let's just make sure that gets the whole thing. I don't think it does. We missed the whole back wall. That's why we double check. So get back in there. Go off of x-ray, press L. P, separate. Make sure we got it. I think we did. Yeah. Okay. Gotta be extra careful with the blocks. All right, and then let's go to balconies. That's an easy one. Make sure we're in edit mode. Select all this. P, separate by selection. Back to object mode. Come to the trims. Edit mode. Hover over the trims. Press L. That should be everything. P, separate by selection. Back to object mode. Come to the windows. Edit mode. Windows are a little special. Gotta find the panels. Get out of x-ray. What is that? Select similar? That looked cool. How did I do that? Shift G. Material area polygon sides. Whoa. Well, I don't need that, but that's, that, that seems cool. Uh, grab that. Grab that. Grab that. Make sure we get the door down here. I think that's all the windows. Looks like it. And then we're gonna do P, separate by selection. Is that everything? I think so. Go back to object mode, grab the windows, the trims, the balconies. Where's the blocks? Oh, I hid the blocks. We have to make the blocks visible, then we can join it. Unfortunately, since it wasn't visible when I first selected it, we have to unselect and do it again. Windows, trims, balconies, blocks, control J. See, control J, not always. Oh, cause I was doing right control J. That's why it wasn't working. Don't forget to check out live chat after the stream. Oh, okay, I won't, I won't. Yeah, I tend to like if if I don't feel like it's like immediately relevant to like what we're doing or something, I tend not to go check it. But I will. I will after. After I absolutely will. I promise. I promise. Here, I'll look right now. I'm distracted enough. I'll look right now. <laughs> I got that workflow in my head. I got that workflow in my head. Each step no problem. Whoa. What did you make? What is this? What is this? Uh, Discord is not interested in showing it. It looks cool. Whatever it is, looks cool. I guess it's supposed to animate. It is a magician clickbait GIF. Dude, this looks awesome. Whatever you're doing, it looks cool. Oh, I can play this one. No, it doesn't work. Well, I like where you're going with it. I like where you're going with it. All right. So this building, 
looks like it is set up. And so I will rename it building part four. Yeah, it looks cool, right? There's an animation to it as well. But I think uh, they're still working on that. Maybe that's why Edward was like, look at it after, not now. <laughs> All right, let's do, we got so many blocks left. Building part five. Oh, was that was, oh, you're right. Thank you. Oh, paying attention. Dang. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like how Blender is just like, oh, I'll just name it something else. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I miss that. Obviously. All right. On the blocks here. Try to select these. It's a little tricky. To make sure I got it all. Looks like I'm missing a wall over here. Make sure I grab that too. Looks good. Eagle eye. <laughs> the eagle emoji is wild. It's kind of beautiful. I was like, is that a, what is that? I don't know what that was. Like a statue or something. Okay. Separate it. And go back to object mode, double, triple check. Looks good. Come to trims, edit mode, L over that, press P, selection. Looks good. Come to windows, edit mode, windows, we gotta get a little close. Make sure we're in edit mode. Get out of x-ray. I think there's only that one. It's a little simpler. Press P, separate, and then balconies. Edit mode, we'll go on top for that. X-ray, no, oh, edit mode. Which one are we doing? This one? I forgot. Yes, select all these. P, separate, get the balconies the windows, the trims. Oh, gotta get out of edit mode. Go into object mode, reselect them. Windows, trims, balconies, blocks. Control J, left control J. And then see if we got it. It appears that we did. I will probably need to renumber these, but that's okay. For now, we're just calling it part six. All right, continuing on, let's grab this one. Uh, we're in edit mode on the blocks. I'll try to select them like this. It looks pretty good. Gonna have to double check though. Make sure I didn't miss the back one. I don't think I did. Nope, first try. Okay, P. Separate selection, double, triple check, looks good. Get to object mode, go to the trims, get into edit mode. Select the trims with L, P, separate the selection, get out of there, I'm not even gonna check it. Go to windows, edit mode. We wanna get out of x-ray, select those windows, select these windows and select these windows. P, separate, go to balconies, edit. Oh, now we're in edit. Go above, x-ray, select these, P, separate. That was a fast one. Let's see if I did it right. Balconies, windows, trims. We're in object mode. Select the blocks last, control J. See if we did it. Yeah, that one was fast. I love getting into the flow. Building part 07. 
I like how I didn't do all the rote script adding that I could have also gotten into a flow of. Instead, I decided to do this. That's okay. This is important. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Some kind of roteness. Right, I get a trophy. I get a trophy for how quickly I did that one. Let's see if I can keep up. Was that my peak? Was that the best that I'm gonna ever do? We'll find out. So we'll come to the blocks, edit mode, select all these, make sure we got it. This one was pretty easy. It's separated pretty far. Separate it. Come see if it's all gone. Looks like it is. Very nice. Let's go to Windows, edit those. Get out of X-Ray. Select those windows. Select these windows. And select these windows. Good, good, good. P, separate. Get out of here. Let's go on top. Come to the balconies. Edit, X-Ray, select those. P, separate. Forgot to do the trims. Edit mode, select those, P, separate. Let's just take a leap of faith and try to combine them. Object mode, windows, trims, balconies, blocks. Uh, control J. Is it all gone? <laughs> it's all gone, baby. That was pretty fast, too. Building. Part. Eight. Two more left. Ten pieces. Dang, it's a big old building. It to me, it's it's pretty unreasonable to expect the player to like break ten pieces. So you know, maybe we could do some bundling, especially of the little ones, or. The player does have to break 10 pieces, and that's part of the challenge of this area. To be fair, the player will be killing innocent people if they break it off. Which kind of raises a question of, like, why I put this much effort into something the player shouldn't be doing anyway. That's a question to answer when the prototype is more playable and we can figure it out. Maybe adjacent buildings take 50% damage. That doesn't sound hard to figure out. <laughs> I'm kidding, that sounds hard. Um, true though, true though. That's actually a really good idea. That's actually a really, really good idea. I like that idea. Especially like when you totally, what if like when you totally destroy one section, <laughs> like in theory, the like particle explosion hurts the other ones. Actually, that you know, there's something there. There's something there. That's actually a really, really, really good idea. I almost want to write it down. It's so good. We'll probably remember, right? All right, last two. Into the blocks, easy to select. Make sure we're in x-ray we are. Separate it. Still double check. Looks like it's good. Come to the trims. Make sure we're in edit mode. We're not in the right thing, maybe. Object mode, click on the trims, then go into edit mode. Hold over, press L, press P, separate it. Come to the windows. Let's do the balconies since we're already above. Edit mode, X-ray. Oops, we're in object mode. Edit mode, X-ray, select these. P, separate, back to object mode. Now do the windows. I think we only have one set here. Whoops, that's the knife. Let's try that again. Edit mode. Oh, because we're in x-ray. I forget it won't select the windows if I'm in x-ray. P, separate. Okay. Take a leap of faith and let's just combine them. Windows, trims, balconies, blocks. Control J. I said control J. All right, that's fine. We'll just do it again. I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable. <laughs> All 
All right. Oh, it did do it. It just took a second. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was doing it and I was bugging. I don't know. We got it. We're good. Rename it to building part 09. This is a nice thing to do, though. It's a nice cooldown activity after everything we've done today. It's not a lot of brain power. I enjoy it. All right, come in here. We can just select everything, but let's make sure we're on x-ray. I guess I don't need to separate it at this point. I'm going to do it anyway. It seems really weird that I'm separating it. But like, what if there's like a vertices or some vertex? <laughs> what if there's a vertex or some vertices that I missed along the way that I didn't even realize I missed? I wouldn't want those to be in there. So we're going to be a little ridiculous. And even on the last one, I'm going to separate each one. Ooh, I didn't, I didn't even have to talk that one out. Got so in the habit. Oh, look, there they are. Look, there's the vertices. I knew there would be some. Look at all these vertices. What are they doing? I make it look so easy. I guess I just been having a lot of practice. What the heck are these doing here? Do these matter? They like make the outline of the building. We're just gonna assume that these don't matter. Thanks Gab. Yeah, so I, I work in Blender. I've been working on Blender as long as I've been working in Godot. We're actually a little bit less long, but not much. I literally do not know how this keeps happening. What, these? This, so this, you know, I was a little less learned when I made these. So, you know, it could be, it doesn't matter. It kind of worries me a little bit. You know, I'm gonna investigate that, but let's just, let's finish this first and then investigate it. Uh, so we're on Windows, edit the Windows. We can just, I'm not gonna select everything. We're gonna do these. But yeah, so I've been doing Blender eight hours a week for six months. And this is where I'm at. Now also, I've had to help from people in the chat. People in the chat have been helping the crap out of me. And so that helps me learn a lot too. Members in chat. I've been very lucky. Okay, control J, all that's together. I don't think you need to separate the last one. Disagree. So I did go over that. No, 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 Rogi, look. Look, these verts just like floating around. So that's why I'm separating each one because I don't trust that there aren't things floating around. And so I'm making sure to separate it so that way it doesn't have extra stuff. Yeah, that's how they got found. So that's why, just to like make sure we've got these nice and separated. Actually, I don't even think it's letting me separate them. Wow. I don't think it even let me, oh, it did. I just joined it. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, what? There's no separates. There are. Okay, so this is building part 10. So then, this is great, but I need to investigate real quick. Just make sure we didn't compromise the structural integrity of any of anything. So like, which building were these on? Oh, so this might be old stuff. Cause looking at it, yeah, oh, look how obvious it is now. It's all the things that were deleted. So it's definitely the balconies, I think. Yeah, it's the balconies, specifically. And then there must have been some of those that I had removed and it just left behind the vertices. And in fact, if we come to balconies, there it is. It all goes away. 
So I'm gonna say that this is not important. They look like ants. Oh, they do. It's kind of cute. But it's kind of interesting just to see like what got left behind. I'm gonna leave all these in here because I'm meticulous and nobody needs that, but I did it anyway. So I'm gonna add a no import flag to the end of all of these, which means Godot won't import any of these in. Just in case I'm like, why is something being weird? I can come back in here and be like, oh, there was a vert that I left in there. I don't know. Why not? I'm putting it in there. Sorry. All right. So now we can bring all of these back. And we have 10 parts independent of each other of this building that we did not have before. My goodness. I think I would like to renumber them to make sense. I think that'd be nice. Thank you, Rogi. Thank you. I don't remember which is like, quote unquote, the front. I guess this is the front. Yeah, that looks right. So it looks like I've completely done this backwards. I want to do left to right, front to back. So we're gonna say this one is one. I added an extra zero for now, just so they don't overlap. Next week is the last week of workshops. Wow, you're almost done with your school. What the heck? What the heck? This one is two. That's amazing. Then it'll be half a week of tutoring, then you're free. You're free! The journey comes to an end. What an epic journey it's been, Rogi. Grad school. Not what you expected, but maybe what you needed. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, zero, zero, 004. This one. Is zero zero five. Let's look to the other side. Whoa. Wait, which one is one? That one is one. I don't know. I guess I want it. I don't even know. Oh, I want it to snake. Or, like, do I want it to snake? Oh gosh. I think I do. I think I want it to snake. I think that makes more sense to me somehow. So this one becomes six. We actually weren't that far off on a lot of this numbering. That one was six. This one is seven. This is 97. This one is eight. This one is nine. Which makes this one 10. And then I'm going to renumber them because I don't actually want it to have two leading zeros. It's just not what I want. Okay. How much for tutoring? Oh, look at that, Rogi. You're already getting business. What? Rogi was studying to be a teacher, but became disillusioned with the teaching system. And with some of the complexities of getting paid. See, you don't need no fancy university gig. The hyper game dev community is lining up. They're ready to learn from you. And your skills are evident. All right. So I'm going to save this. We're going to come to Godot. It should be importing. I noticed that it's not. Oh, <laughs> Godot is taking a second to figure it out. There it is. 25 bucks an hour where you work. But actual rates for one-on-one -on -one tutoring is at least 50 an hour for someone with a math BA. Yes, know your worth. 
My gosh, you were right there with that. So too much, I got it. <laughs> hey, Rogi, you demand what you're worth. Okay, so this is the new building. So I need to create a new scene for that building. There it is. I don't expect I'll be doing much tutoring for a while. Yeah. So there we got all the buildings in here. It looks okay. It looks fine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I made a mistake. You see my mistake? Look. There's a trim right there. That's in the wrong section. Oh no! Is that the only mistake? Dang. I don't even know how that happened. How does that happen? See that floating trim right there? It's, it's from the wrong building. Wow. So that's on... I don't think there's any others, but I don't really have a reason to believe that other than how could there be? Surely I didn't make that mistake twice. It's actually quite a tedious thing to test for, if you think about it. I kind of got lucky that I saw it right away. Let's assume that's the only one. So building part A is going to be missing a trim on the top. And now I have to find a way to rejoin it. And it is incorrectly on building three. Building eight. Also, what Godot, what's up with not putting them in numerical order? What is that? Why would you do that? Building three has building eight's trim. Actually, it looks like an extra. I actually think this isn't a big deal because it looks like it's just an extra one. Ooh, that's fixable. Let's get into here. I think we just have to get rid of it. Maybe, if I'm lucky. Oh no, it is missing. <laughs> I do have to rejoin it with the other one. All right, separate it from here. Join it in with building eight. Control J, if it wouldn't mind. Oh, we gotta go to object mode, not edit mode. Put this into there. Control J, oop! Oh, that would have been a disaster if that went through. Control J is iffy. I gotta tell you what. All right, join it. Now it's gonna be fine, but technically, it's not actually attached. Whereas like, look at this other one, this is attached. But now this trim is just floating. Like, how would I even do that? You saw it happening and you wasn't sure I would catch it? Oh, what, the joining? How do I? Oh, merge by distance? Isn't it merge by distance? That's what I do, right? What if I select all and merge by distance? Did that fix it? Oh, it did! Wait, why did it remove so many vertices? That seems bad, right? What if I just click on that and merge by distance? Remove zero vertices. Does it work? does not.
Removed 316. Let's produce he's good. Yeah, I guess I guess it is. You know, then I'm like, well, should I come into here and merge by distance? Remove 200 vertices. Oh my god. Removed 180 vertices. Yeah, I guess there's nothing wrong with this. Oh, you know what's happening? It's merging. No, this isn't good because now they're not linked anymore, right? So that's gonna make this a lot harder, right? Yeah, so it's mer- we d I don't want this. No, this is bad because I'm gonna want to separate these later into pieces for destructibility's sake. So no, 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 no. This is very wrong. Very, very, very wrong. So I need to keep undoing until that's separated. Do you know what I mean? They have to stay separate. So what I need to say, oh, you know what I should do? Do linked, there, just link it. And then we merge those by distance remove four vertices perfect that makes a lot more sense now it's attached and we're in much better shape that's what we want if you go to edit mode you can merge vertices one by one screw that this will work okay we're in a better we're in better shape now Woo! that was that was a scary moment okay great save it yeah, so I need to make sure these pieces are separate so that way I can take out the windows and hide the windows at some point down the line. Not today, mind you, but at some point. Honestly, I'm clocking overtime right now. But I'm glad I stuck around to catch that. And so let me at least try to set this building up. Oh my god. This is gonna be hard. Every- all ten of these. Why are they out of order? I despise that. All ten- like look, I can't even reorder it. All ten of these. That is infuriating. <laughs> these are not in numerical order. Talent doesn't rest. <laughs> <clears throat> It really should, though. <laughs> it's good to be alive eating quinoa in overtime. <laughs> that's my motto. That's what they'll put. That's what they'll put on my gravestone. That's my epitaph. She was alive eating quinoa in overtime until she wasn't alive. Um. Look at that. Why would it do this? Why would you do that? It's like it has a mind of its own. Maybe it's like sorting it by size or something. I don't know. I don't care, but it's bad and it's wrong. So. If I want these each to be their own obstacle, really, I just need to add 10 obstacles. That seems nuts. 10 obstacles? 10. 10. 10 obstacles. Oh, oh my god. And, and, and they just have to all be, like, mixed in. I mean, I guess they don't have to. I guess I could. Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, we're gonna do it, believe it or not, we're gonna do it. So it needs to have an obstacle. The obstacle needs a collision. Oh my god. Obstacle needs a collision. It needs hit points. So you have to add a hit point scene in here. Wow. It has to be a child of the obstacle. Uh, the hit points needs a animation player in it called Animation Degrade. That's an animation tree. Close, close. Animation player. 
called Animation Degrade. And um, something something. You're still streaming and alive! Talented and eating quinoa and blend your bonus round. <laughs> That's what they say! Talented and eating quinoa! That's what they <laughs> Wow, you guys like really know me. You like really get me. Um Yeah, so I did do a blender bonus round. Uh and and now I'm trying to add an I'm trying to add basically I want the obstacle, I want every part of this building to be a separate obstacle. And um, and that's that. That's why I was attracted to doing this, because it's like something that doesn't exist yet. And I wanted to see if the terrain obstacle replenishing system we set up today would work for something with multiple obstacles built into it. Probably not, but like maybe. I think we set up the for loop accordingly, probably. Uh, and so, but then I also have to set up this building to have 10 obstacles on it, which it doesn't. And so that's fun. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I guess there's some things, I, so I'm gonna duplicate this multiple times, of course. Uh, I guess I'll make these visible. They're all gonna have their own set of hit points. Which one even, which one are we even doing it for? This one? I didn't know. So like they each are gonna need their own hit points, their own arrow, which by the way, the arrow we're gonna change anyway. I'll probably wanna make a marker or something, honestly. Gosh, that's a whole thing. That's a whole dang thing. But sort of what we have here is not just like testing, like, like this debug area that I'm working in. It's like an area for basically rebuilding all the obstacles is kind of like what we're doing is I'm doing the, the process of rebuilding every obstacle and getting them all caught up to each other, which is, which is good. It's good. Uh, oh, the navigation. Oh God. Right. So the helicopters can go around it. Frick's sake. For frick's sake. I mean, I I, th I feel like that's gonna be very bad if we do too many. The we it get it gets one navigation obstacle, and the and the helicopter is just gonna go around it, even if half of the building is missing. That's just gonna have to be okay. But we're not crossing that bridge today. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna paste the arrow in there, which is gonna eventually be replaced with like a marker. But for now, for now, we're keeping it as an arrow. That is a task for another day. There's the arrow. I feel like the numbers should be above the arrow. Okay. And then we need to add collisions into the obstacle or nothing's gonna work. So that's fun. Let's do that. They're all gonna have different collision shapes. Luckily, it's only gonna be one box, so that's not complicated. So let's make that. I'm not bitter about it. I'm not. But like, you know, some tasks, my goal is to, ha I, want it, I want it to be the thing, more so than I wanna have to do what makes it become the thing. Sometimes what makes it become the thing is kind of fun. Not sure I believe this falls into that category. It's not bad. It could be worse. Okay. So we want this to be the size of that building piece. It's, it's a lot better that it's just like a rectangle, like that, or a, you know, a rectangular prism. That makes it a lot more tolerable. There might, if these overlap, there might be a point where like the player could attack two at one time. I'm not sure how that would work, but it's possible. And I don't think I care. We're gonna say that's just fine. Okay, that box looks good enough for me. We are not gonna be exacting with all of these. Although I think it needs to come down a bit further. Okay, good, good, good. Box, easy. 
Alright, so that should be everything that it needs. Uh, I'm gonna double check now. Well, we gotta save this whole building scene. But I'm gonna double check now to make sure we're not getting errors. Because once I duplicate this obstacle multiple times, if there's an error, it could be any 10 of them. We want to make sure that this one that I'm duplicating is is okay. Uh, this is building 01. Do we do dashes up in here? We do 02 underscore 00. That's, that's the name, baby. Okay. That's been saved. So I need to put one in here to check to see if we get any errors. So let's do that. Add a building on in. Oh wait, we made us. We made a new thing for it. There, right there. Get rid of the old building. Old building is out. New building is in, baby. You can see we got one number up there and an arrow. All right, let's see if we get errors. It's okay if we do. Good thing we can't caught it now. I see no error. And in fact, we should already be able to bump into... Oh, we probably won't bump into it, but it should hurt us. Yeah, it hurts us. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Good, good, good. I'm gonna push this building back a bit. You'd think it though has a snapping of collision box to geometry, just curious. It does, it does. And so I'm just trying to use the most lightweight collision possible, which is creating... Uh, a box collision it just it's like cheaper and especially since there's 10 of them that I'm about to create and then there's gonna be tons of buildings in like one area I want to use the cheapest possible collision but there is a way to generate collision around it it's just gonna be a more expensive uh, collision mesh if I do it that way and I want to avoid that expense but it does, it does have something like that. Anyway, it doesn't like snap to it, but it will, it will create it on there. Um, there might be like a plugin that does something like that, but I hate plugins, so <laughs> I'm very biased against plugins. Okay, so now that our obstacle looks good, I am going to, I should, I should rename it. We're gonna say this, this we need to correspond it to a building. So part ten. I'm gonna say obstacle 10. Duplicate this one. Of course, Godot calls it 11. That's fine, who cares? We're gonna move it down here. This will be obstacle one, all right? So now I have to adjust all of the positions. So the hit points, Wherever one is, where's one? One is on like gonna be like on the other side of it because it decided not to put them in order, numerical order. I don't know why it did that, but it did. Okay, that's building part one. So that means I need to take this damage label. We gotta move it far. And what, I'm gonna put it like all the way down here. Yeah, I guess I am, I guess I am. The arrow, this will eventually become a marker. For now, that'll be fine. And then we would want to, in theory, I, I could skimp on this and just do this some other time. But here I am doing it. Oh, 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 oh. Be careful. We have to make it a unique shape. Ooh, that was close. That was close. Make it unique or else it's going to modify the other one too. That was a close one. I almost missed that. Okay. Good enough for me. And that's that. And that wasn't too bad. All right. Duplicate it. Move it down. You want me to do nine next? That sounds good to me. Obstacle nine. <laughs> And <laughs> Rogi, you got in there too late. <laughs> Luckily, I caught it. Luckily, I caught it. But you know, if I hadn't noticed it by now, you would have been right on time because I would have been, I would have had to go back and you would have saved me. So thank you. Thank you for being willing to do it. I know it's getting late for you. So <laughs> thanks for sticking it out. Be willing to help me. It means the world.
Um, what do I, what kind of credit do I even do for that? Second pair of eyes? <laughs> like, I, that really isn't something I don't know people have been doing until you came through again. Backup? Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, right. That's kind of what I'm thinking, too. Second pair of eyes. I kind of like that. I don't know. Although pair of eyes is kind of presumptive about people's eyes. Let's say... I don't even know what to call it. We'll just say... Guardian Angel. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, name it Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye! <laughs> Eagle Eye! But then we still... Okay, Eagle, Eagle Eye. Eagle... All right, we'll call it Eagle Eyes. It's your category now, it's, so you get to name it. You get to name it. Unless I change my mind about it. But for now, that'll do. Brogigon, you got it. Okay. So this collision shape, we actually don't need to make this one unique, which is nice. I'm sure that will be perfectly confusing if I ever need to modify it. I wish it were more obvious if something was unique or not. It's a little bit if you know where to look, but I, I really wish it jumped out and yelled at you more. Like, hey, I'm a shared asset, just so you know. I would really appreciate that. I should probably make it stick out further, like where the balcony is. Eh. Another time. Okay, hit point damage label. Bring that over here. It's not gonna be visible at all. <laughs> it's gonna be like under the, it, it doesn't matter, who cares. Good enough. Get the arrow, is gonna become a marker in good time. Kai guy says, in Okul Yokel Urkel voice. Oh, I know what you're saying. Like, like Goofy, like, like the Disney character Goofy. Gorsh, making games ain't easy. A lot of time and effort, I salute you. <laughs> well, I don't think, I don't think that's what Goofy sounds like. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Kai Guy. Yeah, it does take a lot of time and effort. It does, it really does. It really, really, really does. I, I love that about it, I guess. <laughs> I, I do, I do, I do. I, I'm, I can't wait to be proud. I mean, I am proud, but I can't wait to like, have a game, especially, to be proud of. I'm very excited about that. Man, I'm getting burned out. Oh man, just thinking of doing all the rest of these right now. Let's do this. I'm gonna do a sh another short one since it kind of already has short qualities, this particular one. This would be for 07. I'm getting a little burned out, guys. I'm working overtime. I got up early today. But I can't stop in the middle of a task. What am I gonna stop in the middle of a task? I mean, maybe, maybe. Maybe I will. Uh, move the collision shape over. I do need to make it unique, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Godot. I know, I know you wanna blend it all together. I know. Thank you. Thank you, Rogi. Thank you. Don't mind me, just in a goofy mood. Yeah, you're gonna see it come together. No, I appreciate it, Kai Guy. It's good vibes. It's good vibes. I will mind you. I 
I don't think I have the stamina to finish this entire building. I feel like I want to pick this up next week. But what I will do is I will, because really the only, the test I wanted to run is to see if it would be able to handle multiple obstacles. We have multiple obstacles. I don't need 10, right? I only need a few to run that test. So I've already kind of established what this, how this is supposed to go together. So, you know, if I'm gonna follow that template for next week, it'll already be there for me. So I say we, I'm, I'm gonna call it, not yet, but momentarily. Uh, call setting up all of the obstacles on all 10 of these and instead give it a test. So many things that I'm honestly surprised you didn't end early. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I woke, up, I woke up early today as well. I don't know. I don't know. There was even a tornado threat for a moment. I don't know. I just love working on this game. The more I work on it, the more I want to work on it. I don't know. It is what it is. I have to rein myself in with these live streams twice a week, eight to 10 hours. If I don't put that cap on myself, I would work constantly until I was dead. <laughs> uh, hyper fixation is one hell of a thing. So cool. So now these are on here. Now, if I want to test their like behavior, and stuff. Um, well, it's gonna be a little hard. Well, okay, so let's, let's. I forgot to set hit points. How many hit points do each of these have? I don't know. What does the house have, five? They each give five. Give them each five. Let's come to this obstacle, give it five hit points. Each of these obstacles, give them five hit points. Oops, what did I just do? Uh, Give them all five hit points. We want them to stop the player when you run into them. We do each one. Five, 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 five. Oh, I think I can select them all at once. And then damage or slow down amount. We want it to fully stop the player when they run into it, right? Hey, future. I'm feeling a little upset because I was trying to do something on my own in Godot using documentation, but I couldn't do it. Oh, I know that feeling. Dude, oh, future, I know that feeling. Oh, I gotta cheers you with a snack to that feeling. Oh my gosh. I know that feeling. 50 health in total, wow. That's 50 clicks. It's unreasonable. It's just unreasonable. I went to ChatGPT and told them about the problem that was in the code and found the solution in the end. No, that is not cheating. Not at all. Hell no. Think of it this way. Would it be cheating if you came and asked the hyper game dev community for help? Would it be cheating if you went on Reddit and you made a post and said, how do I do this? Would it be cheating if you found a tutorial that told you what to do? To me, Getting ChatGPT to help you is the same as any of those in terms of karma, you know? Exactly the same. It's just a different modality to try to get to the answer. Heck no, Future. That is, that is what somebody who is using their resources does. That is a resourceful person's thing to do. You're resourceful. You did a good thing. I'm the same way because I have a, a project that I work on off stream uh, just for fun. And I am often in that situation where I'm trying to figure out documentation. I'm just like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I go to ChatGPT and, and I try and ChatGPT tries. Sometimes it can help me, sometimes it doesn't. First is trying to figure it out, figure out where to begin next time. Start in the middle of a task. Whoa. Whoa, I don't even know what that's talking about. Definitely not cheating though. Frustration is completely understandable. Frustration is completely understandable. Oh, were you talking about something else? I see, Kai Kai. Sorry, I missed your first message. I'll check it out in a second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you're, you're, and honestly, it's all learning. Because whether you get it from ChatGPT, from a friend, from a tutorial, you know, you're trying to solve a problem. You set the problem and you 
twisted your brain around to try to figure out how to solve it. And then you found a solution and you implemented it. That was all learning. That process of setting the pr problem, trying to solve the problem, and then making the problem go away. All of that is connecting things in your brain that's getting you to the point of next time, you'll be like, oh yeah, that thing ChatGPT did. Or you can go back to your own code and grab it a couple times and then eventually you'll remember. So that's all learning. It's all learning. You did an awesome job, but that feeling is understandable. I relate to it. Honestly, you know what I think is even one of the more valuable like learning points? That frustration that you felt. And instead of giving up, or moving on or doing something else. And that's different from taking a break. But instead of just completely letting it go and never coming back to it, you, you persevered in the face of that frustration. And you let that frustration, you let yourself conquer that frustration. And, and to me, that, that is probably one of the biggest triumphs there. So well done, amazing work. And thanks for telling me about it because I'm going to remember that when I'm having the same issue. Very relatable. Kai Guy says, I've read one mind hack is actually to leave a task undone, then can be easier and motivating to pick it up next time. True, 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 true. Right, that's what I mean. Like, it's taking a break is one thing. You know, abandoning something forever and never going back to it, not as good. I mean, it's fine. Like, whatever. We do what we do. We have to be kind to ourselves. But. I, I agree with that, that or I, I can see how that would be true. Um, you may work on it unconsciously as you sleep or rest. Yeah, for sure. Dude, I like, I dream about problem solving and sometimes I'm not sure if it's healthy. <laughs> but no, that's true. We're just trying to figure out where to begin next time and start in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree, I agree, I totally agree. And, and, and thank you for saying it because sometimes it's, sometimes it's, easy to forget. Yeah, taking a break, totally cool, totally healthy, and maybe even uh, better. Uh, okay, what am I doing? Oh, right, so we set their health, 5 HP. Uh, I'm just gonna hide the label and the arrow for now. Label and the arrow, hide the label and the arrow. I'm sure this isn't gonna work. It, no, I'm not sure it isn't gonna work. I, I'm, I'm genuinely not sure if it's gonna work or not, but I have some suspicions. So we should have some interactivity here of some kind. Now it's not hiding or getting deleted, uh, but let's see what happens. I'm gonna load a level. There's our building, so ominous. My gosh. All right, this got five hit points. We run into it. Now the test here is that the test that we're doing. Oh, look, because the origin is in the center, the hand goes off to the side instead of, oh, that's a whole problem to figure out. I know what we do for that. We got to move the obstacle point over, I think, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> that's something to solve. Um, so, so here's the test. When this building goes past the player and gets recycled, these hit points need to be returned. That's the test. Uh, so if I destroy this one, we move forward, that collision is gone. I'm gonna destroy this too. So, so when this building comes around again, is it replenished? Oh, no, it's not. Kinda, one of them was. One of the obstacles was replenished. Interestingly, maybe. No, it wasn't replenished. So we did not set up, set it up to be able to replenish on multiple obstacles. That just didn't, that just didn't happen. That just didn't happen. Angie Carlet, what the what? Welcome, Angie! I will be out of nowhere and not part of the conversation, but thanks to Pierogi, I found you again! Ah, welcome, Angie! Oh my gosh! How are you? I was wondering what you're up to. Angie, y'all. Angie, y'all, is someone who uh, streams... I don't know if they stream on YouTube, but I know that they stream on Twitch. And when I was streaming on Twitch, 
uh, we would raid each other. You know, it's a thing on Twitch. It's Twitch. It's some Twitch crap. Um, but, you know, we were supportive of each other on Twitch. And, and, and it's good to see you here, Angie. Welcome. Thanks for stopping in. I am all up on YouTube. I'm all up on YouTube. I switched. I switched. I did like a subathon on Twitch where I stayed up as long as people kept subbing to the YouTube. I, I switched. I said, I'm going to YouTube. Uh, so yeah, I, I knew I would, I knew I wouldn't catch everybody uh, during that subathon, but uh, I'm glad that at least, at least Rogi knew, so Rogi could let you know, and now you're here. Welcome back, good to see you. I hope you've been doing well. I hope you've been doing well. Much love, right back at you. Uh, so, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I, I Look, I'm not gonna try to fix this tonight. Unless it's really oh, oh 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 guys, this might be fixable. Hold on, uh, I forgot to add the terrain object uh, script to uh, the the top level. I forgot to do that. There's no script on here. That is a key component of this working. So hold on. It may not not work yet. <laughs> uh, so I gotta come to terrain. We were friends and still are. I'll watch you here now. Yeah, yay! We were friends and we still are. I know it. I know it. Yay! I appreciate you, Angie. It's really good to see you. I need to check in with your streams. Are you still streaming? Are you still streaming? I haven't, I, I pretty much, I like abandoned Twitch in so many ways, um, but I do, I do go there now and then if I know somebody is there, but uh, like, like, you know, really what I do is if I see someone streaming on YouTube, I'm like, I wonder if they're multi-streaming, and then I go check to see if they're on Twitch, and then I'm, now I'm on Twitch, but that's, that's pretty much it, but if you're there, I'll, I'll make sure I drop in. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put block object on there, load it, that's it. Okay, now's the real test, that was the fake test. Well, it's, 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 the test reminded me that I need to remember to add that onto things. So we're gonna come back to this, come up here, try it again. Again, the test is that the hit points on these buildings will replenish and I'll collide with it again after we destroy it right now. So that one got destroyed, and we destroyed that one too. Okay, let's see if it replenishes when the next one comes through. Oh gosh. Oh, no replenish. Oh, oh, no replenish. Okay, all right, okay, it's totally fine. Totally fine. That's okay. I, you know, I wasn't kind of hoping that it would. Uh, so the way that it works is this obstacle, or the hit points, when it takes damage, it's going to check if its owner has an update reset status signal, and it's going to emit update reset status with itself on there. And then its owner... which would be this that we just added, is going to receive the damaged part on update reset status. Needs reset will be true, and it's gonna append damage part to this array. It kinda should work. And if it, oh, I wonder if it's here that it's not working. Because it's setting it to false That's probably where it's not working. It's setting it to false before the array has fully been looped through. So I think we need to say until the array, until everything on the array has been replenished, don't set it to false. So we would need to get the size of the array and have a counter that counts or something like that, maybe. I think that's why it might not work. So that's, that that might mean that one obstacle on there is doing it correctly. Which I kind of want to test. 
I wonder if I'm correct or if I'm just like wrong. The only way I could test that would be if I removed some of those obstacles that we added. But you know, it could just be like a temporary thing. Rogi says, I saw Angie stream the other day. I don't catch their streams as much this year because I was so busy. Oh, cool, got it, got it. I restarted t the day Pierogi stumbled on my stream. You restarted today, what? Or the day that it, well, it did happen, I see. The other day, wow. Oh, you were taking a break, okay. You've been sick, oh, feel better, feel better, no. Sickness is scary. Please feel better. I have played games made on the tool you are using. Nice. I still don't understand what you are doing, but still impressed. Yay! I love that you've played games on, that are made in Godot. That's cool. What games? You don't have to tell me now. Right. Oh, yeah. So, Angie, dude, I can't believe I almost forgot. Angie uh, makes a point of playing indie games. Like, like indie games. Like games by people that they could in theory, talk to or something. Um, and... Wow! So of course you would have played games made in Godot. That's really cool! Neat! I'm trying. I'm trying. For the last six months, I've been trying to learn it. You can break all of them and see if any of them replenish. Right. Well, that's the thing, is apparently it's really hard to break, break all of them because there's so many of them. There's so many of them. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of them except for the two that are easy to access. Um, which are which ones? <laughs> uh, I guess it's, or is it those two? Which ones, which two is it? I don't remember. Or at least like deactivate them or something. Take their scripts away. Revoke their privileges. Okay, it's these two I think. So then for the other ones, I mean, I'd really rather not like straight up delete it, but whatever, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll just delete it. It's fine. So let me make sure I know which two it is. Part one and part 10. So not part nine or part seven. They're just on the other side. I'm like, why aren't they disappearing? Okay, they are. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these. Something you keep doing, Andy, for the win. I love that. I love that about your streams, Angie. That is, I wish more creators did that, but why wish when we have Angie? Okay, that's awesome. Yes, yes, I love that. So important, like, gosh, indie devs are so hungry for people to come through, be playing their games. It's such a great thing that you do that. And you don't do it, you, you do it You do it because you want to, like I know, but still, it's, that's really cool. All right, breaking them both down. They're both at zero. Let's see if one comes back. Ooh. <laughs> so, you know, I don't actually know what's wrong. And that, y'all, has to be okay. That just has to be okay. Tonight ain't the night, today ain't the day. Multi-obstacle uh, breakdowns, it ain't happening today. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay, because we've got replenishing happening on the houses. These houses replenish so well. The fences replenish, the tree replenishes, like, that is a huge, huge uh, development. I was kind of pushing it an extra two hours to, <laughs> to see if I could if I could get more out of it. But that's all right. We've got a nice debug area set up. Um, I'm so proud of the work today. So thankful to Thought T for really like an Albesca and Perogigon and Dragonblade for just helping me through so many of the coding challenges today. I really appreciate it. And everyone else too for uh, being, cheering me on. Gab Games, thank you guys. It means the world. Uh, Edward, all of y'all, thank you truly. Uh, today was a good progress, but tomorrow, 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 will be progressing in a different way. Because every Friday on this channel, we do 
One hour game jams. Yeah. Yeah, we try to make games in literally a single hour. Uh, I gotta give love to all these wonderful patrons who support the channel on patreon.com slash hypergamedev. Uh, you can actually join the Patreon for free and you will get a newsletter and a live stream in your inbox. You won't get in your email inbox. You will not get the eight it's a 10 hour live stream I do every Monday, which is exclusive to patrons and YouTube members. Patrons also get access to some extra info in the Discord. I've been putting uh, behind the scenes stuff on my YouTube videos that I'm working on, so you'll get some extra stuff on Patreon. But you can join up right here on YouTube. Right here on YouTube, you can join up, you'll get emotes, uh, you get this, you, like, you only get the emotes on YouTube, uh, but you'll get everything else you get with the Patreon except for the behind the scenes stuff. So anyway, the point is, the point is just, Think about supporting the channel. You get on these lists and I'll be so thankful. Thank you for able to do it. Uh, Game Jam Friday. That's right. That's what we do. That's what we do. If Kodo was some kind of variable library dictionary, yeah, documentation. You know, I've just been learning. I mean, it does have some good documentation. Love the character. Unsymmetrical frog. <laughs> yeah, who destroys everything. Nice. Yeah, the frog can heal. The alien can heal. It is frog-like. Uh, the alien actually gets damage and then its limbs get smaller and it becomes asymmetrical. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I'll tell you about it sometime. I'll tell you about it sometime. Uh, so tomorrow is the game jam, just so you all know. Uh, every Wednesday and Friday, I do these devlogs. If you're watching this after the live stream, if you're watching this after the last <laughs> wild lore, uh, Please subscribe. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. You made it this far. You might as well. But I have I have a more important message for you. Uh, you can watch the last live devlog that I did on this game by tapping or clicking in the bottom right. And whenever I get it uh, set up, you can tap or click in the bottom right to see the next live devlog that I do. I'll see you there. And thank you again, everybody, for supporting the stream. It means a lot. Goodbye!